Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If, if you like a lot of wrestling, you should die. It's what we want to happen. He's done it again every bloody time. Hello and welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to Dulcet Tones of myself, Mafu, joined by Ross. Hello. And special guest, Tom. Two mugs, Tom. I don't know how we got him in. <laughs> On the budget for the month. <laughs> Not that fat, like. <laughs> Thank you to Matthew, who I had to I had to dash out. So we started late because I have to, I had to dash home and back again. Uh, so Matthew, bless him, made me a lovely cup of coffee, but I made myself one as I came through. So I've got two. Co- what a hilarious start to the podcast! I've got two coffees. Because if there's one thing Tom needs more of, it's energy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why did you have to dash back home? Uh, I had to sort out a a key for my partner for my wife. All right. Audio listeners, we are making references to an in-joke on the podcast. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I don't even I know the in-joke. <laughs> Does that mean it's bullying? <laughs> oh, no. Probably, yeah. Bullying in the you never, You're never here to defend yourself. That's like, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it, it is. It could be about anything, but tell us more about your story, you little coke thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, I did that this morning. Mm. Yeah, you went with Riddle, didn't you? Mm. Yeah. yeah the rest it's a long riddle. way to go. Yeah, he got, he got released because of uh, cocaine, didn't he? They were like, Riddle, can you go on the bump? He was like, Cowabunga. Uh, Way ahead of you. Are you on the bump, lads? <laughs> and amazingly honesty there, going, well, you know, I did weed, dude, dude, weed, weed, and then some coke because I went to a strip <laughs> joint. It's like, you know, and he's like, oh, okay. So he said that he got rumble because they did, and we're bleeding into the news section already, we haven't even had any pleb banter. Um, but <laughs> Coke banter. Coke banter. Because he said that WWE tend to do like one spot check a month and he said like it happened to fall like at the end of one month and at the beginning of another so he's, <laughs> that's his excuse and he's sticking to it uh, so you know I hope we I mean thankfully our drug tests are on the 15th so I know there's exactly uh, four weeks uh, for me to get yeah. clean yeah. N- needles to say dude I took drugs <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you for your honesty. And also like, so what happened with you in the airport? Well, I don't want to talk about it because this FBI is involved. <laughs> he, said, he, he, he called it a, what? He called it a perfect storm of, a, of an ear infection, uh, margaritas, and something else. Like he didn't mention the FBI in the bit that I read, but he might. Oh, no, no, the bit that, 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 that it was clipped and put on the, the Twitter so I can say this and say, you know, the FBI... Uh, <laughs> Full blooded Italian. Mikey Wirprek and uh, Tajiri. <laughs> <laughs> the Baldies, they were all involved. And uh, yeah, and you said that's why I can't talk about it too much, but he said enough. Well, the FBI don't care about cocaine, do they? They've got better things to try for themselves. It with. wasn't the cocaine oh. that was the issue at the airport. It was the issue where he alleged that somebody had uh, done stuff with them. What does that mean? Well, remember he tweeted and went, that's a PG thing, but said, like, hey, I've been touched up by the, the security. Oh. What's that effect? And then more people seem to get involved and we went, you are a walking liability here. Like, so yeah, bye. Yeah. And he did our podcast where he's just like, yeah. Well, he seems to be having fun. And isn't that the goal of life? It is. <laughs> Rather like this fun. podcast, <clears throat> you brought up news. We'd like some more news as we, you know, change gears as we sometimes do. Slather it on so me. Do some negative news. Um, <laughs> Ole Anderson passed away. Mm. This week, amazingly got day 81. That man was filled and <laughs> with hate yeah. by towards the end of his life. Powered by life, it I mean, in some places. The last 60 years. I mean, hell of a run. Going back to Jim Crockett Promotions, being part of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, famously obviously part of the Four Horsemen, the original one, a.k.a. the version that's not in the Hall of Fame mm. because notoriously hard to get along with. And one of the original haters. It's almost nice seeing the fact that we're at this age of hating with Drew McIntyre and CM Punk, AJ Styles and LA, uh, I messed up again, haven't I? Yeah, AJ no, Styles and LA Knight, yeah. there you go, good save. Um, Eddie Kingston and Daniel Bryan, like proper hate on TV. And there's Ollie Anderson, who made it look cool. Yeah. I guess back in the day. And yeah, famously, him and Vince, well, I should say him and Vince, he, towards Vince, was very negative and filled with hate. So that's why he's specifically not in the Horseman version, that's in the Hall of Fame. His most iconic bit of booking, because he was head booker for WCW for a spell. Yep. His most iconic booking was the Black Scorpion. That had his fingerprints all our Yeah, that's what he'll be remembered for. But it's, in terms of, but obviously lots of other <laughs> hilarity, <laughs> but uh, but the Black Scorpion was, was, was him. He was the voice of the Shockmaster. 
Come on, you want a piece of me? I forgot that was him, wasn't it? Sugar yeah. puffs are great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not what about the things? honey, it's mommy? Not like the other things. <laughs> what are they called now? They're not called the old SPs anymore, are they? They're called woke flakes. Oh. <laughs> I did not expect to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody liberals can't have sugar puffs <laughs> anymore. Can't even have sugar puffs anymore. <laughs> Bloody lefties. This is exactly how Ollie Anderson will like that. <laughs> I, I swear there's a video with a honky tonk man in a shoot interview and he said, oh, I talked to Ollie Anderson the other day and I said, oh, what are you up to, Ollie? And he said something like, I'm just waiting to die. <laughs> Aren't we all? That was like an 06. <laughs> so, Ollie Anderson, thank you for being so filled with hate and rage. God yeah. The most miserable people in wrestling. God love Great you. interview, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the shoot interviews in his latter, well, not latter, latter years, but, you know, <laughs> post-latter yes. years, pre-latter years, that makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, that one moment that gets shared a lot because he's asking, he's doing a hypothetical thing. He thinks he's speaking to somebody who knows what he's talking about, but he's talking to Rob Feinstein. So he's saying, well, when Ric Flair left, blah, 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 and all this, and Rob has no idea what he's asking him. And so Oli realizes this, and he smells blood. <laughs> his tennis ball <laughs> goes, no! <laughs> he, like, <laughs> yells at him. The guy's like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. And also, Virgil passed away at the age of 61 um post on facebook uh apparently suffering from Ill, Ill health past few years recently suffered several strokes um yeah and um, what a weird career the man had considering you know he looked great i think it's be from by the way originally because of like how like jacked he was but then he became a an in joke for many companies hey virgil you know like look at him at autograph does, signings does, and whatnot oh no, even before that like, in, in, when he's probably in wrestling it's like oh that's dusty's real name uh, uh, uh. Oh. and then when he went over to wcw they went oh look it's vince <laughs> or vincent whatever you know close enough and then shane and then shane briefly he was anyone. shane he was yeah. called shane briefly as well where was that wcw again really i a, never knew that one late yet. 90s wcw they, they brought him into nwo black and white as shane oh i just assumed he was called virgil then <laughs> Always Vincent, Virgil. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, but, Vincent, not Virgil. But he started as Soul Man Jones. Mm. And it was and how AEW referred to him when he was on AEW in 2019 and 2020. Um, he, uh, there's a, I, I don't know whether it's still there. There was, for a while, a Soul Man, Tro Soul Man Jones game on the App Store called Meatball Madness. I remember Again. him trying to p yeah. pitch that to us, didn't he? When yeah. it was getting released. I interviewed him <laughs> about it, and it's the most unhinged interview <laughs> I've ever done with Soul Man Jones. I believe it. Virgil. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I couldn't even tell you what we talked about because I think I tried to ask a few questions and then realised I just, I'm just gonna go along for the ride on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely went into the Iron Cheek version of like, oh, you're mm. an old wrestler, cool, just be crazy online, but become he, crazy. Yeah, and. Me, Mama Muscles, and OSW Review were in a Popeyes for WrestleMania 33 in 2017. That's a lot of names. And we were talking there. about him. And we said it, I swear, we said his name three times, and then he appeared. <laughs> I like, really believe in Vincent. Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there you go, maybe we took that money in it. And I was just like, it's him. Did he hear us from like a mile away? <laughs> and he started talking to Max. He saw the rest and shirt that he had on. He's like, hey, I, I used to wrestle. Well, and all this stuff. He's just like, yeah, I know. But I'm like, I'm going to pretend I don't know who you are. I seem to think that in my first couple of weeks here, I I couriered a Virgil signed $10 note ah. for OSW Review. Somebody had it and they wanted to give it to OSW and they gave it, they popped through the office and gave it to me so I could give it to you so you could give it to Jay Hunter. Oh, <laughs> I think I couriered that. I know he became an in-joke, but but f for me, that moment when he said farewell to Ted DiBiase, yeah, yeah. just the, the pop mm. is unreal. The moment was amazing. And then the match at SummerSlam was also a touch of class as well. Yep. That was great. It's been nice seeing that shared, actually, yeah. so many times. He used to get large pops, didn't he? Was it SummerSlam 92 when he comes out? For his match, yeah. and he's the crowd's legitimately going radio rental for the guy. You yeah. love him, yeah. Just it's, it's weird how like the latter part of his career really overshadowed the really good part of his career from like a, like an actual wrestler standpoint. It's weird how that can happen. You have yeah. two careers, yeah. You know, he took a shellacking off Yokozuna. Mm -hmm. That's right, famously. Yeah. Sid broke his nose that time. Sid so broke he, his nose yeah. that time. Breadsticks. Yeah, he loved them. Meat Olive, Ga <laughs> Olive Garden. <laughs> F money. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, one for a bit of F money. One the old uh, <laughs> bit of the F money. <laughs> 
So God rip, and because these things always come in, Terry Depp's always come in threes nowadays, you know. So it's either I was gonna say Richard Lewis was the other one, but that might be fourth your time. today. Dave Myers, Dave right. Myers, Harry Biker. One half of the Harry Bikers is away. Sixty-six, I think he was. No age. These people are passing away. Well, Maybe. in terms of Virgil and Dave, hmm. um, but yeah, it's been a bad week, hasn't it? It's been rough. Uh, they did. They used to do a radio show on Planet Radio, did Planet they? Rock, sorry, back in the day. And one week they did it from Metro in Newcastle. And Alex worked at Metro at the time, and her job that day was just to look after them, <laughs> make them tea, just twizzle their mustaches, just twizzle their mustaches, <laughs> get them the meat madness. And she came home beaming. She was like. They Aww. are lovely. She had, she said, I've had the best day at work. Like, yeah. I just brought them tea and just helped them log in and stuff like that. And there's a lovely photo of them together. They're lovely. God love them. Wait, me, they're on Planet Rock? Yeah. What were they doing? They were a rock show. They did a rock show. Oh, so nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. No, no, they just, they were, they're, they're rock fans. So they just did like a, a syndicated rock show for well, Planet Rock. We're going to make mortar bread. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell you what, though. Oh, if it was just puns. Of all the TV chefs, they used to make the best proper food, like a proper servant. Yeah. They didn't fanny around like your Ramses and all these other people. They made proper food, so they did. We've made a pie that's as big as a man's hand. <laughs> God, they're great. Yeah. great. They'll live on forever. <sighs> Now, so shift gears again. The million ML Dub lawsuit settled for 20 million. Oh. Say, wait, does that count as a, a loss in court? That doesn't happen very often. But it's a settlement. Yeah. Settlement? It's I mean, get away and shut up. Leave us alone, yeah. said the WWE. Here's 20 million dollars to leave me alone. Mm. Okay. Virgil had F, uh, had <laughs> FU money. WWE has F, F off, off money. money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've been told, like, no, the Monopoly laws and all this other stuff, and that's the one where they've been saying, we're not Monopoly. Look, AW's doing all right. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I, yeah, they were, they were right, though, MLW. A fair play of them getting their 20 million. They must be laughing. Yeah. Well, Court, Court Bauer walked into a booking meeting with, like, a, a shiny new chiffon jacket on and a, yeah. and a new suitcase and went, oh, it hasn't gone well at the court. <laughs> I can't possibly comment, lads. <laughs> can't. Look, we can pay you an extra tenner. Yeah. So it was all to do with the dealings with Vice, wasn't it? They were yes. trying to get in more in with Vice. MLW had their stuff on Vice. And then, ooh, they've had the monopoly for ages. No, we haven't. Lies. I believe we're quoted in that court case. Yeah, Aiden did an article, didn't he? Was yeah. it Aiden? I think yeah. it was Aiden. Oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. It probably really hurts as well. It's like, we've just done a merger with UFC. Uh, probably got a point here, lads. Yeah, how much money do you want? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the New Day turned down adding a new member to the faction. I thought this was rather sweet. Uh, Biggie revealed that he suggested a new member of the group after being indefinitely su- sidelined. Uh, a long time that New Day's been in WWE. We are old. Our hairlines don't look the same. But yeah, it's been quite the journey. And we thought for like a year or so, we've been kind of eyeing the 10 years. Oh, Jesus, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's Hall of Fame. Give me a second there. Like, it's yeah. one of those moments where you realize what 10 years feels like. It's not a long time at all, is it? Yeah. And they were so adamant, like, no, 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 no. This is the group. And I appreciate them dearly for that. Oh. There's no one could feel that like that. Like, they've they've the got new a, new day. I like, never oh. want them to split up, and I definitely want them in the Hall of Fame. Mm. They're Hall of Fame worthy. Oh, uh, beyond several times beyond a doubt. With beyond a doubt, like get, never split them up. Let them retire all together. Put them in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, we're getting to that time of year. I think Big E said last WrestleMania season that this WrestleMania season's when he's getting his like checkup scan to see if he can wrestle again or not. So I'm sure we'll hear some uh, something about them in the news in the upcoming weeks and months and mm. whatever the result of that is. Yeah, I don't know what you just Big E needs to be on screen somehow if, if he wants to do it, of course. But mm. he's, he's missed. You think a few years ago they've had well, here's Little E <laughs> to replace him, and he's just dying to death. God. Oh yeah, Big Big O, didn't you? Kevin Owens was Big O for a week or two, wasn't he? Back in the day. About five years ago, maybe. Although it's just a was rumor. It five years. Ago? Oh, you mean his name? Yes. Yeah, uh, he's also got a huge schlong, <laughs> which produced a six foot eight son at the age of sixteen. Did you see? You so, made it sound like a body horror. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> hell! Sound really <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I someone asked him. I keep calling him Owen Owens, but that's not his name. It's Owen Steen, obviously. But oh, Kevin no, Owens. No, no, okay, babe. It's <laughs> Owen Owens. Owen yeah. Owens. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a double O. He's sixteen. He weighs two hundred and eighty pounds. And he's six foot seven. It's sixteen, so he hasn't finished growing yet. Imagine him and Omos, five ten years time. Strap me up, baby. God. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Be immense. He's Did showing he wearing a... his dad's clothes then. Like already, he's outgrown his yeah. dad's clothes oh, God, yeah, at this right. point. What's Ke- Kevin Owens? Was he six foot one? Maybe in a push huh. with his spiky hair. That's it. Um, so yeah, he's a big boy. He's wow. massive. Kevin Owens' son is a big boy. <laughs> Um, Rikichi revealed that the bump he took at Armageddon 2000, taking the backwards bump off the Hell in the Cell, 
Onto what? A hay Tom? truck. That's right, a hay truck. A hay truck. <laughs> Thank God that was there, eh? <laughs> he revealed to the Metro that I almost got divorced for my family. It was like, you know, they were pissed off that I did the move, the sacrifice. But at the time, they didn't understand that's just what we do as performers, you know? You already prepped your mind, you know? I can only take this opportunity once. I can either take it or back out. And you know what? Years later, I'm still getting residuals over 25 years from that one bump. Well, when you put it like that. Yeah. Mm. Terrifying one to take backwards in that relatively small gap, you know? If he lands on the wood, I mean, it's game over on the either side of the, the hay truck. Um, so, yeah. But I guess the, the bonus from the pay view itself would have been worth it, I imagine. Again, you'd hope so. Yeah. Right? Uh, also, Matthew will not be appearing next week because you'll be at VXV in um, in Germany. Obviously, where else is it going to bloody be? For 16 karat gold featuring hey. Leo Rush, Hey, hey. Leo De D. Oh, it's German, right? De Dr. Wagner Jr. Hey, Nathan Hardy. Hey, Elijah Bloom. Hey. Oh. Masalo Tanaka. Oh. oh, Gringo Loco. Hey. Oh, Mike D. Vecchio. Oh, Mike D. Oh, oh, of course, yes. <laughs> No, no, I met him at Impact. He's lovely. <laughs> Stephanie, did you? Yeah, he, he did. Uh, he did a match at Impact. It was him uh, and James Sterling versus Grado and Rhino at uh, Turning Point. Oh, that guy, my D. Oh, oh my D. Oh, I know you're talking he's about. He's a now. unit. I keep thinking you're saying my D and going, he's a unit. <laughs> my well, <laughs> my D. Like Kevin where's so where's, 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 where's the Bobby <laughs> Fish on that one? <laughs> Stephanie Mays, Icarus. Hey, hey. Let's, let's go through. Lawrence uh, Roman, Oscar. Not a grouch. Roman's there. Luke Jacobs, one called Manders, Joseph uh, Vinesh Jr., some guy called Michael Michael Orko. Never heard of him. <laughs> he guy, can't wrestle for longer than a minute, I've heard. Uh, anything over a minute and he's absolutely done. <laughs> Michael Orko. Michael Orko, yeah. You're all getting a kick in up Oku when he hears this. <laughs> for one pronouncing his surname wrong. <laughs> Germany is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> We're joking. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, and all that's happening and more. And I'll be there. Hope you have a bloody lovely time seeing me and uh, me trying to pronounce people's names or make you laugh, if nothing else. And uh, what could be the funny bit that we end on this week? Oh, I know. Let's go to Hogan. Hogan was quoted as saying, well, you know, brother, uh, I had such a good run acting. I talked to a Paramount head and they said that I would be the next John Wayne. So after the huge, massive success of No Holds Barred that did so badly or lack of success. It was slightly profitable that Hulk Hogan was asked to take a pay cut and he went, no. Uh, he said, I had the chance to become like the next John Wayne. There was a guy named Bob Evans who ran Paramount. He took me into his office and there was a big picture in the wall with Clint Eastwood and John Wayne and all the big stars. Dustin Hoffman. That's what it says here. Just like you couldn't think of any at, at that time, I guess. Everybody that was part of the contract plays with Paramount. He said, you're going to be my next John Wayne. They laid out the schedule it was expected of me and off camera. I went, uh, I'm the wrong guy for that stuff. I decided to go back to wrestling. <laughs> he would have fit. From what you read about John Wayne, the certain I was going to say oh, char was... characteristics of Hulk Hogan that fits that particular cowboy boot, so to speak. I think the way Hogan walks now, he's certainly <laughs> the next John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> How yes. dare you, Tom? He sacrificed his spine for our entertainment. Did he? I thought he sacrificed himself for a bag of money. <laughs> yes. John Wayne. <laughs> John Wayne in sandalwood muscles would have been fantastic. We we record this. We recorded this just after Matthew and I have recorded the, the latest episode of the Cultaholic Classic Smackdown review. And it was a retro reaction special to Backlash 2002. So we've had our fill of Hogan today, haven't oh, we, sir? That's what he wins the title, isn't it? It is indeed, sir. Oh, you, can, H. you can hear it tomorrow morning on the podcast feed. Plugs. Plugs away. I need to say as well, me and Tom talked about WTF moments yesterday or Thursday. Oh, oh yeah, we need to clear this up. I needed to pick it up. It was just the AEW ones that are ending, not them all together. We were speaking about the oh. AEW schedule for the weekend. Um, people might be saying, oh, well, they do similar hits, but there's retention, there's the time that goes into making them and all this sort of stuff. Believe me, it had to be done. So the WWE ones are staying about, the AEW ones are ending. We have to clarify there. Thought was clear enough when we were speaking about the schedule for this weekend. But everyone, yeah. Oh, oh well, it's nice to feel cared about. <laughs> Mate, you're a proper wrestler. Care. You're teasing. Oh, this will be my last one, right? <laughs> yeah, well done, Vern Garnier. But I, <laughs> WrestleMania want to be there is normal, so do not worry if you're into that kind of thing. I know there's five of you at least. <laughs> the build up to like, no, nah, I don't think we'll do it this year for WrestleMania. <laughs> We've decided to bin it off just before <laughs> the biggest show of the decade. Revolution will be watched, WrestleMania. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you for clarifying there, Ross. Bloody hell. Aye. And that's the silent bit of the podcast. So he was. <laughs> that was the news. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah. That's uh, everyone's favorite segment. The Hall of Fame. 
Oh yeah, baby. Hold on, yeah. down in this chair. Oh, oh my god. Sorry. Huh? It's the same height as everyone else's chair. How is that my <laughs> Anyway, the Hall of Fame results from last week in condescending order. Harris Dickinson as David Von Erich in the Iron Claw, a.k.a. Jack just ripped off my thing from the previous week because he didn't have nothing. 10%. Yeah, get it up, yeah. It's a bit of a shot, that, because he was a good character in the film. He was. Again, it's a biopic, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Rob Sloan, the cheating marathon runner who took the bus during a race. Oh, I love that. Any other week, that would have won because he used the bus, but clearly beaten. Marijuana slash cannabis slash weed, 47%. The One fountain. of the cheapest victories we've ever Shuts had Shuts your mouth. There Illegal was a drugs <laughs> there was a for the victory. <laughs> Wait, let's see, see I got one of this. Uh, <laughs> the pictures of Rob Van Dam pre and post weed use. He's only started doing it over the past two to three years. That's right. It's famously. absolutely fantastic to see how youthful he looks now and it's all down to the sweet Mary Jane and that pose he does with the weight and the splits. That's all it's down to. If you want to look young, smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> this view is uh, not the view of Carl's Hall. Actually, it is the view of Carl's Hall. Yeah, it kind of is. Like, we're getting uh, medicinally now. Medicinally. Medicinally. I Lily the pink she. That's medicinal, is it not? I'm just losing the plot now. What am I doing? Yeah, medicinal. Yeah, medicinal. Up oh, the Lily the pink. No. First song on the guitar. That's sorry, Tom. No, so I'm, no I'm just, sorry. <laughs> I apologise. It's a good song to learn on guitar. I don't really know if you were singing a song or doing a cut that out. Thanks. <laughs> I always do that. So Joel, I'm singing a song. It's like, oh, that's how, that's how we're doing it now, right? <laughs> Unlike last week where I brought up the bloody Native American in the cupboard and said, we should probably cut this bit out and it wasn't cut out. Very sorry the person that sent me a message going, can you not bring that up? Sorry about that. Joel. You did not say cut that out. <laughs> I said, we, yeah, you know what? I should have made it clear when I said, we should probably cut that. And Joel's like, probably it's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's staying in. It's, your, it's you who's out of job. I'll be all right. Joel, Hol <laughs> Joel Holland does not work on probably. Yeah, that's fair enough. enough. Handshakes and hand jobs, baby. That's all he's in. <laughs> well, I gave him one. <laughs> <laughs> and a handshake. <laughs> probably not making eye contact was what did it then. The joke so, is. Anyway. <laughs> So away away from hand jobs and legal substances and this PG podcast, uh, Ross, well done. Uh, have you got anything for us this week? Yeah, cocaine. No, sorry. Really. <laughs> uh, the next, you the next cocaine. best thing to cocaine has made a return to the United Kingdom shops this week, and it's huge news. Lemon Coke has made its return after eighteen young, long years Easy. away. Easy for me to say. You get a can of Coke, right? But they put the lemon in for you without the use of an actual lemon. Lemon flavouring in a Coke can. It is like crack. The like... description you gave that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, I didn't realise it had been gone for as long as 18 years. I don't know what the, the status is of the lemon Coca-Cola around the world. So if you do have access to it, I do recommend you try it. But it is back and it's at Waitrose. So I went, oh, a, well, a, I went in a waitress for the first time since about 2012. My lads, my, my lads, my mates lived in there. Jessment. Did, did you burst, my, in, did you burst into flames when you crossed the my precipice? Lads. No, I was just heckled and just <laughs> battered with ciabatta breads. <laughs> get out, Jessment, get out. Ciabatta was there. <laughs> but I just made a comeback, so it's got to go in the Hall of Fame. So when you say Coke Lemon, what? Because you can get Pepsi with like you know, lime, you cook lemon, and cherry. But Coke like... Vanilla. Oh, okay, you take yeah, the vanilla yeah. out. And you put lemon in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, give us a second to process this information. Give me a sieve, hang on. <laughs> you get a different can that says lemon instead of vanilla. It's the same thing. Lemon, cool. <laughs> lemon, cool. But it is, it's one of those things. It's that really just, nice. Yeah, Tom knows. I didn't know it was back. Tom knows about Coke. Years, yeah. <laughs> Stop lying, Ross. That's it, to be fair, that was... Dude, thank you, yes. Oh, I'm miming on possible. the podcast for all your listeners. Uh, but yeah, lemon, Coke, fantastic. Joe, you ever had it? No. Have it made its way to Ponte Carlo? <laughs> it has not. <laughs> Ponte had... Carlo! <laughs> I'm not a fan of vanilla coke. Oh, like controversial. Vanilla? I like enjoy the I think it's a bit vanilla. sickly. I like cherry coke. I think mm. that's the best one. Yeah. Cool. Let that, that linger there. Let that linger. <laughs> that was my story. <laughs> <laughs> Any more singers, Joel? Uh -huh, Joel answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> what a loser! Look at Joel not coming in with a with a witty zinger and just uh, answering the question. Well, like it's a... funny you bring that up, Ross, because I have an interesting story involving <laughs> lemon coke. <laughs> Do you remember Pepsi with lemon from 2004? 
I do. Joe? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Beg your pardon. Joe, I thought it was Joe. Do you remember? Do you remember Pepsi Eleven from two thousand and four ish? No. He does not remember. He does, but he knows if he gives it, says yes, he's going to get more. He's learning. He's learning. He's learning. Ah, Coke Lemon. Fantastic nice. pick. Let's Thank you very on. much. Well, I'm next. Uh, I honestly thought all three lads here would go for the same story because we all love a good mess, don't we? Especially here in this country. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Especially mm-hmm, things involving mm-hmm. beloved things from our childhood like <laughs> Roald Dahl and Willy Wonka. There's a great picture. Oh! There's a great picture of Willy Wonka on this article that Joe's about to show you. <laughs> go on. Here's Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me. And I really want the money back. <laughs> Come with me, and you'll see. You know, all of pure imagination. Newspapers, websites are rubbish, aren't they? Really? Oh, there he oh is. Oh my God! <laughs> it's Joe Biden. I think Biden was more convincing. <laughs> Honestly, when Biden did the flips in the film, oh. So Biden gets invited to the chocolate factory and he can suddenly get out of bed and dance. <laughs> <laughs> Biden floating uh, up the ceiling. Uh, going, <laughs> burp, Kamala, burp. It's <laughs> <laughs> not like I can read it. <laughs> a stand-up comedian hired to play Willy Wonka in a widely criticised chocolate factory experience has spoken out after furious parents demanded refunds. <laughs> Willy, wa- Willy's chocolate experience, that's what it says here, <laughs> organiser Billy... Oh, look at these four oh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So all your listeners, basically, if you go to a brewery, <laughs> go to a brewery and they've got those sort of rickety tables. That's what we're looking at here with a bouncy castle in the background. And it looks it looks lost. It does. It looks like it's photoshopped, isn't it? Bouncy castle. It's like the bouncy castle's turned up to the wrong meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. That's a bit better. Oh, Willie's chart experience organizer, Billy Cole, apologized for his, quote, vision of the artistic rendition of a well-known book that didn't come to fruition and offered 850 people their money back before closing the Glasgow experience on Saturday. One parent complained of arriving to find a disorganized mini-maze of randomly placed oversized props, a lackluster candy station that dispersed one jelly bean per child, and a terrifying crow mask character that scared many of the kids to tears. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm trying to find a clip of that. Have you seen the video of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is absolutely fantastic. Just turn to behind Look at that. This, I guess, just, you know, <laughs> get close enough. <laughs> I hope there's a picture of the Oompa Loompa in this, because that's the PS. Oh, yeah, please. The Oompa Loompa is the absolute... That, sadly, oh, is not wow, look, that looks great, that. That's from the, the Willy Wonka experience. Right, so pick the next. I love that picture, because that's like I'm a pic, like pic picture Willy... taken yeah. before a, a moment of utter doom. Because <laughs> that was this, clearly taken by Paul. Bless his socks. Yeah. Going, here I am, about to have a great day as Willy Wonka, <laughs> and nothing could go wrong. Exactly. Uh, there's the Dementor esque. Well, oh there's the my God. <laughs> <laughs> We've had days like that. <laughs> From Breaking Bad the musical. <laughs> Umpa Lumpa to <laughs> Pity <laughs> D. Just some scotch to the dog. So, yeah, this guy. <laughs> So Gene Simmons from <laughs> <laughs> what was that movie called that got banned over here? The Devil or something? If Gene Simmons was in The Devil, here, there's some here's some film knowledge I'm dropping on you. Well done, I Come on, Mr. Film Men. Ken, what was he called? Ken, the movie director from Loach. the '70s. Ken Roach. Ken Loach. Whoa. Ken Loach. Ken Loach. Ken Barlow directed <laughs> The Devil. I think it was called. It got banned over here. Oh, The Devil. I don't know what you're talking about now. Yeah, 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 yeah. the nuns and stuff. So imagine yeah. if Gene Simmons played one of those like nunny people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm with you now. Yeah, one of those nunny people. What? <laughs> I was totally busy thinking about films Gene Simmons has been in. <laughs> But yes, this this kid goes, here comes the unknown. And then this thing comes, Rrr. and all you hear is kids going, <laughs> which in fairness, so scaring much. kids is in tune with the Willy Wonka experience. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but that's not. <laughs> that's just their version of going through the tunnel, the LSD tunnel. Ooh, look at that cheap mask. We'll have that. We can make this into summit. <laughs> here comes the unknown. What a okay, sure. Oh, but we're scared of the unknown. It's like that's a normal, <laughs> normal thing to have. The thing is, right, that mirror isn't big enough to cover his whole body. So you would have approached it knowing he was behind there. And you would have... 
No, if you look, there's a nice wall. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking out. You know, because the wall's in the film. You can put half his body behind the wall, half his body behind the mirror. <laughs> and even funny, it's because there was a lot of AI-generated imagery, which you click that one that you got your thing on there. There you go. So that's what people experience expecting to see <laughs> on the left. <laughs> e, that, that were real. <laughs> And that's what you got. Riley wasn't is often there, disappointing. There was like a oh. second Wonka, wasn't there? I remember seeing the guy who looked. If you go on the picture, a second, oh, a second Wonka on the grassy knoll. <laughs> go on the picture of the Demeter again. <laughs> a second Wonka has hit the chocolate there factory. <laughs> oh dear God! <laughs> that one there, Joel. Next, uh, left, left. That one. God, Mr. No, yeah, this is it. <laughs> yes, Jesus Christ! Click on that. That should take it to a video. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's been removed. Yeah. Oh, it's been removed from the, the Reddit moderators of slash oddly terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what they want to see. Oh. Like, this is, this is, oh, hang on. This is a second Oompa Loompa. Actor Hyder's Wonka for cancel event called it a place where dreams went to die. <laughs> The so amazing is, headlines here. The thing is, had they kept it open with all of this going on, they'd have made... <laughs> <laughs> How small is that kid? What was that Scottish like <laughs> comedy duo <laughs> called where they had the really small lady? The Crankies. The Crankies. The crankies. It's Jimmy Cranky, isn't it? <laughs> crankies. But genuinely, had they kept it open... And just call it Willy Wonka's no, crap factory. No, just, no, no, after oh. all the publicity, I guarantee you there'd have been lines and lines and lines to get in. Yeah, Charlie and the, the Asbestos factory. <laughs> Charlie right. and the Asbestos. Uh, the Willy Wonka actor says, I'm constantly applying for more acting jobs and comedy work. I got a phone call on Thursday saying, congrats, you're playing Willy Wonka. We will send you the other script and dress rehearsal is tomorrow. The script is 15 pages of AI-generated gibberish of me just monologuing these mad things. The bit that got me was where I had to say, there is a man we don't know. His name. We know him as the Unknown. The <laughs> Unknown is an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. It was terrifying for their kids. Is he an evil man who makes chocolate or is it the chocolate itself evil? <laughs> they even misspelt my contract. <laughs> but I do have a legally binding, and it's misspelt. But I stayed up all night learning it, thinking this would make sense in the dress rehearsal when I see all the tech. Wait, isn't the, the, isn't the tech. The evil chocolate man is Slugworth until he turns face at the end, doesn't he? Yeah. That, is, that is true. <laughs> it looks like Judge Doom. So, so is that... Wait, 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 I've got to say this song. Sorry. At the end of my monologue, I was supposed to suck up the unknown man with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I asked them if they had a vacuum cleaner. They said, yeah, we haven't really got there yet, so just improvise. <laughs> So God knows what that looked like. <laughs> you just disappeared behind that wall again. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> there was supposed to be a chocolate fountain somewhere, but I never saw it. So there was no chocolate at the chocolate experience. I was told I would get a 15 minute break every 45 minutes after each group went through. I ended up playing Willy Wonka for three and a half hours straight. I didn't know where I ended and Wonka began. I was into my mind by that point. There's no easy way of knowing. <laughs> There were so many disappointed kids. When I came back, that's when everything kicked off. There was an angry mob at the door not being let in. Because <laughs> what hasn't been mentioned yet, I saw this, wow. it was it cost 30-something pound a person to get into this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 37 quid. <laughs> Absolutely. And this poor guy, because he's Wonka, and I guess people go, well, it's your chocolate factory. It's clearly your <laughs> chocolate factory. And this guy's like, no, that's in the stories. like, nah, we don't care. You're to blame. <laughs> Don't blame this on the Umba Lumbers, it's ye. <laughs> ye said to go, no, 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 I didn't organise this. I was just an actor who did the, all the this. The guy no. who did it, um, he runs a company called Illuminati Productions, I think it is. It's not called Illuminati. <laughs> no, it is. It genuinely is. It's co right. a company called Illuminati Productions. So, oh, it's to that effect. It's definitely got the word Illuminati in it. And like you go on the website of him, and, the, uh, and he's, a, he's a writer as well, and all his stuff seems AI generated. So he's just discovered ChatGPT, and he's just having a lovely time. Yeah. Uh, he did. A, I, I think I saw a video of him tearfully apologising for what a, sh a shocking state of affairs. I mean, we watched this with tears in our eyes, laughing at it. So I mean, <laughs> it's just oh my god, it's giving me life. Oh, god, I mean, it's giving me life. Look at it. But what would you do if you were a parent and you've rocked up with your two kids? You've just seen Oof. what's his face play the the younger Wonka in that film. What's his face? Timothy, Timothy Shelley. Shelley, King of the Twins. Uh, you've just rocked up, with that, and that's what they're expecting. And how do you explain that to a child? Well, my my mum and my mum and dad give me a pack of wheat crunches and we go play with the stones in, 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 outside the pub. So, like ungrateful kids is what I'd say. <laughs> yeah, it's the highlight of the year for some people. Yeah. But... Oh god, I think uh, the most coverage Glasgow's had since it hosted the Commonwealth Games. Since someone on Facebook. So. Oh, god, the Glasgow Comedy you. Festival's coming up. I'd argue it's already That's happened. It, yeah. yeah. 
can, at best, the only thing they can oh. do is second place at best after this. Oh, oh, on the highlights of the year so far, I know WrestleMania is soon, but I'll wear. That's it. That is the showcase of the immortals. <sighs> Tom! <laughs> I don't know how I top it, but I'll have a go. I know, bless you, mate. Uh, I'm, I'm nominating uh, Alex, my wife's food intolerance test for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, go right. ahead, burn it. Hear me out. So uh, recently, uh, Alex, uh, my wife-to-be, she went to have a food intolerance test done, like a gut health check that she was doing. And uh, she got the results back, and she, and she said, I need to show you what it says. And, and we've been laughing about it ever since in our house. So this food intolerance test, basically they take off some of her hair, which makes me think that she's cloned somewhere now. <laughs> uh, and, and it breaks down the foods that uh, you should avoid, foods that you should take a break from to, to see how you react to them, but foods you're also allowed to have. It gives you a comprehensive list of the foods you're also allowed to have. And they work that from hair? Yeah. Clever, isn't it? Oh, Gut health. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, this is from my wife's uh, food intolerance test email, the results. Foods to be permanently removed, dairy, lactose, processed meat, fish, wheat. <laughs> so everything, right? <laughs> she's a big fan of sushi, so she's devastated already. <laughs> um, foods to be removed for 90 days, millet, What's that? It's just like like wheat. They're using like pita breads and stuff like that. Oh. So just more bread, no. Liver, egg, processed sugar, <laughs> white tea, Earl Grey tea, and seafoods. <laughs> there is a silver lining. Non-food sensitivities. Dust. <laughs> Oxygen. Horse. Well, that should go to Iceland. Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Is that- Horse. Pigeon. Hang on, is Damn it. When we're going to get... Oh, the presents got to come back to the shop. So. <laughs> I was going to say, is there a comma between horse and pigeon, or is it just there horse is, pigeon? Uh, oh, <laughs> that would be a whole different game yeah, well, if it was. What about Sadly, Pegasus and other twine horses? <laughs> horse, comma, pigeon. <laughs> Uh, which means she can no longer enjoy all the food that she likes. But if you do see uh, a a wild looking woman on Northumberland Street biting the head off pigeons, that will be <laughs> my partner exercising her new gut health regime. <laughs> so for that reason, I'm nominating my my wife to be Alex Booth's uh, food intolerance test for the Hall of Fame. Wait, <laughs> but sorry, it's up against I've, Willy Wonka, so I've misunderstood. Sorry. So she can eat pigeon and horse. She's the, yeah. The only food she's allowed to eat that, that, that was tested for was horse and pigeon. <laughs> oh, so she can have horse and pigeon, but she's been told to avoid everything else. Ah, you ever else. been to the horse and pigeon restaurant? Not until now. They well, are... well, we're all kids of the nineties. We had Finder's crispy pancakes back in then. Oh, oh the hey, I bought all my ready meals from Lidl back in the day. Yeah. Hey, at uni, yeah. I lived off Iceland's ready meals, and then that whole Tesco scandal came out about yeah. the mm. horse meat. And I would argue it tasted nice. Who cares? Yeah, there is. Share was a horse. quid. Share about the horses, obviously. But oh, you know, well. yeah. So <laughs> the circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> so any horse or pigeon recipes? Uh, feel free to send them. Our way, but uh, what is left then? Vegetables, obviously. Vegetables, um, horse and pigeon, horse and, and pigeon, water, water, plenty of water, fruit. So you can have fruit. I'm terrified to do one of these now. <laughs> yeah. Just, 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 just stop. Like, what? <laughs> to don't, be fair, it's, don't it's, eat. It's the ideal time, isn't it, for her? You know, the, the wedding come up. Yeah, like that's it. it. So we're just, so we're just having pigeon for tea for the next shredded. six weeks. <laughs> Get shred. We're shredding. We're both shredding for the wedding. So are you gonna have a chef for your wedding? <laughs> no, nah, I don't think we needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We're near a farm. What about the we're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, near, we're near we're near a racetrack. <laughs> What about the guests? <laughs> nah, if I can't eat, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> What's where are you, where are you getting married at? What time? At three thirty at Kempton. <laughs> 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 I thought you said your wife couldn't eat biscuits. No, no, she's eating sea biscuits. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> they will end on that. There you uh, go. Hey. Well, there's the mystery of where Shergar went. But uh, thank you very much. Those lovely picks. Tom's is his lovely wife's intolerance for food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex Booth's food intolerance test. <laughs> there you go. Which almost sounds like a Roald Dahl novel. <laughs> Mine is the terrifying... Well, that won't narrow it down, will it? The rubbish Willy Wonka <laughs> event. The Willy Wonka Glasgow. Glasgow experience. Aye. Aye. Where they did smack instead of chocolate. And <laughs> Ross's is the return of lemon coke <laughs> after 18 y- long years. Finally, it's back. Patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Happy voting.
This is this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah, this week in wrestling. <laughs> you cheap little prick. <laughs> well done, Matthew. You're reading that. <laughs> ah, this week in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably want to cut that out, Joel. Oh. 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 I'm going to bring you a flock of pigeons to your wedding. You can shove it. Friday night, Tiff... Oh, God. Tiffy Strat Down is going to be over down under. Bloody hell. Yeah. Okay, thank I you. took cocaine while doing these. <laughs> so I had to do we know, Ross. You I, don't need to tell us. I had to do Jack's bit for the podcast this week as well as my bit for the podcast. So it starts off very flamboyant, but if you don't like the flamboyance, that's fine because I was running out of time when it got to Wednesday and Thursday. So it's just, you know, no bollocks at the end. Oh, no. Yeah. That's what we like on this podcast. Who doesn't All like the, the flamboyance? Fam- That's my favorite oh, there's part. there's some people here just for the straight resting analysis, you know? Got a yeah, cultholic- God knows why. You can even learn by now. <laughs> Jeez, got a cultholic.com. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> go outside. Tiff Strats defeated Liv Morgan in a wrestling match while Banker Belair was sat next to the sat next to the announce table, but not speaking, which was a bit weird. You're right. I read that. Like, no, she was guest commentator. No, she was just watching. She was right. lingering near the table. Yeah. Just hanging out. Just lingering. I've compared to going like, to a cheese shop. It's a bit like going to the cheese shop, but not buying any cheese. You're just stood there looking at the cheese, wanting some cheese, but not buying any cheese. A window shopper. It's very, very strange. Isn't the only it? difference is that you don't have to have that sort of awkward side glance with the shop assistant in the <laughs> cheese shop. Just looking knowing you're, thanks. Knowing you're the only one in there, and then you leave without buying anything, and you feel really guilty. <laughs> no, like, I can't eat dairy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Do you have any pigeon? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll put very decent match, but too many, ah, uh, good one, kid. Facials from Liv when Tiff would kick out. I'm like, <laughs> is she a mega vet now, Liv? She's, well, yeah, she's been there over 10, 10 years now. Liv Morgan. What? In the, in the performance mm-hmm. centre. Oh, okay, right, right. <laughs> from those days onwards. Oh, we're we'll counting that. All right, Riot happened. Squad was 2018. Or maybe 17. <sighs> okay, yeah, I think you're yeah. right. Bye. Wow. That's okay, yeah, you know what? She deserves to be the mega vet. I thought there was classic heel work from Tiffy Strats on the show here. She's booked in the match, but saying, Elimination Chambers tomorrow, toodles, and trying to leave. Sorry for doing that impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just thought there was lots of very good moves by the lasses. Tiffy getting out of the BME with a small uh, a roll through upon landing was incredible, like blah, 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 as the French might say. Uh, Liv Morgan with the alley oop pal- uh, powerbomb to ah. Tiffany on the turnbuckles was fantastic. And then Stratton slapping Bianca were making them a thing before WrestleMania. Of course. Yes. That alley up, I was n- slightly nervous for Tiff as he landed on it. Mm. Slightly, because I'm thinking, oh, she's, she's going to be a big deal. Let's not get her. No. But she Didn't was matter, fun. does it? Less than uh, 11 hours later, she was tearing poo up inside the chamber because <laughs> this was a live SmackDown. Of course it was. <laughs> I work hard on SmackDown. Bloody hell. <laughs> also, Corey Gabe's got madly distracted and called Wade Barrett Liv Morgan on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> and waited, I've never been mistaken for Liv Morgan before, Corey. <laughs> Drew McIntyre says if he loses in the chamber, his WWE career will be w- as worthless as CM Punk's WWE return. Bobby Lashley arrives to remind Drew that he beat the Scottish arsehole at WrestleMania a few years ago and also to go, oh man, that's really funny. That was <laughs> really funny when he said about CM Punk. And in a weird thing that we've not often seen wrestling, it's always like, a, and I'm going to say this thing next week at so and whatever, and he swords off. This week, last year's went, <laughs> and it's left, and he went, well, that was Bobby Lashley. <laughs> it was good, it was human. Yeah, I Drew liked again, it. The second week in a row where he's been cooked in a promo by somebody else with no, little to no riposte when he could have had something there. I'm sure he's beaten Bobby before himself, and he could have brought that up if you not where to. it mattered. Yeah, not where it mattered. Very nice indeed. Ashante, the Adonis, and Cedric Alexander are doing their own private fashion show. I wonder how much Ashante paid Cedric for the privilege. It appears they want to find matching tag gear because they are a tag team now, but this isn't too clear at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen videos that start off like this. <laughs> this was prime NXT in everything. Yep. The concept felt of really it, NXT. The running joke through, the running gag through the thing was, you know, he's dressing in, in fine clothes. That, you know, he looked like a well-established gentleman and he whaps on what Ashante is wearing, which is like, uh, it's a massive like silver thing and some patterned trousers and that's the one that looks good even though it's the one that looked worse it's different you know what I mean it's like I don't know what we're playing here some sort of mm. game that's complicated yeah what's that song the only thing that looks good on you is, is me, me. Is me. Now, the only thing that looks good on me is you on the floor it's Brian Adams yeah but I might get sued <laughs> Brian Adams 
He was an right. NWO. <laughs> <laughs> he took a break and uh, sang that song. That's Crushed right. it though, didn't he? Hey. Oh. <laughs> that's all that happened in that segment. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they were doing Shades here. Shades of the great Mr. Ben. What a great theme tune. Was it that one? I just start singing the different I honestly don't remember his theme song. Remember walking down the road? Yeah. Ah, whatever. And he went, oh, I think I'll be a, you know, a gladiator. Yeah. He puts on the gladiator outfit and there he is in ancient Rome. <laughs> so what they don't tell you, he's just a raging drug addict at the time. He's not even in a clothes shop. He's, he's in a dustbin back of Asda. <laughs> All the other smashers are going, look at this guy. Look at him, man. He thinks he's back in Roman time for some reason. He thinks he's Julius Caesar. Look at the oh, state of him. He's the the... wearing a trash can going, look, it's me, Hannibal. <laughs> There's the man with a fez on his head. It's a rat with a pop noodle tin. <laughs> you tell I've been going to Michael Morrison's again, haven't you? <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns wants to know who sent Jimmy Uso to Raw to interfere in Jay's match with Gunther. Jimmy says Paul Heyman sent him to Raw. Despite this, Roman Reigns takes credit for the play. Heyman arrives and says Grayson Vladdy Fowler is here. Roman appears to be interested. Romantically, find out later. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, very, very hot start here to SmackDown. I know. I know. Uh, it's interesting though, because uh, Roman was like, "You're trying to stooge Paul." I ran that place. So he's still keeping J- uh, Jimmy mm-hmm. on the old on the edge of his seat there. So he is. What could this mean for WrestleMania? I don't know. It'll mean something though, Matthew. Let me tell you that for free. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> Cheers, pal. <laughs> Broadbreaker smashes Dante Chen. Yay! He's One of the real here. ones of NXT. That's right. <laughs> in his first match in signing a contract with SmackDown. Bro, look, boy, brilliant. does he look good. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, I love him it. Him yeah. running that ropes and not decapitating himself oh. like he did Vengeance Day. It's like watching your kid, like, uh, do a bike without using the stabilizers. Yes, it is. I said, do a bike. <laughs> do you ride a bike? Do you drive a bike? Do a bike. You do ride a, a bike. bike. Yeah, you ride that thing. That's... Um, Corey Graves outright telling us about Bron's dad and uncle, unless just why yeah. just call him Steiner for goodness sake. I know Bron Brick is a fine name now, we're used to it. It is funny, isn't it? I don't want to be called to uh, have the surname Steiner because I want to get out my uh, my dad's shadows. All right, cool. Well, let's go bring up your parents <laughs> every time we get the chance. Well, this is the f- am I thinking rightly this is the first time that they've referenced? I mean, obviously, obviously in NXT, you had Rick Steiner get kidnapped and stuff like that, so yeah. we all knew. Oh, god, yeah, that, that, I remember that, all that. that. I remember yeah. her. Um, but, but I'm thinking on commentary, this is the first time, at least in a long time, where they've definitely just gone. The rumble. Yeah, I think it was Pat McCarthy. What was he gonna say? Oh, yeah, big fan of that. Joe Gacy. I think you. NXT yeah. wasn't laid on thick, was it? No, it was never like that's his uncle, that's his dad, but he's got a different name. They left him behind at the shops one day and he was abducted. Sorry, abducted? He was taken in by Mr. and Mrs. Breaker. <laughs> Raised by wolves. <laughs> and their son, who was a long-distance oh, no. lorry driver, called Breaker Breaker. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Good night, everybody. See you later. Thanks, you know? Tom. Woo! He's gonna go, oh, he's found another key. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you know that Brom Break was it's timed running the ropes at 23 miles an hour? Not in this match, but in previous running the ropes exercises. No, that's 23 what miles an hour. Meow. It's quick, that isn't it? I like that stat. Yeah, he'd be brilliant at the beep test. It would. He would. Well, I don't know. Would he be? Yeah, that's in, that's more endurance, isn't it? The beep test. But he's got he's got it a, a he's got it in sprint. the tank, and he oh. he's got it in the tank. I reckon he can run five yards. That's it. Just that five yards Just backwards. Back. Yeah. I'm not talking bollocks now. Uh, where was the NXT tag team title? That's what we need to ask as well. Yeah, this is, again, the other thing where this ignore what's happening in NXT, but go, wow, what a great run NXT is having. I'm not going to talk about it, though, because oh. it kind of interferes with the storylines right oh. now. Just pretend. Mm. Oh. Oh. The JD don't seem too asked about the new Catch Republic for JD Muck. Don't you dare Google his exploits. Wow, we've got a bit of a longer name this week. And Dirty Dom lose to Pete and Tyler in a match that went just over 13 bloody minutes. Yeah. My uh, notes are Pete Dunn's new theme sucks. The, all the new music is bad. We need, right. it's all, you just do, it's not memorable. It's not iconic in any way. You only know who has a Deaf Rebel theme when they say their name at the start of the thing. Like yeah. the, the new Catch Republic lads do the same. Yeah. New Catch Republic. Generic music. Yeah. And before that, you knew it was Tyler Bakes. He went, woohoo, Mr. Toad's <laughs> Wild Ride. <laughs> 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 he did lots of unique stuff in this match, though, did Tyler. I oh, thought he yeah. came up with this looking the best. Lots of roll throughs, the head scissors, the climbing up the ropes with the hands thing, which is becoming mm. part of his, uh, his arsenal now. Uh, Pete's beatdown on Dom was very good. It was very gnarly. Got a decent reaction as well, but I guess that's going up against Dom, isn't it? Of course. Standard. Standard. Um, and then Pete Dom reversing the devil inside. 
which is uh, JD McDonough. Google his exploits, his throwing thingy, his throwing angle slam sort of thing, and it was sweet roll through. They were my highlights of the match. Well said. Cheers. A, mu- a much needed buffer for NCR with JD uh, working well with the lads who have tons of experience against one another in the UK and Irish scenes of the years. So yeah, gonna make you have gonna have one match against you before mm. this lovely big match in Perth. I call it Devil Inside. Devil Inside. Devil Inside. Because it's a side suplex. Oh, oh my oh. God. I've only just realized that's the, what they're going for there. It's devil the, inside. Devil in, the, the, de- devil. the Devil Inside. The, and oh, the, the Devil, devil in, Inside. Yeah, the Devil, devil Inside. Devil in and it's a side, side. suplex. Jesus God Christ. We're sat here next devil. to Shakespeare. <laughs> Chaucer. <laughs> Lemon Coke. <laughs> 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 we were speaking about this before the podcast, where we have just to say words, how we, like, I spell them phonetically in my head and yeah, write yeah. them down. What was the example you were saying? I said, um, we did the podcast before, and it's su- superlative. But I look at that, and I see superlative. Devil inside. <laughs> <laughs> God, you've opened my eyes there, Tom. Fantastic. You're welcome. <laughs> That's the straight analysis we're here That's right. For. There's no hyperbole there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Grayson Waller, Austin Theory, and Logan Paul, who, yes, are the three, the same character three times, are looking at each other backstage. Kevin Owens is here to tell the lads there they're a bit strange. Paul Heyman then arrives on the scene and tells Waller that Roman Reigns wants to speak to him. Well, that was a good segment. I'm glad we typed it out. Very Deadpool, so it was, because they were like, oh, why didn't we just jump him? Speaking about Kevin Owens at the end there. Very Deadpool, he says, without ever seeing Deadpool. But you know what he's referring to, though, so that's good. Yeah. I like that you still have an attempt at, like, fitting Films, in. Yeah. yeah. Try, try to fit in, you know? Try yeah, to fit it's good. in. Proud of you. <laughs> we learned Dakota Kai is hurt, but we don't know who did the hurting. Mm. Later on the night, Bailey checks on Coda and claims damage control did this to her. Well, yeah, probably gonna guess that. Like, uh, Bailey appears to want to seek vengeance, and Kai seems to be game for that also. Very interesting developments because it, yeah. like, it looks like Bailey is slowly trusting Dakota Kai after not trusting her at all last week. Mm. Uh, I've got your back, she says. Will it bite her in the arse? Find out soon. But we are getting the Kabukis versus uh, Bailey and Dakota tonight on SmackDown, apparently. Tonight? Tonight. Don't you mean... I mean, like, tonight. Like, in the future, oh, from us out here, oh, not there. Oh, yeah, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Doctor Who does it. <laughs> you, were, you were sweating then. <laughs> AOP defeated the Street Profits in a match that lasted around 11 minutes and 20 seconds. During the match, Karrion Cross thwacks... Oh, I love that thwacks Bobby Lashley's arm with a chair, seemingly hampering the almighty's chances of winning the men's Elimination Chamber match. The match was fine. The stuff on the outside of the ring just made, I guess, Bobby getting his arm hurt sort of foreshadowed him not doing much in the Chamber match itself. I just, I'm not feeling anything from the final testament. I no. am just so cold on them. They're yeah. not touching the sides as far cold as Cold like Jesus' hands yeah. on the cross. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Was who you're wow. to. Well, they're called the Final Testament. It's, it's autobiography. Biblical thing. Yeah. He goes, it's the Final Testament. And he gets on the cross. <laughs> yeah. I think I've seen you, that sideshow. It's lovely. I think it's like you've got the Judgment Day on the roster that are just such a, now, are such a fleshed out part of the show that the, the, they just feel like a cheap version of them. Yeah. Authors of yeah. Pain need to, be, him, them and Paul, off you go. Just go and eat every tag team. That's It's mm. so easy. Carrying Cross is this admittedly handsome, well built anchor. <laughs> it's true, though. No, it's true. It. I was going to see how long you could do that pose for. <laughs> anchor. For a long time. But it is true, though, because it it, it's been the same for Carrying Cross, especially on the main roster, but it happened in NXT as well. The entrance is great. The, this entrance for the final testament, not as good as the old one with the Fallen Prey song. Uh, but when the bell rings, ooh. Oh, no. It's one of Brucey P's best moments. It's like, yeah. you look good, talk well, did all the cardio, and then the bell rang. Yeah. It's 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 weird, because I just... I, he's not doing anything really wrong, in my eyes. No, no, no. They're not doing not... anything particularly stand out. But, yeah. they, but they are, in the sense they've given him a spooky faction with lots of people, and Paul Ellering, and an attractive Who's wife, doing nothing. Valet, and all this. They've given him stuff. I'm just going... <laughs> I don't care. It's like an, if it, Inspector really Gadget bad. didn't solve crime. <laughs> <laughs> he just bums around yes, all day. Well, I think I'll turn my legs into wheels and go for a drive. Oh, Babe Station. Go, go, Gadget Trousers. <laughs> <laughs> what? Tom I saw said... my Inspector Gadget reference and went, nah, it's not old enough. <laughs> babe Station. Oh, it'll still be a thing, that I imagine. Joel? 
Surely. Babe station's other thing? Surely. I'd have thought so. Joe's unplugging his mic, so I can't talk, sorry. <laughs> but I'll turn yeah. Babe station off and pay attention. <laughs> but yeah, this did more for Bobby Lashley, just protecting him to say why he didn't win the Elimination Chamber, despite being mint and over, uh, than it did anything for the AOP or the But it, it should do stuff for the AOP, because they've beat the street EPs. They've beat them. Did they? They did beat them, didn't they? I've not just made that up. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, beat them. Them. Yeah, yeah, they have they beat them. Yeah, so that should do something for them, but I don't think it will. It is a bit of a higgledy-piggledy mess. We've got two managers in the stable. When's that ever work, having two managers? Talk about Liverpool back uh, in the 90s, Roy Evans and Gerard Houllier. Yokozuna, you had Corner and Fuji. Mm-hmm. When he lost at WrestleMania. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Kamala, he had uh, Harvey Wiffman and Kim Chi. Yes, and Kim Chi would be like, don't eat the kids. <laughs> I hate Kim Chi. What a bad guy. What a bad guy. That's what that Wonka experience was missing. <laughs> kimchi. <laughs> kimchi. Here's the evil chocolate owner. <laughs> Kamala! <laughs> the kimchi. No, no, no. <laughs> what did he pl- I was reading about the backstory of Kamala of the week, and it's just like he plucked this lad from Uganda and made him go over to America and fight. Poor, poor, poor Kamala. Getting taken away from his family like that by kimchi. Who gave kimchi the right to do that, eh? Disgusting. He might have been a cannibal. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what you're going to do, haven't you? <laughs> there was a wrestling company um, that I remember seeing a poster for. They're based in the UK, and they used to have shows featuring WWE Hall of Famer Doink the Clown, and it was the promoter dressed as Doink. And the Hang wo- on, Doink, Doink's not in the Hall of Fame, is he? Nope. Oh, right, and which makes it. the next part even funnier, because oh, a few no. months later, they ran a show where he'd obviously been out and bought a safari outfit oh, no. featuring <laughs> WWE Hall of Famer Kim <laughs> Chi. Jogging. It was the promoter dressed as Kim Chi. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kim Chi's book for the show. <laughs> Get yourself to the town hall now. Why is he here and not at Mania? <laughs> Wherever Kim Chi is now, I hope he's having a bad time. He's at a town hall somewhere down <laughs> south. <laughs> Anyway, the lyrics say, uh, I got something to tell you. I got something to say. Gonna build this dream in motion. I never let, let anything stand in my way. When the go, oh, when the going you gets missed the tough, bridge. tough, get going. I thought that was a different song. You missed the Hang bridge. On. I climb any mountain. Oh, that bridge. I do anything. Ooh, can Ooh. I touch you? Can I touch you? Yes, you can. Do the things that lovers do. <laughs> then you go to the bridge. bridge, bridge. Roman Reigns wants to tell Grayson Waller something, but we, the viewers, do not get to hear what that thing is. Is that what that song was about? That was that, because it says right. it in the two first, like the first two lines, so I thought I'd put it in there just to create a podcast moment. A moment. And then I didn't myself partake in the podcast moment, so that was good of me. What song is it? Hey now, hey no, now. No, it's Billy Ocean. Yeah. Going gets tough, tough. Oh, boys, boys, I've got, got going. something to, to tell you. you. I, I got, got something, something to say. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all like that. I mean, it's it's nearly that as well. Boom, boom. You're thinking of Venga Boys. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom are coming and everybody's coming. No, no, no. The wrong song. Venga Boys, and that's a different song by Venga Boys. Yeah. Venga Bus had, the Venga Bus is hey, coming, now. everybody's da, da, jumping. Da, 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 and you're thinking of also da, 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 da. another song called Boom, 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 Boom. I want you in my room. Spend the night together from now until forever. This is rubbish. But it's all boys <laughs> This is rubbish. Who did Neither of them. This is rubbish. Red Nose Day. No, I remember that. Yeah. Because I said, I thought the idea of them, honestly, as a kid, I thought the idea of them recording it was because it was a rubbish song. It's supposed to be a big joke. Everyone that song's supposed to be good. <laughs> it I thought it was crap. <laughs> I thought it was crap. It's a good song. Excuse the me. originals are right. Boys Owns covers got it, like with the giant red noses chasing them. Yeah. It was for charity, Matthew. Exactly. That's what I thought. With the charity, <laughs> you are a You know whatever you like, you say it's for charity. How very kimchi of you. Anyway, Jimmy <laughs> Jimmy's talking out Roman at the start of the segment, which I thought was wonderful. Cinematography. Very interesting. What could this mean for WrestleMania? I don't know. Uh, Jimmy is made to move. What could this mean for WrestleMania? I don't know. Is Jimmy still going to be on side of Roman by the time WrestleMania comes around? Ah. He's being just shafted to one side. And we all know how Solo is just not given the same affection as Jimmy's given, which isn't a lot to begin with. But, you know, what could this mean for WrestleMania? That's it, Mum. It's very kinglier. Hmm. Who? Matthew, you know what, forget it. <laughs> Queen, <laughs> Queen Leah's husband. Matthew, we've just been talking about the Billy Ocean. That's Star up. Wars reference, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was in that, wasn't she? Uh, yes, yes, she was. <laughs> Drew McIntyre offers to pray for the injured Bobby Lashley because Drew is a dick. <laughs> That's all that happened there. Yep. Bobby's got his arm injured by the final, well, by carrying cross, and then Drew's praying for him like he did with CM Punk because he's a dick. Oh, I don't know what you say work. about that. Kevin Owens attack his dick work. <laughs> Coming over to Dax sees Drew McIntyre versus LA Knight ending a DQ in your main event, which also had Logan Paul on commentary. 
Logan stole the show again, you know. The crowd are chanting at him, so what does yeah. he do when he's on commentary? He stands up, he gets on the barricade and shouts back at the crowd. Not everyone would do that, but he is doing it. Yep. Um, he just gets it, doesn't he? And we saw that in the chamber as well, but we'll talk about that a bit more later yep. on. He just gets it more than most wrestlers, and I think if you've not come round to that yet, then you're literally just doing it just to be awkward. You're living in denial. Watch out for the crocodile. You're in <laughs> Egypt. We used to sing that back in the day. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> There was a couple of highlights in the match. I thought Drew was working on the belly of LA Knight um, on the other side of the ring with attacking him on the metal pole thing. Uh, Drew going for the Claymore but missing, but landing on LA Knight's ankles, nice. which was a horrible spot, which could have gone wrong, but thankfully it did not. But it was one of those segments, lads, where all the Elimination Chamber boys came down. Yeah. I bet that's how we- all the Chamber boys came down in their nice white gowns. <laughs> <laughs> Here come the Chamber boys. Give us a song, lads. Name, all the line, we are the Chamber boys. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 boom. We want you in our room. <laughs> But they all came down, didn't they, Matthew, and did moves on each other. Yes, they did. Ending of a shoot RKO. It did. Out of nowhere, by the way. Uh, oh, I've heard that, yeah. In, into shot from out of nowhere. Right. And that's how the show ended. I thought wow, it was what fine. A show. I thought it was fine. I thought the DQ finish was, you know, telegraphed because we are, you know, the go-home show for a chamber match with the chamber boys. Mm. Uh, but it was all right, all the same. Yeah. Uh, they, didn't show any, they didn't show any footage of Grace Mullard, the EC presser, in Perth since she was on SmackDown this week. So it was like, they're still trying to make it look like, no, this happened this week. Shut up. Fair enough. Yeah. Can't keep the magic alive. Storytelling. Episodic, some might call story it. Story makers, story makers. Uh, that takes us nicely to the re-elimination chamber in Perth. No, I said Perth. <laughs> this is the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and no miss. I'm not going to steal your handbag. I'm saying Perth. Ah, oh, okay, thank you. Oh, wow. The place in Australia is silly. I want to hear what the lads have to say about the Elimination Chamber Perth feeling. Thank you. Give me that. a Perth. That took a few <laughs> seconds. Yeah. Give me a Perth. It was the end of last week's podcast. Dusty, <laughs> Dusty Rhodes stealing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Right, so it was Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae versus the Yeah, we did a few seconds. <laughs> what what I would say before we get into the into the meat and potatoes of, of what happened down under, how lovely to watch a live WWE pay-per-view at 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning. It was so great. I could barely oh. contain my excitement as I vomited because I had some <laughs> a, a disagree with me. Oh, with no. Oh. So it was me, an empty stomach, a, pi- a pile of basic <laughs> cereal that I couldn't eat, and some Rennies. <laughs> Thank oh, God for it. I should have put them in the Hall of Fame this week. Bloody hell. Sounds like a diet saying. of pigeon and horse for you, man. Yeah, <laughs> really. So I think about maybe I should check my gut health. Yeah, I, oh, I, think should, I think you should check your gut health. So was, I watched it and people were like, oh, well, your thoughts are when I hate birth. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was in our well I was slightly different because like, I made breakfast Alex Alex had the morning off so she watched it with me and we had our pajamas on it was lovely and then her sister rang for a chat during the women's match so I watched it without the commentary on as they talked about what was going on in, oh. in back home and e I saw this the other day and I'm like, oh, this is great I'd like to hear what Colin God, what a match to miss out the, the women's chamber match oh, we watched it but we had it on mute oh. <laughs> so I couldn't tell you what anybody said in it I'm sure they were all lovely bless you. By the way, the Kabuki Warriors defeat the home country hero Indy Hartwell and a little friend, a little friend Candice Gallery in a pre-show match of the evening. Yeah, Indy got the hot tag and looked good while doing so. Uh, I think we do now need segments where Indy can give some character because I think uh, in ring stuff seems a lot better than it did in NXT. She mm. seems a lot more solid in like the hoss role of the tag team. Yep. Um, obviously, it's nice to see her on the card because she's the home country hero. But apart from that, there wasn't much to say about the match. It just was a just a nice pre-show match. Order. Do you think they looked, Indy and Candice looked a bit annoyed when they came out? I, d- I didn't pick up on that. I just felt they looked a bit annoyed. What they oh, like I hate dogs? wrestling in front of my home country. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, it might have just been the nerves. I don't know. I just thought... <laughs> He's really doing the Buff Bagwell thing. Going, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. Let's just go lie there and take two Sean Ton bombs dead quick. Yeah. <laughs> There's a throwback in our... Well done, mate. Bloody hell. Thank you. Becky Lynch comes out on top in the Women's Elimination Chamber match, uh, which we knew because they already said at the start that... <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway. But it was halfway through the show, wasn't it? Corey was like, uh, Will Rhea Ripley... Uh, sorry, what, uh, Becky Lynch is going on to WrestleMania to face Rhea Ripley. And then he was like, oh, God. Yeah. I've done it now. Yeah. I've got to make a big mistake. Uh, yeah. Um, last eliminating Liv Morgan with a shoot manhandle slam immediately after Liv eliminated Bianca Belair. I was a big fan of that finish. I like yeah. I think it was, it was, before that, it was solid action. 
Um, the crowd really liked one person in particular. It's yeah. Tiffy time, bitches! Absolutely. <laughs> they love NXT in Australia. They bloody do, don't they? Absolutely. They've they, been watching all of them. That's the only way they could know about Tiffy like they did. Yeah. Because she's not done much on... She's been on SmackDown for less than a month, you know. Yep. Like an official member of the SmackDown roster. But yeah, her before she came out at Pod... There was chance of we want Tiffy. Everything she did got a big pop. There was bull poo chance when she got eliminated, which yeah, I didn't um, expect to see. Her and Naomi doing the cartwheel before the Alabama slam on the outside oh, of the pattern was fantastic. The yep. big dive off the top of the pod. Uh, she and Naomi, Chad, Naomi and Becky on her shoulders like prime John Cena, I might say. Like he had Edge in the big show. Yes. Tiffy had oh, Naomi yeah, say, and yeah. Becky. Um, but yeah, Tiffy stole the show for me. She just looked like she belongs. Yeah. At the moment, she just, I think I think the WWE had the same idea because she rocked up in the Rumble and I went, "This just doesn't feel out of the ordinary. Yeah. This feels like she should always be here," and and I think she's got a massive year ahead of her. I yeah. feel like a lot's been said about Becky's excursion to the land of NXT, but I reckon on that excursion, she was like, "You know what? That Tiffany Stratton there. What would she like? She is just like a lovely bar of Irish chocolate on a lovely winter's morning." She should be on the main roster there, lads. <laughs> Let's get her on the main roster. <laughs> main roster. <laughs> you, like, well, you, you, stop the people, you stop calling people that, Becky. Please. Becky Lynch. She loves she the Irish other things chocolate. to eat in Ireland. Imagine what she would have said at that Willy Wonka's thing. <laughs> Where is all the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is going well, this Becky Lynch impersonation, but we're, <laughs> look, we're lagging it. When we find out that people hate it, that's when we, that's when we carry on, basically. Uh, but yeah, uh, Elimination Chamber reminded me, because you go, oh, Elimination Chamber, that's so cool. Look at it. No, the chamber. And then you watch it going, guys do tend to drag a bit if there's just a bunch of people wrestling each other. There's not that much going on, especially in the opening bits. And then, oh, Tiff's here, doing all the cool stuff. Then she leaves, and it's just... Just some wrestlers now, isn't it? Ooh, I think it suffered from a lack of yeah. a lack of heat, maybe. But obviously, it was Becky won all that. It was obviously happy. Really liked the finish, but it does seem to be just all right. Well, let's just kill time. I feel like that opening bit is a bit too long. The opening bit, especially. Yeah, yeah I think maybe it needs to be two minutes of opening action. Then you mm. get someone in from the, and then you, and then it carries on from there. I think it. I think it's just it's too a long amount of time before the first pod opens. I thought the overriding emotion for this one was like, this is a, a, a stop on the road to WrestleMania. I am Sam Roberts. This is the bump or the kickoff show for a <laughs> premium live event. Because it just like, it started the genesis of this like Liv Morgan feeling like she's being overlooked and like Becky yeah. Lynch interfering and whatnot. So that was started here because it played into the finish. Like she yes. just eliminated Bianca Belair, but then all of a sudden Becky's on top of her straight away. Uh, Tiffy, it feels like the start of her. Naomi coming back, she looked good in there as well, but it feels like the start of her again. So it feels like just. Rather than being the culmination, like it maybe was in years gone by, like it feels like just a, a stepping stone this time. Yes. Which maybe what is what you're on about, I don't know. That was good analysis, mate. Cheers, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 thank you. That's my name. <laughs> uh, the Judgment Day boys. I should say as well, like shout out of uh, Raquel as well, because she had a flare oh, up of God, uh, I, uh, the mast down. cell yes. activation syndrome. Yes. And she said, that stuff be damned, and just walked out there with no makeup on, and she looked badass for doing so. Yeah. yeah. She had a great showing in the match. Yeah, she looked yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, M more time for Raquel, I would say, as and when she's healthy and good to do so. Absolutely. Uh, the JD boys, Finn Balor and Damien Priest, accompanied by a dirty little boy at ringside, who the crowd loves so much, apparently, I only saw this online, I'm not sure it's 100% official, they darkened the front bit of the crowd because they were all giving him the finger, which doesn't sound right to me. They it's a PPV. They, they turned like. the, uh, the screen black for a second because Dom's walking. Oh, the screen black, not the crowd. Yeah, the, 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 the fans, you can see one of them's going like that. Ah, uh, uh, I wonder why the screen went off. But, I thought it was technical issues. Yeah. Pay-per-view. So? <laughs> but but they they, <laughs> they endeavor to be the same sort of TV rating at all times. Oh, they don't like cursing Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bloody bastard. Yeah, 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 Accompanied by a dirty little boy ringside, defeat the NCR of Talibate and Pete Dune. Great match. All the time in the world for the Birmingham, Tom. I'm so glad they oh. are calling it the Birmingham because Trent Seven used to do it and they used to call it the Burning Hammer. But in my head, I'm going, why don't you call it the Birmingham? Because it's yeah. West Midlands. Oh my God, and the now, Birmingham. They're now they're acknowledging it. And I, I mentioned it to somebody and they went, of course it is. I was like, I kind of thought that was the joke. It's the devil, devil inside. inside. <laughs> is it just me and UK-based wrestlers finishing puns? Yes. Am this I is your radio head coming into play. Oh, I like them. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, a pun, talking about puns <laughs> to Tom. So, yeah, no, this went a lot longer than I thought it would be. I didn't think there was any chance of them really winning, but still, yeah. it was nice. Nice contest while it lasted. It just it was more just good wrestling from the Birminghamers, uh, but also I like Dom's work on the outside as well. He was owning the crowd and Michael Cole as well for a period of time. Michael was getting riled up and he was just like, yeah, in a little dick. So he was. Yeah. And all the finish was good as well with a double choke slam from P- Priest off the ropes, uh, followed by the Coupe de Grasse from uh, Finn Balor. Um, but yeah. Just a shame the fan investment's not there with the the the, the NCR. They have only just come together. Yeah. Give it time, let it breathe. Yeah, so this is just, as you've said, like this, their stepping stone is mm. losing on a big show like this, uh, which two, just makes sense. Two Alex Booth op- uh, observations from this one, because Alex watched it with me. Um, Are you still watching this rubbish? <laughs> yeah, no, she, oh. she, she I, when it's good, she really gets it. It's like, bless her. She comes I to, want some horse. She, <laughs> bring me more pigeon, is what she would say. Um, she acknowledged the fact that Pete Dunn is ridiculously tanned or fake tanned. She said he looks like an effing what's it compared to Tyler Bay. I went true. And she went, who's the guy who looks like a tall Ariana Grande? <laughs> Is that Damien Priest? Damien Priest. <laughs> so every time he came on screen, I heard Alex going, but no, I'm instead of me. I was pictured Ariana Grace with Finn Balor's beard. I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I enjoyed both those observations. Ah. He's a tall Ariana Grande. Aye. And Finn Balor's... Uh, a grande grande. A grande grande. Oh. oh. Is it? No, a venti yeah, yeah. grande. Ariana venti. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Come for analysis. Stay for the bad puns. <laughs> uh, yeah, Finn Balor's thumb got messed up, it looked like. But then Melter said, nah, he's all right. It looked like he just was milking it. Yeah. As as a wrestler. As, and we'll see that later on. So lo- lots of uh, milking mm. and selling. Milking the thumb. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Li- the literal milking of the I thumb. did like that Pete took credit for it, though, because he does like a little bit of finger twisting, doesn't he, Al Pete? Yep. Peter Dune. Mm-hmm. He certainly does. He certainly does like twisting those fingers. Yes, he does. Uh, I thought Michael Cole sounded really tired <laughs> during comedy because <laughs> he's like, there's your gentleman, it's 5 a.m. <laughs> Bless him. I think he did a good job, but it was also like, oh, can we end this, please? Um, Drew McIntyre, thanks to a rather sizable helping hand from Logan Paul, pins Randy Orton to win the Men's Elimination Chamber match. I believe you've missed the GYE. They're not listed on here. No. They're not written it bloody down. No. I was S- about to- Sorry, everybody. There was a Grace and Water effect on this show where Cody Rhodes oh, there was. challenged the Oh, rock. yeah, I'd already forgotten about it. Oh, God, this is... Did I it down? Sorry, everybody. Oh, no. How can we cope? Um, yes, right, so Cody challenged the Rock. That was good. I enjoyed the Kevorka. Cody's entrance on the night was fantastic. That's where the plus points end. Yeah, we'll it was a really confusing bit because you had Austin Theory come out and go, hey, Australia's rubbish. Anyway, here's your hero, Grayson Waller. Yeah. I thought maybe, in that case, Grayson's just going to batter him at the end. And then but he let him get battered. He let so. him get battered. Said, yeah. Sowing the seeds. Uh-huh. What could this mean for WrestleMania? <laughs> <laughs> Just put it out there, lads. It might be a match. We put that as a scroll block. <laughs> I'm just playing the Italian podcast. thought there was a lovely tribute to Prince and Prince only from Seth Rollins with his glasses. Nobody ah, ah, yeah. ever connected with wrestling has worn glasses like that. <laughs> Not in your dreams. Ah, oh, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was. It felt. That'd be great. You got the. No, 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 no. Move on. Ignore me. No. After the Cody challenge for The Rock, that'll be good. I, I couldn't tell if that's meant to happen before WrestleMania. After WrestleMania, I assume after. He said, like, between now and WrestleMania, my schedule's wide open. Uh, so it suggests that before he fights Roman, he's happy to have a match. Which, what could that mean for WrestleMania? Uh, Saturday. Oh. This would have been a bit more effective if they hadn't already won that. Run those bloody adverts with the two of them against the two of them. Mm. They're a bit too clever for their own good sometimes. Yeah, Uh, this was one of these segments that could have been an email. (laughs) <laughs> they went on but you know Theory took a nice bump with the uh, Stomp and... well we were su- this was we were supposed to have another match we know that now we were supposed to have Seth Rollins defend the world title against Bronson Reed uh, but Bronson uh, his wife was expecting so they weren't sure about his availability plus Seth got injured so they just ditched that whole idea it mm-hmm. turned out that Bronson's wife gave birth early he could have been there but plans had already moved on and they went he went you know what I'm I'm staying with my wife I'm where I need to be get your priorities right yeah, yeah get priorities right so we were meant to have Seth versus Bronson probably in this spot and instead we had uh, basically what the, the, a length of a match a Grayson Waller effect that didn't feel completely organised and the T's weren't crossed the I's weren't dotted on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And then Theory got beaten up at the end, and it was a bit of a, a bit of a flat end. It was, yeah. The the the, the, the definite the, the crowd were on their hands. 
sitting on my hands, I should say, at the end of the was segment. Was it just which... because it was an open air stadium and the noise wasn't there? Because... Well, no, because you could hear them the rest of the night, which is at the end of that segment when oh. Cody and Seth are getting Bertie big bollocks on the ropes and whatnot. You just couldn't hear the crowd at all. So it's just it, the segment fell flat. Obviously, I don't know what it was like live in the in the in the stadium. I assume it was raucous, but yeah. it just after the Cody challenge, it just didn't do anything, did it? No. But also keep in mind they've been in that, that massive stadium for probably about six hours and they've seen three matches. It's forty degrees or whatever it was. Yeah. And it's boiling hot, and they, yeah. they, they, don't, they don't like. It, obviously, the matches were great, but there's and there's long gaps between each of the matches. Like they really we'll pad this. Uh, yeah. Did you see that in terms of the show? There was like one hour and something of matches compared to of like longer than that in adverts and breaks between the matches. And I expect it now. It's like yeah. it was. That's why you know what? Half of it was nice. Ooh, it's on at ten a.m. Isn't that nice? And you go, oh bollocks! I can't fast forward the adverts. Yeah. yeah. So it was great because I'm there like, oh, God, let me just go to the toilet again and then come back out. And it's just like, you know, because my first you ex- can save with Geico and you enjoy <laughs> <laughs> my first experience. I skipped a poo for this. My first experience of not being able to fast forward through the adverts was Vengeance Day. And you are just sat there going, oh, hey, let's go. What are you meant to do? Yeah, I'm so spoiled. Like, I'll, I'll watch this tomorrow because of the time difference. Then also, yeah. Oof. Yeah, there's got to be a better way they can get around that, surely. Right. Surely. On a streaming platform. Yeah. Ah, mm. that was a new Inter- the, I think yeah. the only way to get around it is integrated commercials. So basically, you no longer have those stop downs for Geico commercials, but you have Seth Rollins wearing a Geico t shirt or like, you know, oh. or, t- or, or, or telling Drew McIntyre, before I save money on my insurance with Geico, I'm kicking your ass at WrestleMania. Like, yeah. that's the way you get around it is integrated. I'm going to gouge you like Wendy's are. Gouging their prices. Yeah. <laughs> They've gone back on that now. It doesn't matter now. More Whatever. things. You know, we, Shut had, up. we had the Mountain Dew lights out, uh, lights out match last year. We pretend we didn't. Yeah, no, but more things like that would be the way to get around adverts. The you know what? I'm right Toast adverts. Crunch. Hell in a Cell. <laughs> it's the unknown. Do you know? It's, I think it's someone pointed out. It's every Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Like, Premium live event match recently has been sponsored by something. Yeah. Yeah. He's What's obviously a name. Yeah. Ray should be like, this is a m- more of a son than you are, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Custody McIntyre. of the Cinnamon Toast Crunch mascot <laughs> on a pole. <laughs> Drew McIntyre, thanks to a rather sizable helping hand from Logan Paul, pinned Randy Orton to win the men's elimination chamber match. During the match, it is revealed that AJ Styles paid for a plane ticket out of his own pocket because he wasn't a part of the Reese traveling party due to him not being booked on the show. Not only that, but because he wasn't booked for the show, he must have broken into the arena as well. All so he could attack LA Knight on a 30-hour <laughs> ju- uh, ride. It's fantastic pettiness, really. Absolutely. It's, it's out the top draw. It's the Ole Anderson playbook of <laughs> pettiness. He would have sued. Yes, he would have loved this <laughs> before he died. That's all he would have wanted. I mean, obviously, I can't decide whether this is a great gig or a bad gig for AJ, because obviously he's getting paid to do a run-in. But then, like, he can't really tour Australia because he's a surprise. So he just has to stay in the hotel room and then... And playing then sneak, Xbox. Yeah, playing his, playing his <laughs> Xbox setup, but just, like, with the heat blasting yeah. in from Australia. And in flying to Australia from America, he risked falling I off the edge, it, didn't yes. he? Yeah. He really yeah, did. As we all know, the Earth might be flat. There's a chance, you know, there's some out there, but then... I'm just, <laughs> I'm just asking questions. <laughs> he got confirmation. Which way round are we going? Yeah. <laughs> He was looking for the dragons on the map. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this match, liked it. Logan Paul, again, I hate giving him a compliment, but got to give the devil his due. How did he get a pet in the pod? That's what I want to know. Uh-huh. Putting the devil horns on the side and little fat man to show Kevin Owens. Yeah. <laughs> he just gets it. And Kevin Owens being that Metro lad. Yeah. <laughs> get off. Oh, he was <laughs> banging his head onto the onto the cell, and it was just it was the same energy as, get off the Metro now! Because he, he caught chlamydia. Because uh, he carried a koala bear yes. into this, that that was like, Ugh, I can't control myself. I've got chlamydia. It's so weird. It's like, a sound bite for you. <laughs> it's so weird to get chlamydia from koalas. I, I can't comprehend that. That's. There was one heel in this match that we didn't talk about, and that was the issue with the lighting. Uh, well, there was a few. We wasn't couldn't there? stop looking at once. Once Alex was furious with me because once I pointed out, yeah. like there's because I, I think what it is is because they had that big WWE logo at the top. And now it was darker. There was almost like a shadow. There was a shadow being cast. Yeah. So whenever they stood in the center of the ring, as they are one to do when they are wrestling and sports entertaining, just this shadow on their face. And I, and I, I mentioned it to Alex and she went, I can't stop looking at yeah, that It's now. to I display think. the depravity of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the darkness of the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it ruined it for me. <laughs> I hear voices in my head and they say, go, go left a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and there was also, the, was it a bit of a marker on, it, on one of the cameras as well? It was just this splodge. Yeah. And I don't know, like, I'm not thinking, how did that happen? Come. 
Yeah, thank you. One of the cameras, uh, one of the cameras <laughs> inside the ring was slightly loose as well, but it meant there was a great moment as Kevin Owens got in the ring and started shaking the cell and and react to the crowd. The camera was yeah, shaking yeah. with him. It looked great, but I think that was an accident. Yeah. Um, do we can we mention very quickly that Randy Orton? I was about there. to say yeah. he took a dra- he did his draping DDT on Owens on the pad yep. on the outside. Then after that. He was buggered. And I couldn't work out if it was selling or part of the story he was trying to tell in the match. He gets back in the ring and takes one back suplex. I think mm. it's off LA night. And he's down for for ages. Yeah. I think the next time we see him is around about the time he does the shoot RKO on Logan Paul. And he's still selling the back then. So hopefully he's okay. Yeah, he's, I, he's, saw, I, I saw reports saying, no, he was just doing a good job. But you're like, he was, if this was him like selling naturally, he was the best work of his entire bloody career. Work smarter, not harder. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm hurt. And you can tell, but every time he's, every time <laughs> someone picked him up, he's like, oh, here we go. He braced and like. <laughs> yeah. My, the issue, I think the reason we were all so confused by it was because the, the level of selling didn't ratio with the with the move that he took. Obviously, you want to sell a bit when you do the DDT onto the thing. But if it would have made more sense and it would have caused less concern and confusion if, say, he'd been himself dropped onto the cell outside. Yeah. And, oh. they, and they show it and they go, oh, of course, Orton's got that repaired back. Yeah. That'd have been fine, but because they didn't really show it or focus on it, and then the rest of the time Orton's slightly off camera, you think something's gone a bit amiss yeah. here. Do you think working smarter, not harder? He's he thought, I don't like the bump in the chamber. If I pretend I'm hurt, no one will do any more bumps to me. Oh. I'll do one. Uh, right, that's if it. there's one guy in that cage who could do that, it's him. Right, who's going to complain to Randy? Exactly. It's very click of him, isn't yeah. it? It's very <laughs> new age <laughs> click. Exactly, mate. Good lad. And also, there seemed to be a moment where the crowd were like, Three, two, one, meh. It's the new Kevin. Where's the thing? And then like, there was no, there was waiting for the chamber door to open and they, they were kind of on them themselves. There was no graphics on screen. It, no, a graphic did appear for like three or four seconds counting down, like just in the middle of the screen. When it oh, was, is that what it was? Oh, yeah. Right, right. One for Botchmania there. It just, it just appears right Thank there. Thank you, because I haven't gone back and rewatched it because wherever I look at it, I get a r- rumbling in my tummy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they not could... in the Simon Miller kind of way either. <laughs> I think they confused people because the one in the countdown was Slim Jims. Yeah. So I was like, three, two, oh, it's 11, 10. Slim Jim. <laughs> Slim Jim. <laughs> three, two, Slim Jim. Oh, that was okay. <laughs> At the Rumble when we went to oh, Fox Park, oh. it was me and that other lad who was going, six, five, C4, three, <laughs> two, I did that one. all night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, people at Box Park. <laughs> I'm the best company. Yeah. So I'm glad that Drew won. Yes, he, he was the right guy to win. Yeah. I like the way he won as well, because again, it's another justified arsehole manoeuvre of his. He's not going to pass up a pin opportunity when it's presented itself like right, that. Right. He's not going to go, oh, that's not hypocritical of me. It's just that was the situation nah. in front of me. It's weird that we're in a world where it looks like we're getting a singles match at WrestleMania between Logan Paul and Randy Orton. But I did watch the Randy Orton appearance on Logan's podcast, and I can see why. Randy seems to be a very big fan of Logan and vice versa and that sort of stuff. I know he's going to do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Are we out of turn for saying that about Orton? No, no he, he works. works. He works. He's been around for bloody ages. He's yeah. We <laughs> went to a, the WWE show in Newcastle, and it was Orton and Riddle in a tag match. And I remember, I think, saying to Alex, who was with me, and I just said, like, you watch. Orton does nothing better than anybody else. <laughs> and and literally, yep. and he did hardly, but then he came in and did, like, four moves, won the match, and everybody was happy. Work smart, not hard. Yeah. Work smart, not hard. Orton's going to be in there to take a beating from Logan Paul, and as Logan flies off the top of the flipping WrestleMania sign, he'll catch him with an RKO. Job done. Good night, everybody. That's it. Yeah. Good match. I thought Owens yeah. and McIntyre were the standout to me in that match. And yeah, a very, a very memeable RKO as well. Yes, it was. Because yes. it was out of nowhere. That's right. Triple H. Sorry, I beg your pardon. It's Triple H. That's not true. Paul Triple H Levesque mm-hmm. announces sorry. the attendance Ooh. as 52,590. I was expecting someone else to happen rather than just the attendance being said by him. Going all the way to the ring just for that. Yeah, well, ball, there wasn't enough. Ball on, hog. There wasn't a lot on the show, so it's like <laughs> sure. They could have given him his full. Up entry. next, Kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the main event, Rhea Bloody Ripley defeats Nia Jax, who was born in Australia, uh, to retain the women's world title. After match, Mammy gets to celebrate with her mummy and her mummy's pappy. <laughs> <laughs> that is technically correct. Yeah. It is all very nice. Yeah, this was exactly what it needed to be. Nia Jax was a bit the Ripley. Ripley comes back. Everyone's happy. Yay. I don't think Nia Jax being good at the moment is a conversation some people are ready to have. Because she ever since that Becky Lynch match on Raw, she's been yep. flawless. In this match again, I thought she was a very good base for all of Rhea's offense. She then gave it, well, she did a good beat down to Rhea as well. She nailed a very 
unnailable move, if that makes sense, with the elbow drop off the, the chair with the wheels. Right. So much could go wrong there. Kofi Kingston she, knows. Yeah. Exactly. She nailed it. Uh, she's on fire at the moment, but it was a shame that the sort of context that, like, the build on Raw was all about Rhea and Becky, Corey in the segment, I think, be- a segment or two before this match, which is building Rhea and Becky. Yeah. It's in Australia. Yeah. Well, even on Raw, I remember, like, Becky went, will I take you on, Rhea Ripley? And then Pat McAfee to go, oh, no, jokes. <laughs> <laughs> But everyone knew. I mean, this is the only pay-per-view or PLE, whatever, I'm not a Tory, pay-per-view uh, in history where I've got all the results correct, the predictions, because it was the most predictable thing ever. And I don't mean that in a negative way, so nothing wrong with that. Uh, but yeah, exactly what it said. That, oh, we have an expression for that, don't we, in the podcast? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Seal there, Joe. Ron Seal. Pro's production ting. Ron Seal does what he says on the tin. It's a new thing on the podcast, Tom. Ron Seal, what's exactly what it, it says, says on the tin. That's yeah. what we say about certain matches that do what they say they're yeah. going to do before. That's why that Ross made that noise. <laughs> That's, That's the noise of Ron Seal. The noise of offense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any other thoughts on this, Tom? Um, I, I, I'm i with Ross in what he says that we're not ready to have the conversation about Nia Jax yet. Um, Alex has a real issue with Nia Jax, oh, which is amazing. Because like Alex was like, why is she doing this? Why is she on last with Rhea? Because like, I think Alex knows she's got a bit of a history of, of doing a number on people. And so we collectively do kind of wince every time she does something that's a, like a level two or level three move. I think the one that really got us was when they were on the announce table. And I noticed they hadn't taken all the computers off the announce yeah. table and I thought oh god that's gonna hurt so it's it's one of those things where because historically she has been she's 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 been somewhat dangerous to be polite it's gonna take a while for that to go away and it's gonna take a few more matches and I still don't think she like she has been like safe she st- it still makes me nervous to watch her. Oh, yeah. It's Do you know all, what I mean? The thought's always there because yeah. of how many times it has gone wrong. But like in this match, she did before the stuff Everything on the fine. table was an avalanche Samoan drop, which is a difficult maneuver to do. Yep. Yeah. It just, yeah. It just, she is doing well. Bless her. Bless her cotton socks. Yes, get more condescending. I didn't mean to sound condescending. No. God I, I bless did. you. I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> Who's an, irresi- you know Who's an irresistible Who's force? Who's a good wrestler? Are you an irresistible force? Yes, you are an irresistible force. Uh, Jax, you're a jam-up guy and a great wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, that was uh, Perth. Cheers. Don't take me hand back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was, that was good. No, that was good. You should take pride in that. I'll give a quick shout, and he'll love this, because uh, I know he's a fan of what we do, and I'm a fan of what he does. Big shout to Josh Robinson, who is a content maker from Oz, who did his first uh, few days of media for WWE, interviewed like Becky Lynch, Bianca Benair, Rhea Ripley, did the whole media scrum thing. And I, I personally think he represented himself incredibly well. Uh, I've, I've known Josh for a couple of years. He's done stuff on Twitch. So I've kept up with him. And this was a massive gig for him, massive thing for him to do. And uh, yeah, Josh, you did yourself proud. I think I've told you as much uh, online, but you did yourself proud, sir. Well, well done. done, mate. I didn't see you, but kind of Vegemite in the post. Right? Vegemite <laughs> in the post for you, sir. <laughs> All right. Pop it open like Austin. <laughs> uh, this follows AW Collision, Vision, Envision, Indecision, Supervision, Circumcision, Revision, Division, Commission, Derision. Ran out of options at that, that point, Matthew. Oh, oh did on you? a good roll, just type. You just type. One more, content. it would have been perfect, Ross. Yeah, but you, you, good you, rhymes you blew all the way through. It. Sick bars, some might say. No. Powerhouse Hobbs proves he is an indestructible man as he defeats Sammy Guevara in an ODQ bout. Big fan of the give me your belt Kevin Kelly bit, where he just took Kevin Kelly's belt off him and his pants didn't fall good. down, but it was good all the same. Oh, just imagine McGuinness. <laughs> your pants fell down. <laughs> Yelling about it. Your pants fell down. <laughs> uh, put Hobbs and Wardlow in a tag team, I'm saying, after this match, because they are one and the same. They're getting going, then they stop, then they get going, then they stop. Yeah, they often kind of act each other, yeah. which is annoying. Uh, there was a chair shot that looked like it was done to the head, but was done safely, so it, it looked gnarly, but it was... It did look nasty. Sean Spears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a massive catch and spine buster off the apron through a table from Hodds we could have ended the match there as far as I was concerned yeah. but we didn't um, we got an impressive go to hell from Sammy after the table spot on a man the size of Hobbs that wasn't the finish even though Sammy did that to a massive man yeah. Sammy went to the top of the ladder didn't he to do a swanton bomb to the floor two glass bottles to the head I'm not a fan of glass bottles in wrestling I know it's not real right this wrestling stuff that we watch but these glass bottles, they're a different level and not real, right? And I'm not, I don't like them. Uh, unpredictable. 
They're unpredictable. Yeah, the glass bottles are, yeah. In the sense that you can obviously aim to smash glass over someone's head, but you don't necessarily know where the shards are going to go, how big they're going to go, where they're going to land. And... It's just not realistic, Tom, all right? <laughs> Ole Anderson wouldn't stand for these fake glass bottles in the rest of them, and I'm not going to stand for it either. So what you're saying is you like the realistic glass. I like real glass. Well, why don't you cry me a river? <laughs> <laughs> they call me the scapegoat. <laughs> I don't know why I moved there. Is that why? Is that why you got my talks though? No, he did, did, did that on New Japan, didn't he? His, did he? His, his name's Scapegoat Jack Perry. Scapegoat. Scapegoat. Goat to goat. Mm. Love that scene. <laughs> oh, nice. The scapegoat. Just cowabunga dudes. Down he comes on his skateboard, dressed as a goat. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> Um, it was good. It was a laid on thick this match, so it was maybe a bit too thick. A bit too many things yeah. going on, but it was good all the same for what it was. And this came what a week, two weeks after he just had. Very similar match with Jeff Hardy. Mm. You end up like like the criticisms of John Moxie. You end up getting a bit numb to wow. He came off the top rope, threw a lad at a table. Again, you know, if this happened once a month, maybe all right. But two weeks in a row, all right. Two three. glass bottles though. That's a difference. Two glass bottles standing on a wall. And I just wanted Hobbs to win. I thought it was a good effort and everything. They did. They work really hard. But it maybe it's just me. But I just was like, okay, didn't really register. Like, okay, well, we're doing it, this it again. Needs are we... go, it needs, either for, well, not for Sammy now, he's been beaten, but for Hobbs, it needs to go somewhere. He was he was in the Meat Madness thing, now he's in this eight pack challenge. He needs to win, but also Wardlow's there, who needs to win. They just don't yeah. go anywhere when they have these big wins on TV, which is a shame for people like Wardlow and for Hobbs. Right, and I think that's part of it, like, why, why should I care about this? Yeah. It's just a match. Where's it going to go? Get the GPS out, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Yeah. You, you <laughs> will watch this. <laughs> John Mox and Claudio talk some words. I bring up their match against FDR at Revolution. The pair aren't on board with the time limit draw they had last week against FDR. Claudio cooks FDR for living in the past while labeling the BCC the thing you have to get through to get the future of professional wrestling. That was a good line. Ooh, Very good like line. That. Uh, the story of Claudio walking 20 plus miles in his first day of training oh. in America with Fifth Finley and Dave Taylor, but he didn't sweat. He didn't care that it was 20 miles. That's child's play to him. Uh, they, cause they were saying, like, oh, we can go 20 minutes easily. Can you go longer? Um, and all that stuff about, you know, paying homage to the the the, the, uh, the in one of the tag team, uh, whatever, it is, the Mecca, that thing. That was good. I've made a mess of my, my sentence there. Um, <laughs> Don't okay, yeah, Ross. We know yeah, what you're talking about. Good. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then Claudio took the what am I thinking of question seriously this week. And mm-hmm. he's done about the future and how they have to get through their BCC to get the future. Good promo. Different vibe yeah. the last week. Just feels like they're taking it seriously now. But maybe that was on purpose. I agree. Yeah. I think maybe that's it. If the pro- pro- progression is they go, oh, a bit silly. He, he, he. Your wife's panties. And then next week's like, <laughs> all right, yeah, never mind glutes that then. it was, not oh, glutes. panties. Glutes. Well, you know, he's a pervert. That's what you're thinking. So, um, Renee's panties. Oh, just whatever. Um... <laughs> I'm done myself dirty here. Someone's going to move on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, now they're taking it more seriously. That makes it so, oh, okay, cool. There's a progression. There's a story. Mm. And again, Moxie and Claudio together, they look rubbish against the same, oh, sorry, not Moxie look rubbish against the same LL guys. But now it's all FTR that they can go together really well with those two. So mm. I'm looking forward to more of this. And that uh, went right into FTR defeating Shane Taylor Promotions in a match that just went over 10 minutes. Oh, Shane Taylor at the part in the early going, oh, yeah, just yeah. flattening both Dax and Cash. Um, FTR fought back while making the, the promotion lads look good and won with the old doomsday device, uh, as they should do, because they are going to fight the BCC and need some momentum yep. on this AEW kickoff show. Um, I love Cash's promo at the end. I think I wrote it down, didn't I? About the cockroaches. We are a better cockroaches. Yeah, and claim the BCC won't be able to get rid of them that easily. FTR bold claims Moxie et al. are mad because FTR isn't scared of them like the rest of the locker room is. Yeah, Dax Ooh. didn't even mention the great Yuda either when he's going through each of the BCC lads. Poor the great Yuda. <laughs> <Why would you? laughs> he gets just forgotten about again. <laughs> yeah. Also, how do you pronounce Moxie et al. as E-T space A-L? Et al. E-T space A-L. But I thought eh, E-T was A, eh, like Canadian eh. That's if you speak French, yeah. That's and in French, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, et al. But et if you say it like that, it doesn't sound right. Did you not go to university? For French. No. I feel the same <laughs> about when people say coup de grace. Coupe de Gras. Apparently Americans say coupe de the, the S That's on the end, but we say, I say coupe de gras. I say coupe de gras. Yeah. But Americans like, no, we say, we say grace before eating. <laughs> and thanks to our Lord. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. For our president, Willy Wonka. <laughs> 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 anyway. Uh, so, yeah, no, this is what it needed to be. Just building up to this lovely match. I am liking FTR versus... Um, the BCC. They will have some fun at the pay per view. Yes, like there's there's just there's a lot of matches that they're getting set at the pay per view. I just go, they're just gonna have a nice time, and then yeah. these four, I think, are gonna get creative and have a nice one. 
I agree. Mm. Uh, sadly, then, that means they take up all the cool stuff on the show because then Thunder Rosa defeats Lady Bird Monroe, the match that went over two minutes. <laughs> in those two minutes, though, Thunder Rosa beat the piss out this Lady Bird with chops and the strikes around the ring. She then just wins the match because they haven't got much time, clearly. But then she does the LIJ fist, which I saw some people make a thing of on Twitter. So I thought I'd mention it here for you to go, Hey, pal, you're looking into that too much there, pal. You shouldn't hey, be saying that. You're looking into that too much, pal. <laughs> you shouldn't be saying that. But it could, the, the Roosh stuff is still bubbling under the surface, as it has been for... A year. A year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, at what point do we just go the forgotten? I think it's bubbling we? over now. I think, I think we just take it off the pot. I think it's molded. Evaporated. Because <laughs> he, mentioned, he mentioned a new man and woman to join <laughs> LIJ. And uh, Thunder Rose is an easy pick for that. Yeah. Mm. Because you know it's it's something different. It's a new it's a new thing for her to do. It's mm. rather than just being I'm a wrestler. I'm going to wrestle. Yeah. Stuckley Hathaway almost calls Julie Hart and Sky Blue the H word. <sighs> Chris Statlander then makes it known that she wants to fight Sky Blue because they're one to one in matches and Americans hate draws. Yes, they do. We've been over this. <laughs> yes, so they're gonna have a, th a third one to have someone come out on top. That's right. uh, yeah, you know he said the H word. Shocking, but they played it off well with some wordplay with Willow Nightingale. That could be a nice show, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wordplay with Willow Nightingale. <laughs> I'd watch it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I'd pretend I watched it. Uh, Max Caster chokes on his way to the ring before Aww. Colton Gunn, Jay White, Billy Gunn of the BBSG defeat the Iron Savages and their new friend, Jacked Jameson. Just their friend, and he's not new. He's been there all the time. <laughs> yeah, the dude who's always there with Iron Savages. <laughs> Now, an interesting thing was well, two interesting things here. One is Max Caster choking and him not really saying for certain if that was deliberate or not. Do we think maybe that might? Because I, I did pond. I just watched that initially mm. and went, "Oh, bless him!" Hey, it, all, it happens to the best of us. But then, but then I leaned into that, going, "Is this part of a, a long game with Max Caster, where he's just going to keep flubbing his raps and then eventually give up the rap thing and do something different?" Mm. I thought that because you can't keep on doing it again and again and again and it's almost like what's he going to say this week and yeah you know. it's about to be a way to, it might be a way to rest it by having him yeah. lose the confidence in it and, and have people want it again you know to turn around and say I'm not going to do that anymore because the kids call it washed and then all the comments <laughs> well done. can yeah. say oh don't you must definitely do that again and then there's the a new speak for themselves and, then, the and then there's renewed <laughs> ah, love once more <laughs> and there's renewed love once more <laughs> But what did Michael Hayes say? He's like, you don't leave a, 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 a territory when you're at your bottom. You leave when you're at your top because then they'll always want you back. So if he stops it now when people still like it, mostly, it's like... But oh. if he transitions into something new, then he goes... Even well, like more spoken word poetry. <laughs> Max Caster. I am like a tree in the forest. Could be the poet Larry, couldn't he? He swaps yeah. it. Yes. Oh, there you go. Love that. Uh, I reckon it was... Sorry, I've been watching way too much Japanese wrestling. <laughs> I always go, that one didn't work. This one will. Get fired up by a poet lariat. Uh, I, just, I just thought he flubbed his lines because they sort of referenced it on Dynamite, didn't they? He was like, did anyone catch that? <laughs> yeah. And then like, ah, oh, joke's dead. The other thing of note was the Iron Savages bumping, which has always been silly bollocks. <laughs> However, eagle-eyed people that like to message me stuff like this, <laughs> notice on the YouTube highlights, they cut out the amazing moment where... One of the Iron Savages, an offer Big to Boulder. Big Boulder, the arse eater, takes the famous sir, gets up, walks backwards, and then there's the 180 over the ropes. They cut that out. Yeah, they did. So I don't know. Speaking of looking into too much, uh, too much as I just told you what for doing, but it was like, yeah, can you not do that? Pal? I reckon this ass eater would have got his ass chewed backstage. Am I right? Oh, By Tony Khan. Promises, promises. <laughs> That's what Tony Khan would have done with ass. Come here, you. <laughs> so I presume, like, in terms of putting this match together, he was told, take the famous, sir, and get out of the ring. Yeah. And so really, in theory, uh, okay. your brain goes, take the famous, sir, roll out of the ring. Whether or not he just maybe forgot where he was for a bit. I, I doubt a boulder would have forgotten how to roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. But uh, he was on fire before that in the match, I thought. Big boulder. You definitely know how to roll. We got <laughs> introduced to... To Titty City, so we did. Right, he is Which completely is over the top. He got his big hairy titties out and started yeah. jiggling them like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. It What's makes not the, to love? It makes the Outrunners look like the Final Testament. <laughs> so, <laughs> good God. There was one interesting part of the match, I thought, apart from the, the sell from Big Boulder, and that was Colton looking for a hot tag, two people Aww. on the outside. He bypasses his father to go to Jay White, which is what he should do, but now they're all together, you'd maybe think that you know bygones would be bygones with his dad mm -hmm. and that storyline. So could it mean something in the future? What could it mean for WrestleMania? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we don't know, do we? Because you're not doing WRT. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, Brian Danielson takes the piss out of Eddie Kingston's promo style oh, while letting us know Jun Akiyama is Eddie's hero. And that's why he's fighting him later. Danielson lambast Eddie's wasted potential, which is why Bry will win a revolution. Oh, probably one of the highlights of wrestling right now is Danielson just hating Eddie. Oh, if I was uh, Eddie Kingston right now, I'd be like, hey, nice shoes. Ooh, that hat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> no, instead I'm going to talk about wrestling and also the wasted potential of Eddie, which is why I hate you so much. Me. Really good. Just stunning from this man. And he laid out the story as well, which is yeah. sometimes we'll have to go, what is the story of this match? That's the story of the match there. It's Eddie's hero. He's going to beat him because he doesn't like Eddie. Simple. Lovely. That's it. Oh, I could make it so simple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, sorry, then he takes a famous and he rolls out the way. For... <laughs> <laughs> like ass eaten. Um, Malachi Black, in his first singles match since 2022, defeats the bounty hunter Brian Keith thanks to a devastating shoot Black Mass in a match that almost went 11 minutes. You know? Following the match, Mark Briscoe's here with a kendo stick. Mark also has a massive spy and tries to stab Malachi <laughs> with it, but he misses, puncturing the top term buckle cover instead. Yeah. So they mentioned on commentary that October the 23rd, 2021 was the last time Malachi lost a singles oh, match lost a single okay. in a by pinfall in AEW. So they didn't mention who he lost it to. Can you guess who he lost it to? Cody? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was on Di Saturday Night Dynamite. Because I knew if you were seeing Punk, you would have got the microphone and be like, oh, well, he's still in pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just thought it was interesting because it was a, writ of, Cause that's, a veiled it, reference made to Cody by... Who was it? Wardlow. Yeah, the That's EVP right. side yeah, yeah, yeah. of him. So, because people have been going, ooh, Malachi Black doesn't like losing. He goes, That's not true. The House of Black has not. No, you. <laughs> you specifically have not lost since 2021. Yeah. October 2021. <sighs> a pinfall loss, we should and say. And again, this is his first singles match since 2022. So, uh, Bounty Hunter Brian Keith did not beat Malachi Black. Oh, I feel I felt sorry for the bounty hunter because he's clearly a very charismatic fella. There's a nice gimmick there with yeah. his look and whatnot. Mm, he does look cool. We need more vignettes to explain who he is because there was chance of kick his head off during this match. And I feel like he's not the sort. He seems like a very easily easily likable character that wouldn't get those chances if we knew more about him. About you him. definitely could have some fun yeah. with vignettes for Brian Keith. Yeah. And you and and all you need three vignettes and you've got a new guy there. And the whole thing is, is he's you know he just. Collecting wins. That's all it needs to be. And bodies. And bodies. <laughs> I am the Brian, the big bad Brian. <laughs> Bounty hunter. <laughs> now, I know people have been talking about that type of thing, like, oh, who we need to be introduced to this and need to have this. All I know is, if this means that we get the ECW-style return of music videos with voiceover and just not paying the music companies, then I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was nice for what it was, but it was the highlight Malachi Black, not highlight Brian Keith, so... I was a big fan of the finish because that was that was a shoot black mass out of nowhere. So it was, some might say as well. Um, and then Mark Briscoe can do the supernatural stuff now. I wish they would limit it just to the House of Black because it sort of loses its effect when <laughs> yeah, the lights go out in the arena. Say, like, oh my god, is Brody King going to attack Malachi? No, it's Mark Briscoe, the chicken farmer. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he knows how to do that. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> and then Serena Deeb defeats Lady Frost in a match that put the fun into fundamentals. <laughs> Rod yeah. Seal, this was, Jill. You don't have to play the thing again. We'll just do it one a week because yeah, we'll kill the on. gimmick, brothers. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought expectations were high because they are two very, very good wrestlers and mm. they delivered. They were just a very, very good wrestling match. Mm. Uh, Lady Frost with the old Tiffy Stratton cart cartwheel yeah. air raid crash instead of an Alabama slam, taken from the best. I, th well. I thought, like, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Shades of the late great Tiffy Stratton. <laughs> Um, and then there was a promo at the end there from Serena saying any woman who wants to join the women's division thought she was hinting at somebody new, but then she wasn't. She was hinting at something with one of the... Ch uh, Tony Storm, wasn't it? Which was weird. I thought that was the thing, like, oh, if you want to join us in the, the women's division, actually wrestle matches. She's the bloody women's champion. She's got a pay-per-view match at the weekend. But that's, that's the insult, isn't it? If you want to join us in the division, oh. rather than being a silly silly person. Yeah, that's it. So Serena Deeb... Don't you come quite I, a few. I, I, I like <laughs> it. I like it, because Serena Deeb's going like, look, I'm a wrestler, and I'm sick of gimmicks. She should be almost like a gimmick hunter. <laughs> <sighs> Go back all the gimmick wrestlers and just... Frankie Kazarian. Just break them all. Yeah, it's a, it's simple and effective. Now it's yeah. coming to the ring. You guessed it, Serena Deeb. And in your main event, Brian Danielson defeated Jun Akiyama thanks to a shoot running knee, <laughs> followed by a more calculated running knee in a match that went 1557. Uh, after final bell, Eddie Kingston was on commentary for the entire bout, is flipped off by Danielson, which pisses off Big Jun, so Danielson hits Jun low. This sees Eddie get in the ring, but he's intercepted by Claudio, whose appearance brings down FDR. Fighty fights happen to close the nighty night. 
Sorry, I went all Jackie Wacky there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Wacky, <laughs> Jobby Wobby. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this just, again, exactly what it needed to be. Danielson beating up Akama and then looking over at Eddie going, is this your boy? <laughs> Yo, but you grew up watching this lad, didn't you? Yeah. And Eddie going, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Even a moment when Akiyama, um did a, was it belly to belly? Think off the apron and kind of slipped, but still nailed it. Nigel covered up well there for yeah. him, saying, Daniel, was it Danielson lowered his hips or something to lessen the effect of it? Nigel, him. you amazing bastard. Yeah. I love <laughs> you. How fantastic are you? Uh, there was one bit of AEW content that didn't get onto the TV this week because Lord knows it's loaded enough. It was on their social platforms, and I wanted to give it a mention uh, as it looks as if uh, it looks as if we might be seeing Sanjay Dutt booted out of Jeff Jarrett's faction. <laughs> oh, I forgot. In Why a is that, Tom? In a video that was shared on their Twitter in which Jeff Jarrett gives a shout-out to Tom Campbell of Cultaholic. Thank you, Jeff, my best friend, Jeff. Call your team total non-stop assholes, you arsehole. Uh, San- Sanjay Dutt looks like he's the, the, the latest victim to possibly be uh, getting the wrath of Jarrett because for a while, Jay Lethal was in a bad place with him and now it looks like Sanjay Dutt might be... Uh, on his way out as well. Oh, no. <laughs> How dare you? It's my best friend Jeff Jarrett you're talking about. That's nice that Conrad Thompson came with that gimmick of calling him total non-stop Stop, assholes. he did not. He pre- he's pretending that he came up with it. And I'm livid with you, Connie. I'm he livid with you. He wouldn't lie to me. Have you got the original ECW logo they used to have on the stage back in the day? No. I don't think you do. Gonna, Conrad does. Gonna, so it's his. I'm going to take out a mortgage <laughs> on a beating on you, Connie. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're lovely. <laughs> I being like the beating that Danielson gave June Akayama in the main event of Collision. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful transition. Obviously, because I know you know all about the old Japan, so you know how Akayama's well, important to the company. my ears were humming with glee when I heard the commentary team speaking about the fact he was an Olympian back in the day yep. and went to some kind of wrestling university with fellow greats of the game. That was wonderful to hear from the commentators in AEW. There was lovely Jumbo Saruta knee used to good effect by June well as well. Ye. Up the Jumbo. Um, and then it was... Because you always think when you see these lads hobbling down to the ring, with all due respect, it's not going to be as good. But it was just a proper nice throwback, stiff but safe wrestling match. Yeah. Well, that's what he is. Like, oh, there's a Japanese wrestler here. Mm. He's 50. Oh, oh, here we go. (laughs) Here we go, (laughs) lads. Because, again, the finish was a shoot that knee that he caught him out of nowhere with. Like, it was just like, ba-bang, out of nowhere. Like a cat, so he was, Brian Danielson. And he gets him with the prop one for the finish. The American cat, they call him. Yeah, the American cat. (laughs) <laughs> yep. well. And again, it's so good because Eddie Kingston is completely justified and saved his mate. Then Connie comes out because I don't like you. <laughs> we sure can, but that was a while ago. Come back to hating you again. <laughs> Feud will never die. Good. Long may it not die. <laughs> Raw is a dirty kumquat. A dirty kumquat is in the ring <laughs> and introduces his girlfriend while being abused by thousands of strangers. <laughs> you said you can't, you calm, calm down as an artist, yeah? <laughs> Rhea Ripley talks about being from down and down. But that doesn't stop the mother from always being on top. Becky Lynch heads down the ring and hypes up the pair's WrestleMania match. Lynch says she's done everything Rhea has done, but has done it whilst also writing a best-selling book. Dominic, nobody talks to mommy that way. Becky, shut your mouth, you little kumquat. Yeah, she's got a little kumquat. <laughs> It's What's like the, an orange, isn't it? I don't know. Joel, can we see some pictures of some... It's like a tiny little Com- yeah, orange. Kumquats, thing. please. Some little, little kumquats. You're a dirty little kumquat there. Oh, yeah. they are little oranges. There's only four segments, though. Oh. My world has oh, been opened look here. look at that. See, so that looks like a pleasant little thing. What, why, are you, why, is she, why is he a dirty little kumquat? Because he's dirty. <laughs> yeah, you say you don't little put anything after that. You dirty little pot noodle. Yes. You dirty little fudge cake. What there happens you if you type ooh, in ooh, dirty ooh, kumquat? Ooh, 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 you screw up. In <laughs> Let's have a look at a dirty, dirty kumquat. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, oh, no. Not, not on a work computer. Oh, you got this video. Oh, oh, you look at the screen. Here we go, Joel. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey there he is. He's a dirty little Whoa, kumquat. What's, what is dirtykumquats.com? <laughs> Joel. No. No. <laughs> Joel. No. Let's go, Joel. Joel, come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. here on the podcast. Let's live in the moment. Home. Fresh. Dirt. What was the next one? Quad shop. <laughs> Fresh dirt. Dirty kumquats are a photographic oh. collection of unwashed grapefruits. Which <laughs> <laughs> one is you? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. There's Dominic there. Yeah. Middle, middle, right. Oh. oh, that's inside a dirty oh, apple. That's, that's nice. not being protected by Rhea Ripley. <laughs> Oh, oh no, it's been cancelled. There's <laughs> <laughs> the judgment day behind it. It's a sex dungeon then. <laughs> <laughs> a dirty bukake kumquat. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's been a busy day. Oh, there's Dominic. Yes, dirty, dirty rotten kumquat. Yeah, dirty rotten kumquat. That's live. I don't know, Jeff. <laughs> a dirty, <laughs> a dirty gaped kumquat. Gaped? <laughs> that looked like Lionel Richie, that last one. Dirty sacked kumquat. Oh, I'm sorry. What <laughs> Future Endeavoured, we call it. 
This is Becky Lynch's website. What's going on here? Dirty tossed salad kumquat. You're a that's dirty tossed salad, salad That's kumquat. just zig or zag. <laughs> You're a dirty <laughs> canvas <laughs> kumquat. <laughs> I feel like it's just that move. <laughs> all right, all right, enough of this. Enough, enough, enough. <laughs> what great. is this? It's an art it's website. It's an art thing. I love it. Dirtykumquats.com. It's actually all right. What's that one there? There's so, oh, many. There's so many. I want to smoke in a tab. It's bigger than him. <laughs> <laughs> Go down to the tab smoker. What's that one called? Go down. Dirty D- butt cam. <laughs> <laughs> no, kumquat, don't. You'll stun your growth. Joel, if you've got any ballocks, I dare you to make one of these kumquats the thumbnail this week. The whole thing. <laughs> I'll sneak Just one in Just a kumquat, there. nothing else. Just a... <laughs> now oh. have the Google it. The clockwork orange kumquat. All right, enough, enough, enough. Dirty enough. clockwork kumquat. <laughs> in repost, Ripley says, the man always thinks she does everything better. But behind every great man, there is a greater woman. Solid line. And then Nia Jax arrives and goes, that's me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> the jumps an inch from behind with Rhea and Dom heading up the ramp. I was thinking at the time, that's unjustified, Nia. You just had your chance at the women's title. You've lost it. But you remember, a few weeks ago, Nia beat Becky. That's right. Aye. And Nia's had her hair done. Aye. Or not had her hair done. Or not, oh, I guess. I think yeah, that's yeah. a natural poof. Why are you looking at me poof. like you say that? Don't you dare do that. I'm nine. kidding. You I'm naughty ye- boy. You naughty kumquat. Ooh, you see, the joke <laughs> is... <laughs> Backstage. Matthew's, Matthew's, says, Matthew's a raging homophobe. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, Nia. <laughs> Backstage. <laughs> Nia says she'd be the one going to WrestleMania because she beat Becky on Raw a few weeks back, as Ross just said. Tonight, Nia is going again is going to give Lee, Liv Morgan ten times the beating she already gave Lynch. Mm. That'd be good if I could read it. Um, <laughs> That's not, nothing real else to say, there is there? That's just what happened on that segment. Not a sausage. We learned Pat McAfee is going to be in 2K24. Oh, as is that guy, you can see him, whatever his name is. And the other peoples, inclu- peoples, including Post Malone, are going to be DLC as, as well. Yeah. Oh. They really, yeah, well, there's loads of good stuff in the DLC. Sandman's in there, the Dudleys. Yow. Yow. There's one of them. There's a proper manatee job of South Park. Just the manatees have just picked these names and then they've just put them in a DLC pack together. Well, I guess because they might be there. Well, Sandman might be there because of Philly, hmm. WrestleMania, yeah. EC Dub. The Dudleys are definitely showing up. The- RVD apparently not showing up because he does A-Dub now, so... There's a WCW pack which comes out right at the end that includes, and I'll quote, Mr. Perfect, who Whoa, wasn't Mr. No, Perfect no. <laughs> in WCW. WCW need to watch out, they'll get sued. Yeah, you lo- me, me, me lud. He wasn't WCW. <laughs> there was that rumor back in the day that he was going to be called like Mr. Spiffy. <laughs> Mr. Pretty All Right. It just sounds like a bloody cleaning product, that Mr. Spiffy. <laughs> Leave <laughs> your countertop spiffy with uh, Mr. Spiffy. Kurt Henning, Mr. Spiffy. <laughs> Whatever, let's move on. <laughs> Sami Zayn defeats Nakamura thanks to a hell of a kick. In a match that went 14.54. Uh, I was thinking Samuel might have injured his ribs off a moonsault on the barricade near the start of the match, but it didn't. It was just given time this match was. Mm. Shinsuke was working the liver. <laughs> That's what they kept saying on commentary. He's working the liver. I thought it was weak. Surely he's working the ribs because he did the thing onto the barricade. Like Obviously, it's a bit lower down, but admittedly, yeah. that's the key, the kind of area, right, right. isn't it? You that'd know. be a bit that'd be flashing red in 2K24. <laughs> exactly. You would just focus on the bit that's flashing red is what Shinsuke yeah. was doing. He's a raging alcoholic, Sammy, so I can see why Shinsuke was doing that. Yeah. Uh, he's been a raging alcoholic. <laughs> uh, I thought Pat McAfee was <laughs> more subdued than he has been, but I also get the feeling that Michael Cole... He's not gelling with them yet. It feels like Michael Cole is just waiting for Pat to get his stuff out of the way. And then Michael Cole's like, yeah, good point. And then carries on with whatever he was going to say. He's not getting on like he has been with Corey and Wade. Do you know what it feels like? And I was thinking about this as I was listening to them. I was thinking like, Michael Cole's always so happy to see Pat McAfee. They are like they're in a long distance relationship. But? And they've now just moved in together. And, yeah. and they still get on, but they're, you know, it's not as... It's it's not as exciting yeah. because it's every week. This is well, them being forced. That, that doesn't happen in long distance relationships, Tom. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, not all long distance when you relationships. Move in, it gets happier and happier. Let me tell you. <laughs> Do tell. Yeah. Tell to call him Pam. Just saying. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. So moving on from the liver shots. Yeah. Uh, this was lovely for Sami Zayn. Crowd yeah. were really into him. Mm. Crowd were like, yay, hit the move. And he did the move. And then he went, yeah, he did the did move. The move. And big, then he won. Yeah, big fan of the, We saw the similar finish. Did uh, Danielson on Collision, the fact he did the, the shoot halluva kick, yeah. followed by the more calculated halluva kick. Yeah. Crowd were going mental for it. it was they good. really were. I'm yeah. so happy to see Sami Zayn, even though he's not really doing much at the minute, still got the crowd's adulation. Uh, 
know, we learned Pat McAfee's going to have said that bit. Chelsea Green is in the ring. I like how you always insist on calling him Pat McAfee, uh, like the antivirus software. Yeah. Despite the fact that everyone calls him Pat McAfee, you defy convention. You are being superlative and... again. <laughs> that is so I'm here while you dress like Chris Redfield from Resident Evil 7. <laughs> Chelsea Green is... I've had that one. Where's I mean, Barry? Ah, Good one, Matthew. I was there. There you are. Right <laughs> Chelsea <laughs> Games. Chelsea Green is in the ring, claiming to be competing under protest this evening because Raquel Rodriguez stole her win in that last chance battle royal last week. Oh, yeah, that did happen. Down comes Raquel to squash Chelsea in a match that went around 120. There was a stiff lariato from Raquel. I thought Chelsea, though, in that promo owned... The segment. Yep. She's very, very good at the moment. It's Chelsea. And it was nice to see her get like an in-ring promo by herself. So I think her work building up to that has deserved such... She's very good. She's yeah. like The Miz, but not as hot. Um, <laughs> Sami Zayn says he needed that win against Nakamura, and he's on his way to becoming a champion. He just doesn't know if he'll find the title he's going for, or if the title will find him. Iranu. Yeah. <laughs> Imperium walked past Sami on the way to the ring. So what could that mean, eh? Yeah. <laughs> We're building. It feels like a multi-man match for WrestleMania, as we'll speak about more in the we notes will. as they go we on here. We will. certainly bloody, 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 whatever Matthew's loading. Will. <laughs> Cody Rhodes says he is ready for Grayson Waller in tonight's main event. He also lists all the things he's given Waller over recent things. At times, like a huge scoop on the JYE over the weekend. All right, I. His first Raw main event in Jey Uso's return to Raw. So Jey Uso returned to Raw on a GYE episode memory serves that it must be what he was saying yeah. right oh okay um cody's looking forward to hearing the rock's rebuttal or to his challenge this week on smackdown yeah great that's all he um, said yeah, there's not was, much yeah. to score so there. Bloody did, <laughs> eh? but doesn't matter because the next bit is really good gunther says he got lucky in his match against jay Uso last week and admits that nobody is perfect not even mr perfect from wcw monday nitro <laughs> dlc pack <laughs> Gunther questions who he is supposed to face at WrestleMania before he is interrupted by the Judgment Day. Huh. Damien Priest claims JD don't sweat Gunther and the lads and the mother want to add another title to their trophy cabinet at WrestleMania. Gunther would like to know which member of the JD is stepping up to him for Mania, which brings back that filthy little kumquat Don. <laughs> Eventually, Priest has to be held back by his stable mates as it appears we could be teasing the Money in the Bank contract being used for the IC title. And I thought this was rather bloody wonderful and nice because, like, oh, these are two heel stables, giving it big guns. Yeah, mm. and they, but they all, they both want domination, so at some point they're mm. always going to cross paths. And as lots of teasing, are we going to have a scramble match? Maybe the ladder match returns. What what we're going to be doing here? And I thought, wow, this would have been so great. Oh, sorry, backstage Rhea Ripley doesn't seem too happy that Dom stepped a gun through all people. Finn Balor, a love expert, <laughs> says Dom needs to go and sort things out with his mammy. But on the way, Dom runs into Andrade. He basically tells Dom that he's going to be El Idolo's first raw opponent, about 10 exact words. And so that happens. And then we get Imperium versus New Day. And I'm there like, that segment would have been way nicer if, they, if they'd done it after this match. Right. Because, oh, Imperium get the thing in the top up mania. Still to come, though, their big feud ender. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, well. Yeah, you want to get the, the slightest feud bit of tease that he's going to miss. All right. Uh, however, having said that, uh, the New Day Street fight went over 18 minutes, and I bloody loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Ross? Well, about the promo, the names that are mentioned for this multi-man match potentially are Sammy, Chad, Miz, and R-Truth brought up, but I think R-Truth right, might right. have been a piss take. I I'm shocked that the Miz was in there as well, because it feels like we're building for a tag team title match between uh, the JD and the Awesome yeah, Truth. Yeah, that's what I thought as yeah. well. But now it maybe feels like Priest could be involved in the... Or maybe it's going to be a, a tag team match book that Priest then gets involved with the IC title before that one on the card, if that makes any sense. That does make sense. But I get, because I was sitting there thinking, why would he go for the IC title when he could go for the world title? But then it's like ending Gunter's reign, isn't it? So that's still like a big thing to go for. for so on this occasion, I think that's an all right thing going for a secondary title if you missed the money in the bank. Mm. Senior money in the bank. It's that's a right. tough one, isn't it? Because like he's had that for so long and I don't see him winning with it. Mm. So, but you've got to get it. You've got to get it off him. He's not been booked well, has he? Since he won the thing, he's just been. He's always. He's never the focal point, is he? Always just no. one of the lads, one, yeah. of the cum, one of the cumquats. Yes, one of many cumquats. Yes. There are other fruit available, by the way. <laughs> um, it's one of these things. Like it's almost like the theory. Like we're gonna. You've got you in the back in case one of the lads gets injured. We mm. need to get off pronto, which is fair enough. There's enough guys on top now where there's lots of megastars that it's like we don't really need push Damien Priest that much. But got him in the got that bullet in the chamber just in case it's needed. Yeah. yeah. As for the match though, 
Wow. Oh. It was a war tish of a match, Matthew, because it wasn't very streety for a large portion at the start. But then right at the end there, it was, there was a spot with the chair in the corner on the midriff on Woods. From that point onwards, it was just a, a big old silly bollocks bollock. That's some analysis for you there, lads. No, it was, absolutely. Big old silly bollocks, yeah. bollock. I love the new day coming out with jeans and the knee pads over the jeans. Safety Brilliant first. touch. I loved that. Mm. Uh, also, Kai said, introducing the tables. Oh, Juvon tables. Yay! Oh, I put it back then. <laughs> Tiva's popping the business. Should call it the roller cola. It's like he's in the room. Uh, also, Kofi throwing the big chair at Kaiser out revenge for the previous time because mm. he did a lovely video package uh, summarizing the big feud as well. So, like, oh, yeah, he did throw that chair at It's him. a head for a head. Because you see in the feud, <laughs> Kofi had his head decapitated on some stairs. That's right. And they chucked the chair to get back at them for the head for a head. Head for yes. a head. And then the because you called back to that one. Yeah, it was so a good call. Head, head for a head. <laughs> Take a head for a head. <laughs> Turn your heart into stone. <laughs> this is all I have left for. Is this all I have left? Thank you. Lame Lots is. of brutal cane shots. <laughs> And then the wonderful tease. Again, I put this on Twitter. I really like the fact that WWE does something really well. It's like, oh my God, he's got the cover. One, two. And the referee's always yanked out of existence. Mm. It needs that yay sound effect. And it would you'd go, oh, that was actually on the show. <laughs> yeah. Whoop, they whoop. do shoot them well, don't they? And they and they catch you out every time. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, annoying as it was to not have Drew win at Clash of the Castle, and I totally get why. The yink yeah. the yoink out of existence yeah. was perfect. <laughs> to end the new show. stable of doinks with yoink and yink. <laughs> yoink yink. <laughs> Coincidentally, Hall of Famer. Kim Chi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to mention the table spot as well with Xavier Woods doing the elbow drop off the top to the floor, mm -hmm. followed by that assisted stompy thing. Yep. Lovely. Uh Kof I've written down Kofi takes a chaotic bump off the top. What that means, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos! <laughs> it just falls, I guess. And I thought there was a nice finish to the match because it was like just brutal and the lads were just using no bollocks to get the job done. Giovanni with a big chair shot on the apron followed by the poo house use of the chair that was like in the in the turnbuckles to set up the shoot roller for the win. Yep. So it was good. It had everything that match. I've, oh, I forgot that they used the demolition decapitation but modified because obviously demolition was who they beat. Get the, their title reigns the longest. Yeah. I don't know mm. if that's a nice thing or a bad thing. Like, it took, took me title reign, it took me finish. <laughs> Jeez. Barry will love it at home with his cup of tea. Ah, oh, the beard homage to us there, look. Yeah, mm. and he's there in his gear. <laughs> <laughs> Which gear, though? Demolition or... Yeah, Demolition, <laughs> of, of course. It's only polite. <laughs> Chad Gable goes to see Adam Pearce and tells the would-be alcoholic, Christ, that a title match against Gunther would mean more to him than any of the superstar because Gunther made his kids cry. Bar. Bra. Oh, I messed it up. Made his kids cry. Bra. Oh, thank you, mate. Chad is uh, big on the old momentum thing again. Pierce ends the meeting by saying he'd consider having a drink. Also, Gable's proposition. <laughs> I need a drink. So, yeah, at the start of this segment, Pierce is on the phone with Bronson, which is interesting. Yeah, so That's actually the name of his sponsor. For this multi-man match, we could have Sammy versus Chad versus Bronson versus Dom versus Gunter. That could be it for WrestleMania. Ooh. What could this mean for us, mate? It means that they, they, they said, oh, Tony Khan's not doing meat madness, so we're going to twock <laughs> it instead. Uh, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark beat Indy Hartwell and Candice Lorraine, a tag team match that didn't even reach three minutes. And now, sorry, yeah. I thought it was a, a good it. promo from Zoe and Shayna before the match, where they're speaking about their moves and whatnot and stuff happened. Yeah, it was good, like. Uh, but then I like the finish as well with the blind tag allow allowing Shayna to do the old coquina clutch. But again, it's just another match that you can't get invested in because we're pushed for time. But at yeah. least there's a women's tag team division, kind of, sort of now. Kind of, maybe. So yeah. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Unless you blink, in which case there isn't. <laughs> R-Truth is backstage with Shawn Michaels and Triple H of D-Generation X. <laughs> Miz is also there, having escaped from the room he was trapped in before the show. Some references are made as the lads are on their way to take him down to the JD. Yeah, I like R-Truth, but I don't like that they make him, like, this man who clearly has CTE and he doesn't recognize anybody. It's getting a bit worrying. <laughs> like a little bit's all right, but now I was just like, it's DX. It's easy and, and confused though. I had a dream and you were there and you were there. <laughs> it's like, all right, man. Yeah, but Champa started doing Triple H's stuff, so it's an easy mistake to make. That's He's only enabling like, Are him. you ready? <laughs> I don't think that's helping. But Matthew, are you ready? And then truth no, I ready. said, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> um, I said, truth is like, Ready for what? <laughs> 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 Called them Regeneration X. Ha <laughs> ha! Because they're regens of the men. Uh, also, Miz got trapped in a room before Raw. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Which was fantastic. That? It was I got fantastic. trapped in a room. <laughs> There's just a video on social media about two minutes long. Oh, was there? Yeah, he legitimately got trapped in a room. Yeah, he got trapped in his, he got trapped in his locker room. <laughs> 
because the door slammed shut and they couldn't get it open because it was one of those doors that bolts shut. Mm. So they couldn't get the door off the hinges. They couldn't they couldn't fix the lock. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got they it. End is, this, up, is this real? Though? No, no, this was this was for real. They end up having to, and there's a yeah, lot of footage. We, we can we can play this on the podcast because it's just yeah. on the business <laughs> social. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so yeah, there's just there's a lad going like, tr- yeah, he's on his Twitter. Yeah. It's just there's a lad going, try it now, Mike, try it now. So like, it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna try it. <laughs> he's just sat there in his locker room. Did you see how he got out? No. They they drilled a hole in the door <laughs> that he climbed through. Hole in the door. <laughs> a hole in the. Uh, it was it was like it good. was like bring on the wall. <laughs> uh, see, it would be on Monday night. Oh God, he gone way past it. There. Did you not put it? Is he deleted the video? Nah. Was it, Mick? Was it definitely it Miz? Yeah. Who put it on? He didn't see it. He may have got rid of it. Oh, he's deleted it. Yeah, it's not, oh, it's not just just put it at Miz. What Miz, a wazak! What can put up for Miz trapped in locker room? Miz door. I was trapped in the locker room. Miz trapped in the locker room. That's the Godfather. It's probably been deleted. Oh, is that him kicking the door open? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's how he got out. The Miz legitimately had to crawl out of a hole. There he is. There's oh, there he is. Oh, two minute video. Oh. This is the story of the Miz getting trapped in his locker Here's room. This is the story of Mike Miz earning. Try it now, Mike. No, I can't <laughs> be asked. <laughs> he can't be bothered. <laughs> getting paid for this. <laughs> and there's the video. Yeah, to yeah. be fair, whoever cut that hole, that's as straight as a. That's good, though, isn't it? Straight as a. Go on. Arrow. Oh, no. I can't think of What's as straight as a what? That line's as straight as a. A ruler? A ruler. It's probably one of those like buzz cutters. Straight as a Julius Caesar. It's a metal door. Straight as a Caesar. Same thing happened to me. There was one man who was straight in history. It was Julius Caesar. (laughs) Same thing happened to, almost happened to me and Sam Driver when we went to Clash of the Castle in Cardiff. You had to go through the the cat door. No, because we were staying in this hotel and there are automatic electric doors and our pass wasn't working. And then they tried the master pass and the door was just completely bolted shut. (laughs) We were outside for 45 minutes still trying to open it and all the equipment we need for Clash of the Castles inside. And it's one of those where the guy's like, uh, do you need anything from in there? I said, yeah, we need all our camera equipment and stuff. Or you're covering in that wrestling event I went yes <laughs> oh you'll need that then won't you I'm like yeah well this is unfortunate then isn't it I said yeah it oh, is that's really that's, what we need to hear this right is exactly now. what I want to hear pal cheers yep they, they, so they so I feel for the miss we didn't have to eventually they had to take the door off its hinges and like, like but the, they wouldn't come away at first so they're like literally drilling around the door they're so secure at this hotel they drilled out the door and pulled it out I've had a mate who got stuck in a, a toilet once um, in a restaurant, so they had to. But it was again not the, the actual toilet, but the toilet. The, the door just was not. That's where Jack is now, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that face is even better with your mustache, by the way. <laughs> oh, the, the pervy laugh. Proper look Jimmy going, Hill. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> Sorry. He's stuck in a bathroom someplace. How do you well, the because the Italian waiter's going. Can I take a your order? She <laughs> 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 just run in. Well, oh I'm... no, the door stuck. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just welding it shut. So it doesn't have to talk just to spaghetti under the door. <laughs> I've gone for a big walk, honest. That's why I'm not at work. <laughs> just trapped I'm walking in the bath- to Italy. Just trapped in the bathroom for a week. <laughs> I'm dealing with my, my issues by going to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> right, help wipe your pal. Sorry, I'll cut you off there. Ah, uh, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's still there. I realize it's not actually that exciting, but well, it was funny at the time. You know, he's a guy who gets stuck in the toilet, but he's one of these guys who's going to make a fuss, but then, you know. One guy tries to open the door. Another guy tries to open the door. <laughs> like, I thought, it's like a rugby, rugby scrub. So everyone turns, what the hell's happening there? So he comes out and everyone's noticed and he's there like, thanks, thanks. <laughs> and it wasn't even one of those, like, it was like later at night. People are like, whee! Oh, it was so Steve McQueen fuss. or like, like that. But it was just like, just everyone, no one. Oh, it's him. Got stuck in the toilet, him. <laughs> him just red face one. I hate this. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't that exciting. But anyway, um, Drew McIntyre heads down to the ring to tell CM Punk that he was thinking about him when winning the Elimination Chamber at the weekend. We did it, says <laughs> Drew. As he thanks the fans for praying for his success. Drew reveals that he suffered a burst eardrum in the chamber. The doctor said there was a chance he might not make it uh, to WrestleMania, which made Drew say, who do you think I am? CM Punk. <laughs> He's great. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Sitting down on the mat like Punk might do, but making sure, he's obviously done this before, not to uh, sit Don't on Don't you look up my cult, you parv, he said to someone he in the did. front row. He did, to make sure that he didn't sit on his own bollocks, which you know, we've all been there. Mm-hmm. Drew says he knows Punk is straight edge. Don't worry, because he drank enough for both of them after winning the chamber. 
Drew brings Seth Rollins down the ring and begs Seth to stop caring so much about the bloodline and SmackDown so it doesn't, doesn't interfere with their WrestleMania match. Seth says things change in his life when he had his little girl. And some things, like taking down the bloodline and the world title, are bigger than they are, so they need to do it before WrestleMania. It's a risk worth taking, says Rollins. It felt like he was trying to recruit Drew a little bit. Yes. Which is nice, because like, no, we, should, we shouldn't feud. And Drew's like, hey, out of your mind. <laughs> That's one elimination chamber, mate. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> because yeah. he's trying to appeal to his sense of, like, weren't you against the bloodline? Wasn't that the entire thing why you turned because mm. of Solo? And Drew's just so gone. He's like, shut up. But at the, end, at the end, when Seth reiterated, like, some risks are worth taking... Like you could, Drew would look like he was thinking about it, but I imagine that's a little device to mm. add a little bit of mystery, and then he'll just uh, boom Seth in the face next chance he gets. Yeah, like yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. Bang. Yeah, I'll do the bloodline <laughs> after I've got the title off you. Yeah. yeah. It's more good stuff from Drew. He's not missing in any promos that he does at the no. minute. He's just, I wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire, or if it was you, you would piss on them because. Joel, help me out here. Oh, I'll say, I was so good. It's some nice person whose name I forget uh, on X pointed out. Matthew, you keep on saying this. Uh, he's, he said you came up with it. I wouldn't piss him if he was allergic to piss. I th genuinely thought I came with that myself. And someone pointed out, no, it's from the thick of it. I went, yeah, uh, probably uh, is. Uh, been a year, years since I've seen it. You, get, you hear something and you go, oh, I'm going to keep that. They can't remember where it's from. That, so, yeah. yeah, thank you for pointing out that I'm a thief. <laughs> but Drew, Drew would piss on the bloodline if they were allergic to piss because that would hurt them. Or would Drew not piss on it? He wouldn't even go near them, would he? I hate them. that you've analysed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's just he's all about Raw and winning the title and all that sort of stuff and making making Raw great again. Do you want a better phrase to use? I'm going to sneeze in a second, but I can't hold it. I thought we were what you were doing. Um, so yeah, it was good. just no good segment. I don't think Absolutely. he'll get recruited, but I think he'll just tease Rollins along the way. Yeah. Maybe bring his daughter into it. I don't know. But it feels like Punk's going to get involved in WrestleMania somehow. Maybe the referee. You'll sing with Post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, just because Drew keeps you know laying it on very thick with Punk, so maybe he's not as hurt as some might have thought. Maybe. People... Nah, I think he's he's, he's done. But it's it, it's like Christian saying, "Ah, dead dad." It's like, yeah, it's killing. That's setting up for when he comes back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I bet you Lynch interference sees Liv Morgan and Nia Jax singles mount a match thrown out. Liv looks pissed off at Becky for getting involved in her fight. And I put, man, this was good stuff while it lasted. I'm always happy with big versus small matches. Liv was selling her Sabu arse off for all of this. Very true. Nia with the stretch muffler into the swings into the turnbuckle. Yeah. Good maneuvers. Mm. The tease. Oh, God, here we go. The tease of her hole. We teased the hole, but it wasn't given to us in full. She landed on the apron, attempting a leg drop, and she went... Yeah. didn't shout the words. She'll yeah. wait for Mania. And there was the Mania. <laughs> she'll go, Mania. three, <laughs> two, one, my hole! <laughs> oh, she does that, and then some instantly just rolls up her opponent. <laughs> <laughs> but there was the my hole chant. At yeah. Perth, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They... My hole. <laughs> my, my hole. My hole. My hole. My it's hole. It's over we go. <laughs> We bottled out of that <laughs> dead uh, Wow. Well, you tell that they can't tell that everything's scripted on this show. Can you? <laughs> so yeah, again, people aren't ready for the conversation that Nia Jax is having a good run. Too. She is. And it's very interesting what they do with Liv Morgan, because it feels like yes. after Elimination Chamber and this, she's factoring into WrestleMania somehow, but how will she get in there? <laughs> what will this mean? <laughs> what for will WrestleMania? Aye, because it's a singles match for the title, it's Becker and it's uh, Rhea. So where does Liv get in there? How does she get in there? Who does she get in she there? She could be the serial mascot at ringside. <laughs> that was Sol Rooker last year, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. Yeah. She was Mr. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And look how happy she was to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Grace and Waller and Theory are having an interview where Waller lies out of his ass when saying he did everything he could to stop his pal from taking the beat at the PLE on Saturday. Theory doesn't look impressed, but... When, that's how we look at theory. You, know, <laughs> so. you see that rubbish like fake fight you had with the media? All that. that was real, Matthew. That was they real. cold wrestling It's fake. so real that they haven't... Uh, the media were interviewing him and they haven't uploaded the proper footage yet. And uh, the reporter's name was K-Fabe. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's phone was going like that. Ooh, uh, look isn't this. wrestling rubbish? It was shot by NXT Anonymous. <laughs> that's the video I saw it was like shot from way back. I wish someone had shot NXT Anonymous. <laughs> how dare you? Sorry. <laughs> that's a journalist. 
Um, Not for long. Heyman was spotted walking across the background of shot phone in hand at the start of this one. What could it mean? Because Waller's on the screen at the same time and they had a plan. I don't uh, think these bits are obvious enough. I think you should play like evil music <laughs> of Heyman walks in. Zoom in on <laughs> Zoom in on Heyman's like his eyes darting left to right, <laughs> like the suspicious dog. And he stops to look at Wall and goes, <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> It's an interesting point though, because before Elimination Sean Bay, they had a plan. They told Waller a plan, and then Chamber happened and no plan was implemented. So what happened to the plan? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. the young ones where it panned across the shelf and there was a pack of cigarettes and they went, dun, 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 don't look at me. I'm irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> no one's around, no one's around. <laughs> That's what we need to bring back. <laughs> Made <laughs> by young adults. <laughs> <laughs> if the kids are united, they will never be divided. <laughs> Hi, I call the Holic. I love the podcast. Here's the key. Here's the TV I kicked in. That's just a <laughs> lovely podcast. Cliff. Cliff. <laughs> Sometimes I imagine if you really are a cliff and fascists keep trying to push you over it. <laughs> We're really old. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Uso calls. Oh, no, sorry. Becky Lynch gets a match uh, with Nia Jax out of Alan Pierce for next week's Raw. Liv Morgan arrives on the scene to lambast Becky for getting involved in a match. Not everything is about you. She shouts loudly before leaving. And Becky's music that started playing ended when Liv showed up. Yay! And then she left and the music started playing again. <laughs> that was Perfect. a nice touch. Perfect. Where's the and Bobby? Liv has a point. Yeah, where's the Bobby Fish? I was just, I was seconds away from beating Nia Jax. <laughs> She was. I was waiting for her to run out of energy from beating me up for 10 minutes. <laughs> I was this close to stopping her. <laughs> Lovely. It was all going according to plan. So, yeah, it's nice they gave him live something to do without being too weird about it. And what then do, Jay... What do you mean? <laughs> well, I know. She shows up and be like, I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> and I live dangerously. Oh, nah, move on, Matthew. Move on. Elimination, James. Stick, stick to referencing TV shows from 500 years ago. <laughs> Jay Uso calls himself a nearly man in WWE. He's come close to getting so many things done, but has fallen short. Drew McIntyre arrives on the scene to tell Jade that he understands what the Yeeter is going through. But he deserves it. Then <laughs> a brawl between the pair is broken up. <laughs> it's true, though. Ah, he's so good. Drew used to be... Sorry, Jay used to be a right dick, and now he's not, and Drew hasn't yeah. forgotten. <laughs> that, that's it. And it's, again, it's so great, because Drew's been a prick, but he is right to a certain degree. <laughs> oh, you're good now, are you? Oh, Re Good. Re I'm trying to put dick in the middle of recency here, and I can't do it. Recent Dixie. It's, rec it's re recency bias about dicks. This is what I'm trying to do, but I can't do it because I'm not very clever. End the podcast. <laughs> Call it Dick <laughs> Bias. Throw me in a river. <laughs> dick Bias, detective at law. <laughs> dick Bias, attorney at law. Because Drew's the more recent dick. There is in the background. Dun, dun, dun. Because <laughs> Drew is the more recent dick. Jay was right. also a dick, though, so we shouldn't forget the dickness that Jay was, even though he's a nice guy now. Yeah, they would have been friends if, like, in the 80s, the WF scene. Oh, we go through the heel locker room together. But now it's just like, no. I'm the dick. Look at me. I'm the dick now. <laughs> Cody Rhodes easily defeats Grace Wall in a match that went 7.46, then, thanks to a Cody Cutter crossroads combo. And following the match, Paul Heyman arrives on the scene. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> with some disgraced police officers, it says. That's what they said. Ah. <laughs> Heyman said, didn't he? That they were he did say something LAPD like or whatever they were, wherever they are. I can't remember. What I want to know what they all did to become disgraced police officers. <laughs> Disgraced police officers. <laughs> he tells Cody to keep the rock's name out of his mouth and then references to Will Smith. Because yeah. you don't just say somebody's name to get a match with them. Unless you're the Rock talking about Roman Reigns, but Rhodes screwed that one up. What yes, I mean? he did. Oh, oh, I see. Cody says he's a big fan of the Rock, but has a steel chair in his hands and is ready for a bloodline attack that never arrives. So he takes out the disgraced police officers instead. Heyman calls both Rocky and Roman at the same time using different mobile phones. <laughs> <laughs> that looked really silly, but yes. also genius at the same time. Because how do Which you? Is call, wrestling in general. Isn't how it? do you call two people at the same time? Is that a thing you can do on one phone? Yeah. He just, he just a zoom in, call. Zoom, yeah, yeah, yeah. zoom in on, on his phone, and he's like setting up WhatsApp group <laughs> thing. Because you can do it. Because like I've got family yeah. group, family WhatsApp group chats, and you yeah, can WhatsApp call the you entire. Yeah, yeah. You can call the entire like chat. Yeah. So you can do it that way. <laughs> WhatsApp bloodline chat sounds a bit of like. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have any thoughts, you can give them to the lovely people. Because I'm going to go to the toilet. Oh, you have ah. a nice piss there, Matthew. Ah. Are you having a poo? Yeah, I'm having a poo. He's having a poo. He's having a poo. He's having a poo. <laughs> 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 He's having a poop. 
Matthew Greg, he's having a poo. Matthew Greg, he's having a poo. <laughs> so he's Get one from me. It's fifteen fifty-five. So we'll have to see what time he comes. I back. thought we were going to carry on. <laughs> we are going to carry on. Don't Excellent. you worry. I thought Grayson Waller was beaten very easily here by Cody Rhodes, which I didn't see I coming. I was Tom. disappointed that yeah. he got such a shoe in. I like that he was in the main, but I thought he could have given a little bit more oomph to Cody. He was like the carrot instead of being the meat. He could, he could have been. That like, makes any sense. Yeah, he was. He was more what was dangled rather than the, the dangly. <laughs> I because he's getting battered, and then there's one crow. Sorry, the door's open. Shall I shut the Sorry door? Everybody for making it's noises. It's just a Ross podcast. Trying to get everybody. <laughs> but yeah, he's getting his ass handed to him for a long old time. Is uh, old Grayson Waller? Then it's one it Cody Cutter and one Crossroads, and that's it in Waller's first Raw main event. Tread disappoint. I thought, yeah, we could have had a bit more in saying. there, but he's in the mix, and that's important, right? Yeah, he's in the mix, and he doesn't look out of place in the mix. He doesn't know he's fantastic. Then there's the nice line from Cody in the midst of his back and forth with Paul Heyman, where he says, uh, "I came from a family where meals were determined by ticket sales, and nobody sold more tickets than The Rock." So he's paying homage to his uh, uh, foe. Oh, he says meals were determined. Right, you've sold a hundred tickets, so here is a burger. You've sold 10,000 tickets. Here is a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> you sold five tickets. Here's a Snickers. Yeah. That's all I've got to say about the segment. It was a nice go home for Raw. It didn't really tell us more in terms of what Cody's doing with The Rock, but that makes you want to watch but it next week. kept it nice and vague, and he's off to SmackDown now to go be Bloodline Hunter. Mm. And as we find out later in the week, Seth Rollins is joining him as well. As and there's the, oh, there's the, I think there's something in the water with Cody and Seth. I can't shake. I can't shake it. But then at the same time, on SmackDown, we've got Dakota Kai and uh, Bailey. Bailey. They're not going to run to, lol, I'm really an enemy, things at the same time at Mania. Why so, not? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's too much of a muchness. So I'm keenly watching what Kai and Bailey do, because I think it might possibly predict what Seth does. Yeah. They won't run two of them at the same time. So if Kai turns on Bailey, then I think Cody is safe from Seth. If Kai joins Bailey, I think Cody has a problem. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Mm. And also what makes a lot of sense is Cody, as Tom mentioned, calling himself the Bloodline Hunter, taken from again Frank E. Kazarian. Hey. Two that... minutes! <laughs> two <laughs> minute poo! <laughs> <laughs> He's the two minute poo. What? Matthew Greg. How have you done that that quickly? Because we've holding it in for 10 minutes. It was that to explode. Gosh. My God. That is an incredible system you've got. It's like getting a tube of toothpaste and just going. Wow. It's like you're in an aeroplane. Toilet? Just, you know, when you flush it, it just goes. Yeah, and all it was was pigeon heads and bits of horse. <laughs> you got to stop coming around ours for tea, mate. <laughs> So what, what we're talking about, consistency we're talking about, was it nice and hard or was it soft? Well, I've you... got the Bristol stool chart. It was like violent. Some... Are you stressed or are you not stressed? It was short and quick like a Necro Butcher match from 2006. Because I learned this week if you have little pebbles for poo, that means you're very stressed. Well, I wasn't stressed because... until you said that. No, no, this was this was normal. Are we still recording? <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, oh, okay, good. Of course um, we are. This is the podcast. No, it was normal logs. So normal logs. Okay. Like the things Frogger jumps out with. Three, four. I didn't count. I didn't have a look because I knew we were recording. I can hear you guys going, all right, pardon me, Matthew. So well, I didn't thought, do oh, what a impersonation of you. How very dare you. <laughs> Colour? What? <laughs> Poo coloured. Well, there's, there's, you can get different colours. What are you, what are you typing you get right now? I'm just, I'm, shades, Matthew. You want to like, rate my you, poo? You can get I was green. I don't want that. You can get green. It's, it it, because it means that like, it's a green a bit like with a light one. It means that your body's not like using the nutrients properly. People like to put on podcasts and like eat food and stuff like that. And... Oh, tough, oh. tough poo. Around it. <laughs> well, this um, is good for when you go for your poo after you've eaten. Green poo? Let's... Ho, ho, ho. Let's, right, you've got a, a cup of black coffee, right? right? Yeah, cool. I'm with you so far. In terms of your poo colour today, how much milk has been put in your coffee? That's a great way of describing it. How much milk's in your coffee, Matthew? Have you got a what? builder's tea no, poo, no, no, Matthew? No, it, was, it was dark poo. <laughs> it was dark poo, not oh, much milk. Oh, hang on, no. not too dark, because that could be blood in the UT line. Not too dark, hopefully. How do you have so much like poo? I like you UT line. <laughs> I've had... Right up the UT line. I, IBS sufferer, I mate. the I, UT line. <laughs> I, I, I'm an IBS sufferer. I overthink all this all the time. <laughs> Did I... I oh. must... But whilst we're on this subject... I, I shouldn't have flushed. We could have gone... Could, to yeah, we could have done that, because that would have been great. I, obviously, I turned 40 the other week. And uh, and I so rang. Who's got grey hair? So I rang my I rang my doctor. I rang my doctor and I said oh, I turned forty the day, and uh, I'm calling to in, do the, book the inevitable uh, prostate exam. Oh no! And to which she went, 
is everything okay in that area? And I went, oh, yeah, it's fine. But I just thought I had to. And she went, well, no, we recommend, like, you get it checked, but unless there's a problem, then don't worry about book. You don't need to ring and book it with us. Like, oh, I thought I, I thought it was like a I right... thought, yeah, they always tell yeah. her, watch out your prostate. Yeah. yeah, I thought, like, I got a letter in the post to say, like, hey, come and have it looked at. I I'm thought like, it was more when you're closer to 50s and not. You only have to just go and get it done just to see what's... See, I thought it was 40s. So, oh, I, so, I, was, yeah. so I was ready to go, oh, look, I'm ready to go. And they went, look, unless there's a problem, don't worry about it. Just carry on as normal. Mm. We can mean feel free to book in for an MOT. I say, okay, I'll do that, but you don't need that. You know, I'm absolutely oh. petrified about my. Why? I just it's stuff going in there. It's only ever exited my asshole. Nothing's yeah, gone in. You'd rather know if something's up there that's oh, not meant to be up it's there. It's just the pain. It's fine. They give you drugs before. The grain on the doctor. But sometimes they do, yeah. What kind? Oh, nice. Like, I oh, I'll have no effect on you. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I certainly take some drugs before. Well, I've got I've got two friends who are GPs, and they've both told me their their technique. For uh, checking the L prostate. Two up, left, left, right, right, back out. There you go. That's a cheat code. You get 30 lives with that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's the levels of like. Why can't it just one. be one up? Why does it have to be two? Because that's double the girth. You have to check both sides. I'm a virgin. You have to. Con- <laughs> <laughs> you won't be after. You have to. Con- you, have to- you have to check both sides in a mm. very quick manner because they think that. Get them checked. It's good. It's important. We love you. Be well. Absolutely terrifying. I love that you're like, come on. All seriousness, it's men's health in the, the arse, yeah. the prostate, it's all good. But when I went, he's having a poo, <laughs> he's having a poo. Exactly, because exactly, it's an important part. And I'm glad it sounds like the poo is mainly a good colour and a good consistency. Oh, hell yeah. I'm delighted for you, mate. If this poo was uh, wrestling, probably be... Yeah, the Drew McIntyre promo was mint. I loved it. <laughs> I can't wait to have another one in a few hours' time. <laughs> Speaking of which, I think we all need a break. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a break. Uh, Don't need a poo, though. Just Walk around a bit, you know? You can do what you like, mate. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> NXT t- 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 time once again. Booker T is back. Yeah, man. Deliver that the way you meant to deliver it. Tea time. That's the bit. Tea time. Tea time. From the, from the, from the late uh, WTF moments, we are so sorry that it's finished forever. That's still oh. that bit. That bit was still F alive. in the chat. <laughs> that bit will still be alive because that's a WWE one. It's just the AEW ones that are dead. F's in the chat. That's right. You heard him. A dub and WWE ones <laughs> done forever. Just WWE WrestleMania I mean, WTF. I felt moments. that way for many years, but you know, I'm trying to keep it alive. Yeah. Keeping <laughs> the dream alive. Uh, NWA Power WTF moments coming in a few weeks. <laughs> oh yes. I'd rather. Sh- Anyway, <laughs> before you've been over that, come on. <laughs> NXT champion Ilya Dragunov calls out Carmelo is. Melo arrives with lots of security personnel that says he's not getting in the ring unless he gets his own way. Tells Ilya that he has until the end of the night to get everything in order for a match between the pair of them and into a contract delicious. Contract delicious. Contract signing delicious. Yeah, contract signing delicious. Based off of Adam Pachiti's love of chickalicious from That's lockdown right. 2020. Wow. Yeah. It's a deep cut, that. Uh, well, I don't know. Could be fried. Well, we might have to look at stopping the contest with that deep <laughs> cut. But thank you very much for that. Yes, they won't. They went. I said, felt, felt very rushed and set up I thought Mello, for the first time ever, felt like he was memorizing a script when he was like, I was about to say, yeah. So it, honorable. Huh? That makes me sick. Oh, you make me sick. Yeah. For the first time, I thought, you're memorizing a script there, pal. D- but you're very good all the same. He's good when he's being him. I was about to say that. I was about to be, do better. But I can't say that kind of when I'm sat here as Ross telling Carmelo Hayes Hayes to speak better when I can't even talk. Yeah, Hayes. Uh, It was fantastic to see Melo wearing Bailey's trousers. Uh, Bailey wore trousers uh, with lots of pockets on. Oh, oh, those. Uh, oh, Melo had them on, the same trousers. Bailey was like, nice cut dog or something. Nice threads. My G. I think she said dog with a W. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to look back at a guest time, Matthew, and see who these security guards are. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. there's that scene from 2021 where all your favorites are security guards in a segment with Adam Cole and Kyle, maybe? NXT Black and Gold? Where, yeah, where they're, oh, where right, they're standing yeah. between them, aren't there's, they? Yeah, there's Mellow, there's Trick, yeah. there's Cum, there's yeah. uh, the. Bird, I there's Bron Breaker in there. Bronze, yeah, Bronze. Yeah. Bronze in that one. The Creeds, I think, are yeah. security guards. So I can't wait to see who these. Oh, gaggle of security guards. Charles, are. AJ Kirsch appearing as one of the disgraced police officers on the Monday Night Raw. Oh, bit. was it AJ Kirsch? Yeah. Oh. Who's AJ Kirsch? Good lad. Do you not know AJ Kirsch? Mm, well, if you have to ask. <laughs> no, he's just this cool dude. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> I love it. I know, come across him. 
Well, I'm just talking no, about that, man. Just you're all going AJ Kirsch. I'm like, who is he? I might not be the only person. I was trying to make it sound like a big deal. Like, oh, you're not an, you're not an Illuminati. But uh, nah, it's just some cool dude who's like, oh, I know him, yeah. Uh, Gigi Dolan wants to talk to Ava. Why? About her future. Oh, that's why. Uh, but upon arrival into Ava's pokey little cupboard of an office, Jada Parker shocking is there. Shocking office, wasn't it? Yeah, it was shocking. Oh. Shoddy. <laughs> Jada also wants a meeting, but instead she leaves with a match against Gigi later tonight. Did you see Jada Parker on Level Up? No. Oh, she's brilliant. Mm. There is, there is, I mean, there is something about Jada Parker. I think there's a star there. Do you know when sometimes it just there's an aura about mm. someone? There's an energy about someone? Her promos have been very on point so far as yeah. part of OTM. Her promos are not in the mud, Tom. They are certainly not in the mud. No. no Jada Parker's <laughs> promos. I hate Gigi Dolan as a character. No. <laughs> She's like, my meeting was first. You need to wait in oh, line. God. Get a grip, you grown woman. She seems <laughs> like a horrible person to be around. Yeah. The character. The character, yeah, just the character. I lived in a house <laughs> with four walls and a hole in maybe one of them. And a roof. Yeah. Did you see I my, should be first. See my painting. <laughs> <laughs> She's just such a poorly written character. For someone who's got the Kavorka of like a punk rocker, a rock chick, some might call them. Mm. She should be effortlessly, effortlessly cool and effortless to write as well. But the maker, the biggest nerd they can. She's just an effort. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah. Izzy Dame interference sees Kiana James get a win over a massive threat called Light on Her Feet, Kalani Jordan in 812. Her nickname was born last week on the podcast. That's Light on Her Feet, Kalani Jordan. <laughs> We're doing uh, bingo. Kalani <laughs> just did all of her very athletic moves very well in this match here. She also sold her arse off. There was a bump that she took where Ke Kiana sort of throws her in the air in the corner like for a flapjack sort of thing. Yeah. But the way she bounces off the mat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> scrummy, scrummy, scrum, scrum. Boing, boing, boing. And also the bump she took when Izzy pulled her off the apron. I've got no notes. I pulled her off the rope here. Yeah, I've got, I've got whatever as a match. <laughs> that's a um... massive threat. You're saying whatever to there. That's, that's Kalani Jordan. Light right mm. on her feet, Kalani Jordan. <laughs> You're Jimmy Hill and me again then, I know, mate. If I had something to say, I'd say it. I'm so sorry. I've got now, and I'm giving you all of it. <laughs> Roxanne Perez is mad that she didn't get that impromptu women's title match last week because she was in the shower. Oh. Wonderful writing. Wonderful yeah. writing. It's like me when every time an every driver comes around. <laughs> <laughs> they come round. <laughs> <laughs> they say they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chicago Jackson says, lol, sucks to be you. And the pair have a match up later in the night. See, that's I can get up behind that. Yeah, so can I. The thing I can't get behind, because it happens every week, but they don't stop for some reason, is Roxanne walking into a room and just shouting her problems and making her problems everybody else's problems. Imagine, right, if Owen, let's just say from out there, he was on a bad afternoon, premier crash for him, and he walked in here and was like, everybody stop what you're doing. A Derby premier pro has crashed for me. And that is now your issue too, as well as mine. Humans don't do I, that. Get your off. I, when did you start working here? I have worked with people like that <laughs> at previous radio stations <laughs> who do Name just them. who do walk into the studio, who do walk into the station, and just go, "Everybody, all right? Yeah. Well, I'm having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Look, it's oversharing Glenn. <laughs> what are you over -sharing doing here? Oversharing Glenn. Yeah. Let me know something like that. <laughs> There's a great um, a Greg Davis live show on Netflix called You Magnificent Beach. You Magnificent, oh, yeah. you Magnificent Beast, sorry. And uh, it, he tells his story about when his dad was passing. They're all around him in the hospital. And then the nurse comes in, male nurse comes in, and he, and he just loud, out loud to no one's going, well, I've had a bad week. <laughs> And everyone's, oh, okay. Yeah, it's my son. He is fat. <laughs> he is mega fat. <laughs> to which one by one, the family members come over and go, why is your son fat? The other day for dinner, he had a whole roast chicken. <laughs> He's only 12. <laughs> so then the mum comes over and goes, why did you cook it? He cooks it himself. <laughs> Greg tells it a million times better. I've watched it hundreds of times. It never ceases to make me die laughing. Greg Davis, you magnificent beast, it's on there. And it just, this bit reminded right. me of what, what, the nurse going, my son, he is mega fat. <laughs> Jesus, I should get a title shot before you. Why is that? My son. My son fat. is mega fat. We have to get him a separate house. <laughs> Why? Can you, not, can you not fit the other one? No, he ate the old house. <laughs> Then the good brothers. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> They're not mega fat. No, defeated Edison off here, Malik Blade, thanks to the magic killer. In a match that just went over five minutes. Yeah, more like crowd killer. <laughs> oh. oh, he's done him there. The Good Brothers are some of my favorite wrestlers, right? Why is that, this, Russ? This match was five minutes, right? And it's NXT. It's all the young, exuberant people going, woo, let's do flips. They both, the pair of them, Carl and Luke, got in the ring and immediately locked on a sleeper hold and took them down to the mat and said, no, this match is only five minutes, but we're only going to work for one of those five minutes. You slow down, you silly little young buddies. <laughs> and I love them for that. They are the best. They're, they're, they're horrible, aren't they? But you can't not admire the horribleness. You know what I mean? Like the, the Kavorka, the, you mean? The Kavorka of getting paid by doing not, nothing. Yeah. I love that about Click this. adjacent, you know isn't it? It's, yeah. a guy, it's like Randy Orton. It's click adjacent. <laughs> you know what I love this? Virgil. Spirit of Virgil here in this team. In their entrance as well, I like the zoom in on their hand signal now for when Tamatonga arrives because he's going to NXT apparently. Yes. They can do that, like a third one flying into the show. I know how, yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. How, that's how they introduce it. They'll just have the hands and then you'll just see another hand, the B shafts. Yeah. <laughs> and then it'll pan out and Tamatonga's there. Yeah. And I agree with their three way finish the triple sleeper hold. <laughs> The magic re-killer. Uh, Edris did a jackhammer, though. He did. What does that mean for WrestleMania? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought the GBs did look good in there, apart from their sleeper holds. I thought they just had a presence about them that was good on NXT. Yeah. Um, and then we get to the bit where Andre arrives on the scene. Mr. Chice. He, he certainly does, Mr. doesn't he? Mr. Chice. Chase, you and Nathan Fraser and Axiom appear to argue the toss over who deserves to wallop the GB. The LWO then appear from the rear of the GB to attack them as the wolf dogs are most definitely not the end of spears or spears of days. Look on. What? What? I couldn't remember when I was writing it. What is it? The name they gave them last week? Spear of days. Spear of days. No, Spear it's the wolf dogs. Oh, Spear of days sounds dogs. rubbish. Oh, like, I don't care if the crowd like it. Spear uh, of days sounds like a weapon that you would get in Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> It was wonderful cinema, though. I thought they said symmetry there. Wonderful cinema, because Nathan Fraser's like, oh, we, why can't you be like the, I don't know, the LWO who would never attack anybody from behind? <laughs> and then they do attack him from behind. So it's cinema. Wow. It's bloody wonderful. So Jack's not here, so. It's Kurosawa. There you go, good luck. <laughs> Lovely motorbikes. Um, I'm trapped in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> So that looks like we're going to get a multi-team schmoz before the Good Brothers get the shot against the Wolf Dogs. Yeah. Because they set up that up later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Obafemi asks Ava who his next meal is going to be. Ilya Dragunov arrives on the scene and he and Big Oba have a big, tense stare down. What does this mean for... Stand and deliver. Season. Uh, yeah, could it mean that Oba taking both titles? I'm on board, you know. I am. Have him all the gold. He has the presence. He has the Kavorka. I'm all for it. Because it did, it did feel a bit foreshadowing. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And Roxanne Perez defeats Jakara Jackson with a crossface like maneuver. So the crossface <laughs> uh, inside four minutes, 12 seconds. Uh, there was a shoot springboard moonsault from Roxanne that saw her shin land on Jackson's head and neck. Yeah, At did. the same time, it was terrifying, but I think she survived. Yeah. Uh, I like the back stretching thingy. So Jackson, Miss Jackson's on her back on the mat. She's got her foot. Her leg straight and her foot into Roxanne's back and she's pulling her ponytail back at the same time. Some people might call that a bit kinky. I would say it's a devastating wrestling manoeuvre. It can be both. <laughs> you know what? There was a big Venn diagram crossover with that. Mm. Rhea Ripley knew what she was doing at Elimination Chamber and a few other moves. <laughs> what do you mean, Tom? The stretch muffler with Nia Jax <laughs> where her bomb is out. Good morning, Mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have a lovely bottom, my lord. <laughs> Going off the what Tom's just said there, <laughs> Booker T introduced, and I quote, the biscotti list in this match. So if you're unaware, when Booker T sees someone he fancies who's wrestling, he screams, biscotti. Now we know he's got the biscotti list and Jackson's on the list, the dirty Al Perv. So that's good. Biscotti. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> and I'm, re I'm really happy that Roxanne's replaced the Pop Rocks because I thought it was naff. That's it, yeah. every week, don't I? A yeah. crossface is a lot more devastating manoeuvre than a pop rocks. Yeah, especially if you're you're mad. Mm. Time to hit my pop rocks. Now I'm going to stretch you. Oh. Stop, stop like it, stop it. Prostate She's like... arsehole. <laughs> like a prostate <laughs> arsehole. Like a prostate <laughs> arsehole. Like a prostate <laughs> arsehole. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> where they're down <laughs> in a star-spangled rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what happened next to the next team? Would it be an arse holy prostate rather than the prostate? Yeah, it, would be, yeah. it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't, you feel, don't prostate, you feel foolish? Unless your prostate just blows up and comes out. Okay. <laughs> Chicken laying an egg. <laughs> oh, if that happens to you, seek medical advice immediately. <laughs> Run don't the walk. Oh, is that what I should do? <laughs> yeah. I knew I couldn't sit right. <laughs> That's how Hulk Hogan became the next John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Thea Hale looks dejected over listening to this podcast. Oh, sorry, the results. <laughs> beg your pardon. Over the results of her date with Riley Osborne. She claims Riley was let down because she he thought she was a different person, which means Thea is continuing to implement JC Jane's advice wrong, or she should just ignore double jail together. Kiana. Turn page. James and Izzy Dame arrive on the scene and congratulate JJ for the success of her calendar idea. Kiana, Izzy, JC, and Jason Nix. J- Jasmine? Jasmine Nix. J A Z M Y. Whatever. Jasmine. Jasmine. Uh, with the all alone, with no one there beside her. Oh. I'm all alone. Mm. Um, this, I feel smug now because I've always been against JC Jane being a part of Chase U. Mm. And now the rooster is coming home to roost. <laughs> Absolute bastard. <laughs> what else would a rooster do? The rooster is coming home to roost. She called Andre and Duke losers multiple times during this promo here, which proves she never had the interest at the university at heart. She's a She's a bad lady. <laughs> I was about to use the word that Jim Ross uses that people go, you can't say that anymore, so I've got bad lady uh, Jezebel. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Can I say that anymore? Uh, apparently not, no, yeah. Oh, you know what? If Jim Ross is saying every week, yeah, probably not. Yeah. She's so, a yeah. WWF. <laughs> <laughs> so I, now it's a bad sign as well because uh, obviously Tycoon, uh, JC Jane, her business acumen and all that sort of stuff, yeah. is off to talk with the business bitch herself, Kiana James. So they're going to get in the cahoots and leave the university behind. Uh-huh. Oh, do you remember that storyline I used to say all the time about a year ago that Duke and Kiana were plotting to take over the uni? Yeah. and then... It just feels like it might be coming back around, oh, I love you. It took a long turn, oh, long just... time to get there. It's a Kurosawa. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> Big love to Riley Osborne, by the way, who I believe is the first ever WWE star to be signed from Cumbria. Ooh. I just... I... <laughs> I, I think because I'm not originally from the Northeast, uh, but I've made this my home for nearly 10 years. So I'm like, whenever I like, whenever I see something that's a bit Northeast on a, t- I go, whoa, it's home. So when Riley first ho- spoke and he went, oh, oh are you? Yeah, how you doing? I was like, oh, is he, how you doing, is he, a, is he a Geordie? Like, is he from Riley? And I was like, oh, he's from Cumbria. That's not too far. Good lad. Doing well. He's got the Kavorka of a Southerner, though, let me tell you. Oh, oh but man. he's being written by <laughs> Americans. I know. Hey, up, love. You know. <laughs> he's from Cumbria, really. Good lad. Aye. The Wolf Dogs and the Good Brothers have some banter. It's all very manly. Yeah, Corbin gets labelled Comedian Corbin, uh, acting like he loves this place when he doesn't, this place being NXT. Bron was such a laddie lad with his impressions and jiving. His impressions and his jiving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a way I tell him. <laughs> and it was a nice turn about a play because they were like, oh, you call me a comedian, says Corbin. But he's like, hey, that what was funny was the sound your face made when AJ slapped it. His mm. face made a sound. Um, <laughs> this all just screams. This is the segment on about earlier where they the basically set up the Good Brothers and Wolf Dogs for Stan and yeah. Deliver. Cannot wait for the moment that bell rings on this tag match and two headlocks get apply. <laughs> oh, <laughs> full way chin lock. <laughs> I would like to see both Gallows and Anderson on the back of Bron Breaker trying to run the ropes. Ooh. So they're trying to lock him in a sleeper hole yeah, and he's yeah. still running the ropes at 23 miles an hour. Yeah. Or everyone just gets out of the ring and just watches Bron run. <laughs> <laughs> just... Anderson getting sick at watching him. <laughs> he just can't, can't put up that fast emotion. <laughs> and then the legal eagle, Luca Crucifino, is brave in defeat at the hands of Dijak. <laughs> After the match, it is revealed Joe Gacy somehow escaped from Dijak's class prison. Somehow Joe Gacy returned as he brawls the Dijak. Luca whaps out his crowbar and hides it in the ring steps. Come the end of the scene. He used the crowbar as well on someone. It, uh, did he really? I didn't, I yeah. Didn't that. Because then when it goes backstage to Tony, Tony's like, meh, see, I like him. I want him. Hey, see, buddy. But not right now. Not right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought this was funny. The match was happening because Luke is like, you really shouldn't keep someone locked up in your basement. <laughs> and Dijak going, nah. 
It's so they had a match. Fine. So what would have happened if Luca would have won? All right, fine, I'll release him. <laughs> now I can prosecute you that I have a win over your name in the, in the yeah, squad. That's how it works in NXT. <laughs> line. I thought Luca was good, though. He's a big boy, because as we know, Dijak's a big yeah. boy, and Luca wasn't far off his height in terms of being a big boy. Uh, the baseball slide, we've got to talk about that, because Dijak's on the floor in front of the announce table. Baseball slide drop kick from the, the legal eagle who can soar on the floor like he can in the skies. And it knocks Dijak across the table, but neither announcer was ready for it. So Booker T's drink gets spilled. And it's clear that Vic is loving the fact, because Vic's checked out, we know this by now. He loved the fact that Booker is visibly and just audibly annoyed at what's just happened. His drink's got everywhere. And he's like, ah, you're a little angry, aren't you, Booker? What's happened nah, here then, hey? Maybe you should focus a little bit on these. <laughs> it's just like, bloody hell. They didn't hit the old cough button, did well, they? Booker's just, Booker's just sat there scoffing all week long. Like, I'm not surprised Vic's checking out with, oh, I'm a drink. Like, good as it go on me chicken nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, ah, you seem a bit angry there, Booker. Maybe you should concentrate harder, basically. Do you remember when Jim Ross got really mad because someone spilt his coffee? Yeah. And people were like, hey, yeah. dummy, what yeah, are you doing? People were like, well, yeah, because his coffee cup was filled with whiskey that was sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an interview with him this week where he just said, back in the olden days, like the, you know, the WF run, he would just wear a, a, a dark clothes so he could just oh, God, yeah, yeah. So he could just piss himself at ringside. How bad's that? That was so grim. I know. Oh, we didn't, we didn't complain, like... You probably should have done. Yeah, I would have done. Yeah. I pissed myself and I was happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad for you. I mean, I'm just... it's so it's like I I it's it's pissed so... myself back in the day. That's why his voice was all angry. And sh- why, Austin? <laughs> why? <laughs> why am I damp? <laughs> <laughs> It just sounds like the relief of the yeah. piss leaving his... Why? Like, Jay, are you so good? He's like, thanks. Just take yeah. a big bottle with you. Jim Ross, nice. Jim Ross saying hello to all the fans, waiting for it to dry. You know, like, why are you so good, him? God. Just an, unnecess- stinks, like. an unnecessary martyr. Just take a big bottle. No, I'm going to stand here and piss my brain. <laughs> <laughs> take a bottle, at least. It's no, like, all no. for the love of the game. It's just you like know. casually, he said it's just like, oh, yeah, bah, 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 bah. we used to piss ourselves at ringside. Bah. You create a <laughs> tripping hazard. <laughs> Oh, so you know when they used to take a bump on the announce table? Uh, so, oh, someone's drink would always go on the floor. Uh, <laughs> Rock's just rolling around in Jim Ross's piss. <laughs> Why is the entire main event of WrestleMania 2000 got pink eye, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Back to Booker T, though. Back to Booker T, the modern day Jim Ross. Oh, yeah, we go. Uh, he did, couldn't get Luca, Luca Crucifino's name right, as I've just butchered no, it. No, he couldn't right. Crucifino, he kept coming out with, with Vic, which Vic was like, it's not that. Just stop saying that word, you silly man. Um, Vic is just trying to get fired at yeah, this point. Yeah, he is big time. I don't know if, well, yeah. No, not fired, he, but he's, he's just out. like, what, whatever. Well, his wife got let go, didn't, didn't yeah. he? So he's just like, ah, we just want to go do something else. He's no. like, sorry, right, sorry, it won't be Booker T. Hooray, we're Byron Saxton. Oh. Biden's All right, Booker nice T's guy. back. He's a nice guy, but he said he said a lot of words. I don't remember any of them the last few years. Yeah, he's not bland. But I just remember you just you just notice when Vic gets like shoot mad with Booker or jumps on any mistake he makes. Ah, you look a bit angry there, Booker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I thought you're mad match... that I'm pissing on you. Jim Ross did it back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But we only started twenty minutes ago. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the show's not started yet. You can go. <laughs> I just sat there pissing and vomiting down himself. <laughs> Gotta do it for the business. <laughs> <laughs> kids these days, they just don't understand. Yeah. Who do you think you are, kids? <laughs> Imagine Triple H. Why don't you just go in your big hat? No, that's where my poo goes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, where the poo goes. Triple H training up the announcers of tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see your best piss and best poo at ringside, eh? Great pop, great snap. Yeah, yeah. Great, great poop, great snap. Oh, there. Yeah. Right, it's okay. You're under pressure. He's like, I've been practicing this pooing on command. <laughs> why did they do? Did, oh, that's so. Maybe that's why they brought the ad breaks in now so Michael Cole can go and empty his bladder. Ah, oh, that's a good point. Fair actually. enough if they've done that for Michael's yeah. sake. What how many times he had to piss himself? He used to always wear a light gray suit as well, didn't he, Michael? More mm. than dark clothes. Hmm. Yeah. I think maybe they just get. Maybe it's a bit like. With the wrestlers, obviously, when they you don't drink, so then you're you're dehydrated, so your muscles glisten more beforehand. Ah, yeah. So if I were a cob- if I were commentating for like a long show, I go, I'm just going to try not to drink anything before I go out. I'll take a bottle of water in case I have a throat issue, but I'm not going to try and I'm not going to drink much today, and I'll just dry myself out, so right, there's right. nothing to come out. 
and I'll go for a big poo and a big wee before I start. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just be sick of myself like JR. Welcome to WrestleMall. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's, that's, the, not... that's the start of a five-hour <laughs> show. Do you reckon that's the real reason? <laughs> the real reason Michael Cole and Samoa Joe wore those ponchos at WrestleMall. <laughs> 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 Get ahead of the game there, lads. Well oh, done, Ross. Well done. <laughs> oh, it's raining, thank God. This won't look weird. <laughs> because of JR, he's covered in sick. And they go, what are you doing, <laughs> what are you doing JR? I'm respecting the business, damn it. Cool. <laughs> See that young kid ask me what I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> Someone who's covered in piss and poo as well. Like, yeah, right, I'm, res- I'm respecting the business. How about you? <laughs> These youngsters and their TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> like a professional. Them TikTok. <laughs> Noam Dar was warming up for his match against oh, yeah, one member. Oh, sorry, against one member of the NQCC. But he doesn't really seem asked about the catch clause. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, Ka- uh, the rancid one, Kelly Clancid, walked into the scene with uh, a very... <laughs> She's no longer rancid after that. <laughs> the clean <laughs> Kelly Clancid. Uh, she walked in with a very British gnome. Hello, gnome. No, which made Noam get PTSD because of the sneak attack from Robert Stone and yep. Gum, which I thought was a lovely callback. Um, he's just, it's fantastic, isn't he? Yeah. Calling uh, Charlie Dempsey, Charlie the Chocolate Factory. Wrong, you know, wrong time for that. Like, looks like a certain <laughs> Willy Wonka. Um, just they're, are, are, they're main roster worthy, I reckon. Now the, the metaphor. No, I'm absolutely. Yeah. Oh gosh. I, I don't yeah. think well, maybe Oro. I think you put Noam with uh, any of them. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Noam, the she called Noam. Like his little hat and. Hello, Noam. <laughs> but yeah, nah, I love him. Stick them on SmackDown. They have, have a lovely time. Yes, I agree. Lyra Valkyria is in the ring wishing Shotzi all the best in her recovery. She also says she owes Shotzi a title match when she's back. Lyra praises the last legend for stepping up last week and invites Tatum Paxley down to the ring as she has a surprise for her after her actions last week. Tatum surprises teaming up with Lyra in their main roster women's tag team title match against the Kabuki Warriors. That's nice. Mm, that's good for I them. Think. Lyra is Valkyria it? lives in that space between the barricade and the fans. <laughs> and there's like a glass barricade. She lives in that gap. That's where she came from. She comes from there every week. I want to have a little tour of that little house she's got down there. <laughs> Jen is down the stairs, right? And she's just like hops in a little door and she's like a mouse. <laughs> Anything yes. is possible in NXT. I'm not Hi, just... I'm Tatum Paxley. Welcome to my crib. See <laughs> <laughs> where the action happens? Like a mattress on the floor. <laughs> I've always been here. <laughs> You've always been here too. Used to be over by the commentary table, but JR kept pissing himself, so I moved. <laughs> but I thought uh, Tatum's acting as well in this segment was absolutely fantastic. As the stalker role, who's trying to hide that she's a stalker. Yes. Even though Lyra knows she's a stalker, she's still trying to hide the fact she's a stalker, saying like, I would do anything for you, and then cutting herself off. I've proven my devotion for I mean, I've proven I'm a woman of my word. I'm a stand-up guy, like El Dandy. That's what she said. Yeah, here we go, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's so funny, isn't it? Because, yeah, you are a stalker, crazy person. But this could be good for me. Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting dynamic. But, yeah, and it's like, well, we're going to get a title, tag team title shot. It's like, that's nice. Do we care if you win? Oh, I would care. To see Tatum Paxley's the women's tag team champion heading into WrestleMania. Mm. She deserves it for this stalker work she's doing in front of her. She deserves it for stalking her <laughs> friend and <an> idol. <laughs> mm. But then it doesn't matter, does it? Because, pardon me, ladies. <laughs> Ridge Holland cuts off the lasses in the ring, the rude prick, before warbling on about how he's not a violent man. And he's sorry for being a professional wrestler who was too violent. I hate Twat, that. it says it in capital letters. Why would you be a wrestler and then apologize it's just for it? Rubbish. It's awful. You know what can make this better, though? A hooded assailant hits Ridge in the back with a chair after the truth will ultimately prevail. But there's pain bringing it to light. And no, it's not those crap copy, uh, sorry, not copycat, uh, cosplay videos, I should say. Pretending it to be Bo Dallas. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I've had I people on my Twitch going, is this that? And he goes, no, no, no. You can tell the titles aren't exactly right. Yeah. And the fact that the guy went over the top because he hasn't got any new ones going, the forbidden door. He's like, mm, it's not. But it's, it's not. Sick. It's not WWE. The guy- well, enough people thought it was. But as soon as he said that, that's the telltale. They've never said that. But also the guy WWE. himself has said, I'm retiring from doing these videos now. He put out a tweet where he d- owned up and said, oh, I'm not doing these anymore. Yeah. But who was it? Was it It Begins Again? It Begins Again. Yeah. It Begins Again. Um, Con artist, yeah, because yeah, we did a thing yesterday where this segment was brought up, and people were like, "Have you not seen this YouTube channel? I forgot what it's called now." Dreadmare, yeah, Dreadmare, something like that. Like. So I looked at it, I was like, "Oh God, it's Bo Dallas doing voiceovers of a nice edit." Yeah, <laughs> he did them as well when it was teased, like who was going to be the the hacker of NXT, and he teased it like, "Oh, it was CM Punk." So he likes doing these videos. 
But then, I guess, I don't know if he's pretending to make it look like the person or not, but he's retiring after this. What, because it's not him? Because it's really, how can he do it after this? Next week, it will actually be me this time. So oh, when I saw it, it was like, oh, I'm going to have, like, um, like basically, like, people on every roster. So he had, uh, I think it was Karrion Cross on SmackDown. Now he's got Sean Spears in NXT. So he's waiting oh. to pick a row. I was like, wow, Bo Dallas is this guy. He's going to be called Dreadmare, dressed as a clown. They look cool. But no, it was, Matthew it was, no. ended my dreams. Sorry. I was a believer again for a Sorry. minute. But you can be, uh, it's, it's funny how like people, because I've had a few messages as well <clears throat> of varying types, like DMs of people going, hi, I uh, just wonder whether you'd seen these because these might be something. I think they look, they're from Bo Dallas and people also in block caps going, why aren't you talking about the Bo Dallas video? <laughs> and yeah, I just go, because they're, they're, they're not real Bo yeah. Dallas videos, right. you moron. Because them in their circle have convinced themselves. They must think, well, everybody else must be talking yeah. about this and going, this is it. Whereas people have watched it, I watch it and go, that, that's not, it's not Bo Dallas. It's, no, it's, it's not. not. Oh, where? Come on. I mean, you can have fun with that. Don't get me wrong. By you can do all it, means. But, like, but if you, was he pretending that like, oh, maybe it is. For the want of not being like AJ Styles, I, I still think there's a chance. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. I think you're too scared to know about the truth. Yeah. But anyway, oh, it's... it's God. <laughs> Sorry. Was that, who was that? <laughs> what was AJ Styles? Are you sure? This is still more interesting than Ridge the Big Stupid It really is. Funny. Oh. Anyway, so the arena. Oh. Is it Okada? <laughs> is it Okada? Is it Tama Tonga? Is it the unknown from the Willy Wonka thing? <laughs> no, it's, of all bloody people, Sean Spears. And, uh... Yeah. Not even I can defend this one. Not it's... even I could have called this one. No, nobody called this one. Ah! WWE are doing one. very well. I don't know what mole have got working in AEW, but while everything from AEW leaks out, Jericho. nothing... Jericho. Sorry, I didn't <laughs> Carry on. Nothing leaks from WWE at the minute. It's watertight, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like that, that tape that old fella puts on the... Flex tape. Game. Yeah. He loves that, doesn't he? That old man. Flex! Look, I built a boat out of it! Flex tape! You built a boat out of that? Yeah. Boat yeah. Dallas confirmed... Told you. Anyway, JR wraps it around his trousers. And <laughs> <laughs> what, just expands? Like, it's not the end of his... Hey. Monty Python's been in her life. It looks like, he's, looks like he's got that water retention in his legs. <laughs> I'm respecting the business, shock. Sure. Anyway, I'll put forward to... I just hired Stan. <laughs> That's, That's the three faces, though. Yeah. Ty Dillinger, Sean Spears, Stan. Three faces of the three faces. The promos up until this were very much Japanese of origin, weren't they? With the they three, fi- uh, the Sean three Spears went to Japan the that Japanese time. Japanese exp- Has he been to Japan? Went on a nice holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you might be on a day. <laughs> Did XT do a tour when he was in there? I'm sure he did oh, a tour in maybe. Japan. Maybe I don't know. I'm too lazy to care. But I just when Ridge gets in the ring, he goes. <laughs> he sounded right like Tyson Fury when he went. I'm a man of action. More than I'm a man of words. <laughs> If only. <laughs> so, so here's some words. So here's some words. I'm, hey, a, I'm a wrestler. That's, I don't like to be violent, but I, I, I am sometimes. I, I, just, I don't do I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Such an awful, an unawful, an or unawful wrestling character. Yeah. But Terrible. then uh, I, I don't know whether I don't think it was on the show, but they did a thing on Twitter where they interviewed Sean Spears it's leaving it's right at the end. To right at the end, right at the end. I, I must have missed that at the oh, end. Oh God! People are like, God, thank Christ, we've got that to look forward. That's to. fine. I'll no, pause there. Uh, Brooks Jensen is showing <laughs> showing his balls to over family. <laughs> this is what this story is about, lads. And he said, "Thank you very much," but I just wanted another time. Uh, he does this by trying to get him to a North American title match. <laughs> so yeah, JB wanted BJ to show his balls, and then JB took a week to find his balls. And then showed his bolsh in a way that BG, JB didn't like. So now he's showing his bolsh to over. That's the story we're on, lads. I hope that JB wins. What's well, a line is? What BJ, you said sorry. is technically correct. Yeah, technically it is correct. The I am the Mr. best time correct. Um, but yeah, I hope that BJ beats over Femi because that is the hoss we need at this time of peril. Not the hoss we deserve. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, by the way. Thank I you. find sarcasm of, of, like often doesn't translate well on YouTube. Oh, tell us about it. I'd just like to point out I'm being sarcastic about wanting Brooks Jensen to be Uber Femi. You should have your three faces of Ross. <laughs> Serious Ross. Sorry, Ross. Sarcastic I'm... Ross. <laughs> and prostate Ross. <laughs> Sorry, Ross. I've just checked. Five people have already commented. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Carmelo Hayes is in the locker room telling the rancid one, JR, that he won't be heading to the ring without Ava and a contract for him to sign being in place. That is what happened. I've got nothing to add. Thank you. <laughs> Come Tuesday, defeats Lexus King via shoot roll-up. That's a submit appearance from Mr. Stone in a match that goes close to 4.15. <laughs> goes to close. <laughs> goes close to four is 15. I couldn't quite. I was in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. 
<laughs> um, what I learned in this match, lads, is that come Tuesday is a much better wrestler than Lexus King. The well, fundamentals, yeah. the powers, the explosivity. Um, if they, I thought they were turning stone against come with the barricade spot where Cum was pushed into yeah. stone, stone fell down. But no, that was retconned immediately, as it should yeah. be. I retconned, was feeling... if you will. Retconned, yes. Oh, <laughs> Tom from the grassy knoll. A cummy knoll. The second Willie Wong. <laughs> <laughs> After the bout, King attacked Stone and Cum, but more so Stone, before leaving. Stone could be paralysed. I hope the Bash brothers are coping with this news well. Because when he took this, he's, he's selling the neck, the spinning neck breaker thing that Lexus King does, but he traps his arms back there. Yeah. Like he's got rigor mortis. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's called? It is when you, you, yeah, when you, are, yeah, when you yeah. die and you freeze? Yeah. Yeah. He's stiff as a. <laughs> yeah. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> go, go on. <laughs> <laughs> stiff as a massive, throbbing tennis. Um. <laughs> Why are you Becky Lynch now? <laughs> so, Robbing Irish cock. <laughs> a, a big Irish <laughs> dick. <laughs> We've been very vulgar. Yeah, good match. Week, haven't we? It's great. Yeah, it's good. So, Jada so, Parker is taking off. Cultaholic after dark. <laughs> like a bar of dark chocolate. Bollocks. Jada it? Parker. <laughs> Is talking some smack. <laughs> Delaria Valkyrie and Tatum Paxley in the women's locker room. You know it's a good episode when Mr. NXT is you know, losing it. I'm not. I'm a, we're locked in, baby. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> All of a sudden, Ariana Grace appears to be a wrestler who doesn't like fighting. <laughs> oh, great. Another one. She believes the women should solve their differences with words and being role models instead. Brilliant. Now, I've written down brilliant there because this works for Ariana Grace. Rich Holland, all 260 pounds of... Meat and gristle and Yorkshire puds and gravy. Yorkshire pudding. All of that stuff. He shouldn't be good. Oh, I'm a bit violent, me, and I don't like to be violent, but I can't help it. There's no malicious intent. Ariana Grace, the pageant queen, her going, oh, we should be role models and settle our differences with words. That's a good character. Yeah, I agree. There's a, there's a world of difference. Yeah. There's a math of the madness. There's a math of the madness. That is pathetic <laughs> delivery Matthew there. in the madness. <laughs> <laughs> like we parcel force the level of the delivery there god just there's method just, to the madness let's just do the going we're all champions in our hearts and minds I'm on board with her doing that and trying to stop other female wrestlers doing the wrestling what happened to her feud with Shirley Onions have they just sort of oh for the love eased of off on that not this I forgot uh, all about you uh, Carmen Petrovic <laughs> I, could, I was I was writing the notes the one week and uh, and I didn't catch her name so I said I'm, I just put the notes I'm just going to call her Shirley Onions, and, and <laughs> last time last time I the last time I saw uh, Carmen Petrovic last time I saw Shirley Onions she was feuding with Ariana Grace. I believe it ended. Did it end? <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Yes. For her. Well, there's many layers. Yeah. To Shirley Carmen Onions. Ah. I hope she's doing all right. She's got thick skin. <laughs> And she makes you cry. <laughs> Speaking of crying, Joe Gacy might just be NXT Anonymous as he films Dijak talking to Ava before dropping the camera as another brawl breaks out between the pair. Later, it's revealed they'll be having an asylum match. What are you pausing Rome. there for, Matthew? You forgot this happened. Right? <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, there it is. An asylum match. A match in an asylum. An asylum, which is an Ambrose asylum, but we don't want to mention Dean Ambrose these days because he's prominent elsewhere. But yet they go on Twitter and both go, <laughs> hey, I'm going to study some Dean Ambrose matches. <laughs> what could you call it? The, the, the Dijak the Dirt House. The diddly... Dijak <laughs> Dirt House. The diddly Dirty Dirt. <laughs> the diddly Dirt House match. Right, the following, right enough uh, of this. The diddly diddly Dirt House match is scheduled. Sex Dungeon. <laughs> Joe Gacy's no, no. Sex Dungeon. I mean, a Sex Dungeon match. Would be incredible. Dijak's got one if you want to pop round. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the conversation about Gacy being NXT Anonymous, I thought was worth bringing up because at the start of that segment, he's filming from afar Dijak and Ava having an argument, much mm. like Anonymous would. Mm. Hip hop, hip hop Anonymous, as uh, that lad from Big Daddy would say. Forgotten his name. It would be in keeping with him having his little <laughs> mental episode just to just randomly film people. Like Ross is having now. <laughs> no, the camera rolls for my mental episode now. What was he called, that character? You mean Big Daddy mean the Adam Sandler film? Yeah. The little lad. Yep. I've no idea. Yep, hop. Yep, hop, Anonymous. The lad, the big idiot who can't spell. Talk. Spell. 
Not the not the child. <laughs> you watch me forever since I've seen. Is it the ho- the homeless? He was homeless guy, isn't he? The guy oh, he, vaguely remember. Nah, you know what? I'm drawing a blank here. I'm sorry, mate. That's all right. Good film. The big idiot who is not Scuba Steve, the other one. <laughs> Scuba Steve's a good guy. Get Scuba Steve in NXT. Tag team with Saul Ruka. <laughs> Let's go. In, wouldn't he? Ariana Grace is at ringside, trying to stop Gigi Dolan and Jada Parker from fighting in the middle of their professional wrestling match. Grace plays a part in the finish, which sees Dolan smacked upside the head, said up, upside your head, by Jada inside five minutes. As Tom was saying earlier, I've written down in my notes for this match, Jada looks the part in there. She's got the riz, mm. as the kids like to say, which means charisma, kid, me. Yeah, she's on later on. <laughs> Uh, there was lots of big chops and big strikes and dropping her ass in the corner of that move where she drapes her opponent over the over the Brett, the Brett rope and drops her ass through them. Fantastic maneuver. Um, I like Ariana getting involved and then Gigi headbutting her off the apron, which then bled into the finish. Bosh. Good headbutt from Gigi. Uh, he, it's better when she's not moaning. I'm getting the back of the queue. I was yeah, first. Me, my house. Who's in the middle of the street? <laughs> As Twitter said, a lot of cake in this match. <laughs> He's off again. Mm. You like Booker T? Biscotti. <laughs> <laughs> can your wife to be eat cake? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a free woman. She can do what she likes, really. Um, <laughs> cake is what I just saw Twitter talking about during this match. Just going, cake. No, there was lots of good chops and strikes. And there was, but there was also to the point where actually, funny enough, I walked into the walked into the, into the bedroom as Alex was getting ready for work. After I was watching NXT, and I went. Can I ask you something? And she went, yeah, what's up? I said, when did we start referring to women's bottoms as cake? And she went, I don't know. I need to go to work. <laughs> I was like, okay, have a good day. <laughs> it's gone well this week. <laughs> I don't uh, think it's, it's not part of my vernacular, the old cake. Mm. Yeah. Cake. Yeah, I don't know what I'd use instead. The old juicy double I'd probably go for. <laughs> Juicy bit of, double. Bit of Sir Mix a lot there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it also sounds like it could be a football terminology as well. But when you win like the Carabao oh. Cup and the FA Cup, well, the old Jimmy juicy Hill double. loves the juicy double. <laughs> the old juicy double. Someone has written "See you soon" on a beach. Well, that won't last long, will it? And the Roblox logo appears. Sol Ruka Mebs. Cowabunga, you effers. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, it will be a won't it? Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Oh no! What do you mean, oh no? She does Randy Orton's <laughs> finisher. You know Randy Orton's finisher, that RKO? I, I think I remember that move, yeah. She does a better version of the RKO. That's she impossible. She flips around in the corner. She's like blazing squad. She flip reverses it. <laughs> she missed the chance to do a great pun and could have put that. C with an A. <laughs> C, <laughs> you soon. Because she was next to the ocean. Ah. Mm. I don't know about that yeah, one. Right. I, I've been called a speed bump on this podcast before. <laughs> no, no, roadblock me. And road road block. Block. Oh, sorry. And I'm beginning to believe I understand why. <laughs> Charlie Dempsey <laughs> is your new Heritage <laughs> Cup champion. After a fantastic spectacle, I guess no one die. And what a spectacle it was. Eh, Ross. Like if I'll take my spectacles off and put them back on again, it was that much of a spectacle. Let me tell you. My move of the week happens in this match, lads. I'm oh, going to stand on. up and talk about it because there's a pinfall. There's a backslide by Noam, no, by Charlie Dempsey. Yep. So Noam Dar's in the backslide position. Yep. Charlie somehow, on his neck, yep. manages to get his legs over the top of Noam to pin him down even harder. I've never yep. seen that done before, and that is my move of the week. It was rather nice. Oh, my. Oh, oh, oh baby. <laughs> I thought I need to give that respect it deserves because it was unbelievable. Well done. Really lovely, polished Thank you for well, well done for the camera not getting all the piss that's down your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cause, why I'm wearing black. Yeah. That's, cause, that's why Ross, that's because Ross respects the business. That's right. Not like you or me, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the toilet for a We poo. literally sang a song Hello, about you going right. to the toilet earlier. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> yeah, it finally, it, it happened. Now I'm done. I finally lost the, the cup. I would have liked this to have not been so much in the adverts, but yeah. oh, that's something I we'd said that for everybody. I guess that's the that downfall we... of the rounds formula. Right, that's it. <laughs> but it really was just now I'm dog going, all right, no talkie, that's wrestling Milwaukee. That's the rhyme, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and again, some lads who were like, no, we're really good at wrestling. Yeah. We're, we're literally the Black Bull Combat Club. Yeah. So, um, and now I'm going, uh oh, oh. I was used to wrestling Cums and all the other people on the show. Bollocks. 
and yeah, finally getting wrapped up, rolled up, and everything else. Yeah, and the, and the beam at his own game because after fall round one, sorry, there's a cheap shot by Damon Kent which the referee misses, yeah. which is what Noam normally does, but he couldn't do it this week because they, they think more. They're yeah. cerebral, are the no quarter catch crew. Uh, there's a double underhook suplex with a roll flew roll through into he a hold. He gave him a flu. He gave him a cough and a sneeze. And, ah. But yeah, Charlie was the dog bollocks in this one, mm. and, and Noam was because it takes two to tango, doesn't it? Does, it? Yes. So the, they were just it was like Torval and Dean. Yeah, <laughs> then again, nothing going to pop. Every... <laughs> the only issue is, and this is me being a bit anal, like they're not being built up at all. Especially Charlie Dempsey's probably being built up the least amount of yeah. people that finally end no one's are. So you could make this debate about, oh, they should have built up him more, or maybe they can now use the cup to build him up. Now he's got this, but they haven't got the crack of no am. That's it. I'm That's worried if he's going to like, I, I am going to challenge you to a match. No, you go, a call. hundred years oh, sorry, of, sorry, sorry, a hundred sorry. years of British round sister wrestling. Right. As Charlie Dempsey would say. Yeah. Or could I have no, I'm just going, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh. So, but then again, he does go, deserve to go on the main roster and annoy people there. Yeah. Aye. Uh, Sean Spears reveals he's back in NXT because the truth because of the truth bringing people to their knees. Yeah, the truth Did we brings, say that? Yeah, yeah. The truth brings people to their knees, so that's why I'm back in NXT. Which told me that Sean Spears realised the truth is he's no better than developmental, so he's back in NXT. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the, I don't mean that. It's just a, the, tr- the, the truth brought QT Marshall back there. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was in a major company, and now I am in the third rung <laughs> of a different major company. <laughs> yeah. uh, what were you going to say about Sean earlier, though? Uh, whether or not we're... Forming a team with Ridge. Oh yes. Whether like uh, you know Ridge is gonna initially look like he's gonna feud with him, but then Sean and Ridge are gonna form an alliance with Sean, kind of guiding him. Because he did say he likes Ridge, but Ridge needs to know the truth and be brought to his knees. And I feel like Sean would be the sort of guy that could, you know, get under skin of people and have Ridge as his muscle. Mm. So when when the going gets a bit too heavy. Then here comes Ridge. Like to... a certain song. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, like by Venga Boys. But then Ridge will flatten folk and then say he didn't mean it. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to be too violent in my role as a wrestler. <laughs> no malice intended. <laughs> come here, <laughs> come here, Vera, with your, <laughs> your, your stockings around your ankles. <laughs> What's she called? I can't remember her name off last uh, summer. Nora Why? Batty. Nora Batty, that's the uh, one. Sorry. Nora Batty. <laughs> We're getting Vera Duckworth and Nora Batty mixed up. <laughs> Ridge Holland in Last of the Summer Wine. <laughs> he would flatten Barry, wouldn't he? Yeah, but wine Barry. is spelled W H I N E. Just like classic carrot top there from you, Matthew. <laughs> Damn it. No, no, no. How dare you know that? Oh, no. Anyway. I know Ava... it's always norm, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know what? Up the norm. Yes, it's up the norm. He's dead. Ava <laughs> is in the ring. Ilya is in the ring. And a contract is in the ring. <laughs> Thank you. That's Sorry, a... I'm allergic to contract signings. <laughs> <laughs> so Mello is also game to get in that ring too. Hayes apologizes to Ilya for the security lads being there, but he doesn't want the mad bastard dragon getting hurt. Then of all people, Tony D appears and starts talking Don stuff at the other lads. He's sick of Mello and says he's game to earn a title shot against Ilya. All of a sudden, it's revealed the contract says title match, but it actually says number one contenders match between the Don and Mello with a title match against Ilya for the winner. The show ends with a bit of a squirmish and Tony getting his ass stuck through a table and also him revealing that he's paid off all the security. Yeah. Meaning that you... NXT is under the thumb of the mob. Don stuff, baby. It explains so much about the crowd. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Do you mean skirmish? Maybe. I thought it was a bit... Because it was a skirmish. Because that... squirmish is like... Ugh. Yeah, it was a... Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to fight. A, squirm- oh. a squirmish skirmish. A squirmish skirmish. Skirmish the frog. dervish. Uh, there's a chance I was in a rush this morning. I'm not going to lie. That's fine. I like it. Oh, it's a squirmish. It, work- it actually works better. Yeah, I like that. Um, so the winner... Like JR's pants with the squirmish. <laughs> squirmish. Oh. The, winner, the winner faces Ilya at Stand and Deliver. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? I'm not massively into the idea of... Uh, Tony versus uh, Hilia. That's only because we're at the start of the Don era. Yeah. Of Tony D. Because last week he cut a promise and he's, he's sick of like not being a Don and now it's time to be a Don. So it was good to see Stax and the Riz showing loyalty to the Don because he was like, eh, if, you, if you don't like what I do, you get out of here, you little... What has a chicken? Yeah, that's but, what they and then we've But then we've also seen Ilya versus Carmelo Hayes a lot. And I kind of thought a stand and deliver, we get Hayes versus Trick. 
Mm. Oh, we might still do. Yeah, we might. Yeah, you never we, know. But, but therefore, to get that, we need to have Tony versus Ilya, and I'm not massively into that idea at the moment. But then I wasn't into Bucks versus Darby and Sting when they first rumored that, and now I am. So. I'm worried about this because I like the idea of Ilya, but his over-the-top dramatic. He's toned it down again this week. I thought. Yeah, he did, but it didn't matter if he, even if he was really over the top as usual, because here comes the Don. Do 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 do. Yeah. Here comes the sun. <laughs> yeah. It's hey, right. Malabu, what's the mileage of his? And all this other stuff that's going to scare the hell out of Jack when he hears it when he listens. Um, <laughs> and he was so over the top, and the crowd was so into it. I'm like, oh no, he's going to be proper face here, isn't he? Like, mm. and he's going to take all the attention away, and all he's going to do is make Ilya look even more silly <laughs> than he already is. <laughs> Which I think is like, I will beat you the honorable way. And I was like, hey, I'm going to cheat. They're going to cheer him, aren't they? I'll push you off a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried that it's just, just going to ruin everything that we've been setting up. I'll tell you what, the former AEW superstar Tony D was popping the AEW locker room, Matthew, when he said, hey, if you're talking about big business, I need to be here. Yes, he was. Ah. Second mention there was. <laughs> Jay Cargill was doing it last week. There was a contract thing revolving around her. She was like, hey, the big business, hey, buddies. Hey. So that's big, popping the Because Jay Cargill's going to join... The 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 stack <laughs> next <laughs> <to me. laughs> <Big> business. <laughs> um, I did like the difference in Tony's Kavorka though, because it's, it's yeah. it is less. It's still hammy, but it's not as hammy. It's like wet or thin ham, mm. as the French like to say. <laughs> wet or thin. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Ilya gets to decide what the champion does though, which I don't think Ava. That's not how the. She, that's her job. Ava. Yeah. She was like, ah, Ely, what do you want to do? I guess she made that call. I'll shut up. Ava's doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> that was her call. Ross just won an argument with himself. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm fulfilling Jack's rule today. Yeah, 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 the the right. tennis with himself. It's so great because you can say, Jack be like, I really like this match. And you can just go, did you? And stare at him and he go, wasn't that good, was it? Oh. <laughs> He's such a bully, isn't he? I'm such a bully. Jack, yeah, he can be, man. <laughs> yeah, big bully. Everyone who says he's uh, they've seen Jack get like mad and start fighting in town said he's a mad bastard. <laughs> like, so I didn't realize how I, like um, walking he, on uh, splinters or being with, around him. You might be just the cause. You might just be bottling all his frustration up towards you, and might just oh, take it out on people in rice. Bottling up rather like a famous WWE commentator. <laughs> <laughs> a- 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 no, he Dynamite. doesn't bottle it up. That's the problem. <laughs> he lets it all flow. AW Dynamite, this we. is a, we, a Dynamite we, oh, <laughs> stop it, stop it, this is a fun ride from the rafters of the floor, I'm Sting and I'm a thrill seeker, <laughs> cowabunga effers again with a cowabunga, I tell you what, I know he started crying when he did that at the end of the oh, show, oh bless you, that's my guy, Sting's really? my boy. Well, I was telling you that the VHS I got when I was eight with him and Goldberg on. God, my God, God saying, to see him to come down from that rafters again for one last time. Yeah. Unless he turns on Derby. Pitches on the channel right now. <laughs> nah. <laughs> anyway, oh. Hangman Page heads down the ring with a crutch. Yeah, his booze addiction. Uh, he looks heartbroken. <laughs> Page talks about AW being his chance to do many great things and mentions his title win from 2021 as an example of him doing a good thing. He mentions wanting the title match at Revolution to be a singles match, but says he got the two men in the potential singles match wrong. Due to his injury, he's not going to be able to compete at the pay-per-view. So it'll be Swerve versus Joe instead. Out comes Swerve, who talks about Hangman and himself trying to kill each other over the past six months. Swerve says he targeted Paige because of what he's achieved in AEW, but didn't want this to happen. You can't escape fate, which is why Swerve is going to win the title on Sunday. Samoa Joe arrives and takes the piss. Stop it. Out of the lads for mentioning Destiny, Joe is going to beat up either one of them at the weekend. This sets Swerve off on a wonderful monologue where he mentions coming from unemployed to main roster, sorry, main vendor, Cruiserweight, the massive boy. Now he's committed a couple of crimes. <laughs> it might be time for Joe to go back to Gauntry wearing a poncho. Great and there's also people saying we were talking about the poncho last week. Yeah, so the poncho. <laughs> Clearly, big fan of the podcast. Page twat swerve. His injury was all a lie. Jerry Lynn is cursing Sean Ross Sapp for spilling the beans. It will be a triple threat on Sunday. <sighs> now, Swerve cut a great promo onto Joe to the point where the crowd were cheering him and really behind the idea of Swerve being a champ. Yeah. But it was it, but it was so good that when Paige finally did the lol, I'm not even hurt, they booed. Yeah. They didn't want yeah. it. Even when Swerve was like, remember when I committed all those crimes? Cry, we don't care. It's we- that we've been on the slow burn for a while now, but this was like the first 
not maybe the first, but like the first, the definitive like he's heel, he's babyface. That feels like that moment, that fork in the road. Oh, I feel like it's it's a bit Brett Austin '97, where like you started this way, but the the tide is turning. It feels like organically, and I feel like there'll be a mid moment in a match where Paige is just going to a real dark place, and the crowd are really on his case for yeah, it. Yeah. And that's where he might beat Swerve, but Swerve looks like a star coming out of it. But I was saying in the pitches, what I would like to see happen would be Swerve going to the dark side as a triple threat, no DQs. He's doing the Stone Cold WrestleMania 17 on Hangman, and that's that costs him. Joe locks him in the coquina from behind. And, and Swerve going to the dark side makes him go to the light side even harder. Well, Hangman's also mm. gone to the dark side because he's been battered by a man. I get what you're saying, <laughs> but doesn't that sound like, well, I tried being bad and it didn't work for me, so I'm being good by default. Michael Jackson did it. It's fine. Oh. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Woo! He said he's bad. And he, oh, oh, oh. And he, yeah, yeah, that's the follow-up album called Good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Shamo. I'm really, really good. <laughs> I will point out that when we did news together on Wednesday, uh, I called exactly what happened. <laughs> Paige comes out in the crutch. She's like, oh, I don't think I'm going to make it. Lol, it's a joke. Yeah. Shut up, Sean Ross. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm like what you're saying and agreeing. Like, yeah, this is easy. <laughs> like, but the important thing is, like Brett 97, he's completely right. Yeah. Swerve did all of these things. No one cares. Exactly, and that's going to be the the starter cap. Yeah. That's going to really like Quite get the skin of page. The '96 Austin promo. I think you're completely pathetic. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be so good. Yeah. But I don't think you do that at Revolution. I think that's a that's a singles match between those two, where you have the for, for maximum impact rather mm. than having Joe in the mix. I think have Joe leave with the title and then carry on. Hey, that's that's for a prediction. Uh, yeah, so. I think Joe wins on Sunday, but then Hang, Hangman takes off Joe, and then Swerve takes off Hangman at Wembley. I, I think a page win. Have page when then on Sunday. Gonna, yeah, then have then have Swerve be like, well, I want the title now. Now he's clearly the face because there's the cat, there's the chase there. Mm. You have Swerve win. It's like, well, now she's waiting for Page to be angry and miserable and even more. As Swerve, as some of you called him, hop along. <laughs> I'm trying to think, you know, that line in Austin's promo to Brett was like, ah, what I think about you, you're the hit man, but put an S on the front of it. And that's what I think, think about you, yeah. You're the hang man, but I put a letter on the front of it. Shang man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thang man. <laughs> you should be at Philly. Yeah. Um, the Young Bucks arrive and want to conduct an exit interview with Sting using bats. Off they go to look for the Stinger. Yeah, they said the meeting with Flair went great last week. Ooh. That's a lie. Um, and yeah, they just want to do the thing with the bats, and they're going to look for Sting throughout the show. That's that's what we did here. Mm. They looked they looked nice. I thought in their suits today, last night they looked nice. Two week two nights ago, yeah, I thought they looked nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's analysis. The BCC lads defeat FDR and Eddie Kingston in a lovely scrummy ooh six man tag as Brian Danielson conks out Eddie Kingston for the finish, close to the twenty two minute mark. Yes, he does. What a fiend! What a match! Yeah. How dare I say it's Ron Seal, Joel, but I'll not let you make the thingy again because we don't want to kill the gimmick. As I keep saying every time, we should probably kill the gimmick. Yeah. Um, Cash and Moxley, I could watch batter each other all day long. They were laying it in thick, especially, I thought, in the early going. The match was given plenty of time, which was nice. The interactions between Eddie and Danielson just hyped the pay-per-view match even more because yeah. it didn't go all the way until the very end, but like at the end as well, it was the right finish to do because now you're thinking, how can Eddie possibly beat him? Yeah. Wonderful bit of business. I agree with everything you just said. And again, just Danielson doing the muscle pose like <laughs> to win. So he's still being cheered by people. Mm. He's being the biggest dick in the world. Be like, yay! Shades of grey, oh, innit? Yeah. Shades of grey. They're doing yeah, that's two segments. Great bits of shades of grey. And then the young books. <laughs> I will say though, Eddie's looking trimmer. I saw on the gram this week that he's been on because Cesar Bononi is like a personal trainer. I oh, think, right. um, oh God, Ethan Page has been on a similar journey with yeah, Cesar. He's awesome, yeah. So I think Eddie's, Eddie's looking trim. I was about to say, isn't he the dog guy? But I'm thinking of Caesar Milan. <laughs> no, I don't see him. The dog whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would know the name of the dog whisperer. <laughs> No, Caesar Baroni was on. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, screen, it's yeah. the penny drop. When you first said Caesar Baroni, my brain went, the dog whisperer. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we see some lovely footage. The dog whisperer. Here's how you beat a goat. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Cut out carbs. <laughs> we see some lovely footage of Jericho wrestling in CMLL 30 years ago, head of Lionheart's match with the son of his mentor from those days, Atlantis Sr. In an interview with Rene, Jericho promises violence and to teach his mentor some things he doesn't even know. Or something. He was too busy thinking of Tomahawk steak. No. He was there. The Jericho Triangle, we can exclusively reveal here in Newcastle upon Tyne, has expanded. So it's. I like Jericho after eating that. 
can't, you can't help to. Yeah, oh, it's great there. What a place there. Um, mm, but yeah, he's got key side spoons, then he's gone right along the tomahawk, then he's gone that little position that you took the other photograph there. Yep. So it's like a, a weird shaped triangle now. Yeah. So he, he'd have gone past the Greggs, he'd have gone past the Premier Inn, the Slug and Lettuce. Slug and Lettuce. Tennis Steam. Yeah. Kai Kai, where Harrison Ford at. Yeah. That's right. That uh, place where Ant McPartland was spotted on the corner, the Hooch. The Hooch. The Hooch. Uh, the Cat Cafe, Cat Porcino. Yes. The Law Courts. The Law Courts. Steady well. Chris. Steady well, Chris. Yeah, Jericho, leave that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep r- run past them. <laughs> but the highlight of the entire promo, I thought, was the mention of El Dandy. He's reeling off all these legends yeah. from that time, and he mentions El Dandy. I don't know if it's a different El Dandy. I just hope it's the No, one it's thing. definitely the... the <laughs> it's a shame that that one promo, that generation of people are oh, funny. And it was funny, but at the same time, no, he's a very respected revolutionary. <laughs> It's a jam up guy. <laughs> Tell your money's in the ring to officially welcome Will Ospreay to AE Dub. Billy Big Bollocks notes that he's officially finished with his obligations for New Japan and his full time All Elite. He also mentions having a nice piss up holiday with his missus recently. Lovely. In Barbados. <laughs> down, down come the other members of the Don Callis family with Ospreay noting, I didn't ask for this. Callis bigs up the talents of Will and Takeshita, comparing their match at Rev Pro to Pippin and Jordan doing some hard trading. Oh, wait a minute. God, if you see Pippin first, I think it'll be Lord of the Rings. God. I've just um, thought of uh, what's the dog in the sky with Auntie Mabel, whatever she's called. Look up, look down, oh. look all around. I know what you mean by coming the name of it. The air or underground. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Why Pippin, are you thinking about her? Pippin the dog. Oh, the dog's called Pippin, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Come outside, that's what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> More like, don't go outside. She sounds like she's bloody omnipotent. God. She used to take a dog for an aeroplane ride. In the air, in the sky, <laughs> on the ground, I will kill you. Um, things get tense between Willy and Takeshita uh, as the segment comes to a close. Don is cheering on both lads. Yeah, well, they've, they've teased the split. I assume it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, Osprey yeah. going off on his own to be a baby face because it was all going fine. And he does say, like, oh, I didn't ask for this when the Callis family came down. Him and Konosuke getting very tense towards the end. There was a cold mm. hug with Don as well. What mm. could it all mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's this mean for WrestleMania? <laughs> That'd be a good match, though. I'm looking forward to that. Osprey was good here. He lost his ba- Delta lost his bags, but then he, they found them again. Uh, and he said, I look like Kermit the Frog on leg day. <laughs> That's a good line. Oh, he's very likable in this I segment. I think he's yeah. really likable. I like Will a lot. Got lots of time for him. Go on. Have a lovely time in the All Elites. And the Barbados. And the Barbados. He had a piss up with his wife. He, he got drunk in Barbados for 10 days with Mrs. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. Who's loving it? Love it. Is. The Young Bucks interrupt an Eddie Kingston backstage interview to let him know they don't like what he said on Collision. If he does it again, there will be a fine. They also lambast this champion for not looking the best and hinting at a dress code being brought into AE Dub. Off they pop to continue the search for Sting. <laughs> <laughs> Off they pop. <laughs> <laughs> Come around, look around. <laughs> <laughs> Say, someone needs to edit that. <laughs> uh, I've forgotten the name of the show now. We're just about Come outside. Come outside, yeah. Von Wagner during his nature's <laughs> years. <laughs> In the woods Kyle O'Reilly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this didn't do much for Eddie, apart from you make it feel, feel a bit yeah, sorry I'm like, well, well, Yeah, why have the champ? Oh, wait, I was going to say, they're all champs in A-Dub, aren't they? But still, <laughs> I don't know why he's already got something and needs to be having these two talk about him. Uh, just to get the more heat, I think, the lads, you know, haven't taken the piss out of Eddie's oh, appearance. siphoning. Mm. Uh, who's that? What? Who's that? Oh, siphoning the heat. Like oh, the, right. It's a, it's a verb. I thought you were like a wrestler called siphoning. Siphoning, El Dandy. <laughs> they're all here. CMLL. Uh, Orange Cassidy's open challenge for the international championship is answered by Nick Wayne, who heads down the ring with the rest of the patriarchy. During the bout, Christian Cage gets involved with referee Bryce, taking no chances. In, oh, sorry, Bryce taking the chances and sending the Famalam to the back. The Undisputed Kingdom's Matt t- t- Taven. Taven. Says, uh, oh, it says it does say Taven. Taven. Matt Taven. <laughs> 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 Come drinking, Matt <laughs> Taven. <Mike Bennett>. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Matt sorry. Taven. He he. Typo. Arrive a friend, leave a guest. <laughs> <laughs> Also head for ringside, but chased away by Rocky Romero and Trent. <laughs> Kenny Garcia is also on hand to provide a distraction, which sees Orange win with a shoot Superman punch. Oh, yeah. Moment. I was on Google Docs as so Rocky's name. So, I didn't think <laughs> so I typed his name and it was like, oh, you want to send him a link to this script? I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no I don't. Uh, what we're gonna do? Liquid wrestling. I don't know what else you say about this match. It was perfect from start yeah. to finish. I was shocked at the lack of pop Nick Wayne got when his music hit, but then Christian came out and then it was just like, ah, yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought Wayne looked the dog's bollocks though considering he's 12 mm. <laughs> 
And I liked Orange's fight back after the patriarchy was rejected from the ringside area. It was admirable. I've written that down in my notes. It was admirable. And it was a shoot orange punch for the win. Certainly was. The, he laid it on thick like a dirty kumquat. <laughs> the dirty that kumquat. Which do look like oranges. Of there you go. There's a method of madness. <laughs> uh, I was like, all right, cool. I'm so looking forward to Orange Cassidy losing the really strong. <laughs> really? We've had, we've had these matches like for months now. And I'm just like, okay. But the UK are a little bit boring. They can't be more boring. They need a they they need something. Yeah. yeah. They need something. A little bit of spars. Yeah. Appreciate I mean, Orange Cassidy, but just somewhere else, yeah. please. Uh, the Bang Bangs is a gang have an interview where Jay White says he's all in on the group. Austin Gunn has the idea of him teaming up with the acclaimed on collision. Then, however, Anthony Bowens has the idea of the acclaimed teaming up with Austin Gunn, and everyone loves that. Lol ha ha. That's the joke, you see. Austin Gunn has the same idea as Bowens, but people like Bowens' ideas better because it's in a different order. Uh, this was the promo where Max Caster was like, "Anyone think? Any, did anyone notice my rap mishap? Clap." <laughs> <laughs> they got Brap. that reaction. <laughs> Brap, rap. Yeah. Um, yeah. This group's going nowhere slowly. It is. It's going around in circles. Yeah. Um, Are they I, on the pay per view? No. They're on collision. <laughs> what the hell? They're yeah, on, they're on collision. They're on collision on Saturday, where Austin will be teaming up with the acclaimed, or the acclaimed will team up with Austin. So, two of the most popular groups have not. All right, whatever. It isn't doing any... There's too many kooks, isn't there? Too yep. many kooks to spoil the broth, or whatever that saying is. That is the expression, yeah. yeah you don't jump in the broth. Just, no. just one kook does. Apparently, yeah. weren't they, Mate, didn't over, they, overwork didn't they... that one cook, and it's all right. <laughs> yeah, because they're united to take out the United... The Undisputed Kingdom, they all, the, all the gold, yeah. Yeah, and it's like... They oh. got the gold, though. They got the trio's titles. And they went, it's just, okay, mission accomplished. Do we just keep hanging out? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah we're so. just doing segments and doing funny stuff. See how it goes. Yep, losing all our heat. <laughs> It's like, the, it's like the new phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, we're just we're still going. Like, yeah, okay. the one we're currently on. This is Madame Web. Yeah. Re- ready for Juice to come back and for the BC, the split off. Because when they were on their own, on Collision, those Collision Cowboys, yeah. they were fantastic, I thought. Sky Blue goes 2-1 up in the series of matches against Chris Statlander. Stokely Hathaway tries to get Chris to cheat with a massive chain. But that ends up allowing Julia Hart to nail Chris with the TBS title for a Code Blue finishes things up. Oh you! Can we stop having matches with Chris Statlander and Sky Blue now? I feel like we've. I feel like these them and Willow Nightingale and Stokely Halfway are just going round and round and round and round. Already had three. Feels like I've, I've, it feels like they've been fighting forever though. Because <laughs> the matches me? the matches been spread out. There's like yeah. October and ah, December. That's probably why then. Uh, Sky Blue's Action Man tribute gear was fantastic because she had like the camo, but it was blue, like Action Man blue. Action Man, the, the greatest, greatest hero of them all. all. Taking down Dr. X. Arr. Yeah. That's all Dr. X were doing those things. Just yeah. Made that noise. The eye patch. Yeah. <laughs> Blind. X. Uh, the gorilla pressing to the front row was impressive from Statlander. I thought it great pop and snap. Um, I thought Sky Blue was booked strong against Statlander when Statlander is one of the strongerly booked uh, women's wrestlers yeah. that AEW have, which is good for her. Uh, there was a lovely snap neck breaker from Sky Blue, mm. which I think Taz noted she let go early. To create more talk or something. What a lovely speak. More wrestling mm. above my good. pace. He's, he's good, Taz, isn't he? Sometimes. Yeah. Mm. It's I'm good look, for me, anyway. I'm looking forward to seeing where the, the storyline goes with Stokely, because he's trying to be with the, the, the Sisters of Destruction, uh, Willow and Chris. Yeah. Uh, but now that's, you know, buggered one up for Chris. So will she go against him? I don't know. We'll have to see what that means for WrestleMania season. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> the young bucks go into Sting's locker room and find a bunch of baseball bats hanging from the ceiling. There's a mirror. The Sting doesn't appear in the mirror, Ultimate Warrior style. The mirror doesn't get smashed, 0304 Kane style. Michael Jackson doesn't even appear to speak about the man in said mirror. So what does the mirror mean? <laughs> what like does the mirror, mirror mean? Yeah, because it lingered on the mirror at the end, so I was expecting something to happen, but then nothing happened. We just looked at Matt Jackson's little chipmunk face. <laughs> so a little, little, little chipmunk. <laughs> the whole thing was a callback to Sting's last promo in WCW from Nitro in 2001, where Sting was in a room full of bats hanging from the ceiling. Really? Because mm-hmm. this is his last dynamite. Yeah, that's it. So it was a callback to that. Bloody hell. Surprise, surprise! You know who was watching Nitro in 01? Yeah, me, because I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> as old as the sun. Oh, God. I don't think that segment made it on the World Wide on Channel 5 on the following Friday. <laughs> uh, did it not? I can't. Never. I definitely remember watching it. It was. I was de- maybe it was on Bravo. Yeah. It was been on Bravo. It was on Bravo, because I've got a copy of the, yeah. la- the last Bravo. Sorry, last episode of Nitro on Bravo. And they go, well, that was it. Cheers. <laughs> Stay tuned for more police camera action. (laughs) Uh, Jericho defeats Atlantis Jr. Not Alejo de uh, Atlantis. Atlantis Jr. El Hejo. El Hejo. With Atlantis Sr. watching on at ringside. Can't stop. Can't stop. Can't stop the beat. Won't stop. 
Don't stop. Won't stop the beat and go. Dun, 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 dun. Everybody. Move your feet and move your body. Oh. See, Junior Senior were around the ringside area, so that's why that's it. in there. It's nice, that. Uh, I love that one song. I like, you know, you know that Chris wants to wrestle because he puts the Lionheart jacket on, and that's how he wants to wrestle, like a wrestler would wrestle. Because <laughs> that's what he was in 95. <laughs> when he came out. Um, uh, I thought it was I, interesting that Jericho played the heel a bit more in the early going because I thought it was just going to be a bit of a wanky, you know, Chris Jericho wants to do this thing on Dynamite and we've got to watch it because Chris wants to do it. Uh, but he did try to add a little bit of story in there, like you know, slapping the little ladder, the little lad, the younger lad around <laughs> while his dad was at ringside. Then he just turned it to a fine competitive match. I didn't really feel much because I didn't really care for Chris Jericho fighting his friend's son. Or his former mentor son, sorry. I get you. It's it's nice that they did it. It's nice that, oh, that's a thing for the uh, Dynamite. That'll be cool. But the CML invasion sucks because no one's winning anything. Uh, the what CML invasion may well be stopping and immediately. It may have been defeated early, uh, yes. according to the news that broke out that, uh, was it 20 so or so? Up to 20 up to uh, uh, visas of CMLL talent have mm. been cancelled. Uh, this is because CMLL had a working deal with Full Blown Pro Wrestling in Texas. So the promoter countersigned essentially the visas for CMLL. Uh, and they were informed by Homeland Security that potentially there could be a legal ramification for them doing that because of the way that the visas have been put through. To which the promoter for Full Blown said to CMLL, can we have a chat about this? And they went, oh, don't worry. We're going to go through the embassy now rather than go through you. But the guy at Full Blown has said, well, hang on, you're doing that fine. But I've still, you've still got my name countersigned on these CMLL, on these uh, visas. And I don't want to get in trouble. So therefore, he contacted Homeland Security and said, just want to let you know that I'm not using the CMLL guys anymore. So uh, I don't need my name on the visas. To which the Homeland Security went, OK, well, in that case, nothing's been updated. So we'll cancel these visas at the end of February. And it's going to wow. take months for them to get new ones. This is according to reports from PW Insider. That was very well memorized. Well done, you. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a... <laughs> I read it twice and went, oh, God, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, it's very abridged. There's probably wheels within wheels that I didn't mention, but that's kind of the cliff note version of what happened oh, wow yeah so that's the story behind it it's be, it's it's because th there was a communication breakdown between full blown and cmll and they've gone look we're not using them anymore so and uh, so therefore homeland security have gone well in that case no one's using them so we'll cancel these visas and they're in the middle of a invasion angle with AEW, where they could read do with being in america <laughs> and they might not be for a bit at least 20 of them might not be <laughs> the main ones and a few wow. others so that's that's going well. So Jericho ended the war. Mm. Fantastic. Well done, man. But at least Atlantis Jr. looks strong because he didn't tap out. His dad threw in the towel. He can take all the AW roster on, can Atlantis Jr.? Yes, he can. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm desperately trying to do an Atlantis joke. He's a bit wet behind the ears or something. Uh, Nothing's coming. Well, well, I tell you what. He he's smells about, fishy he's a, to me. He's about to go missing. Thank you, Tom. There's the joke. The Young Bucks continue their search for Sting at ringside and find a load of people wearing Stinger masks. One of them turns out to be Darby Allen, who is using his dad's classic disguise to devastating effect. Darby has his ass handed to him by the Bucks, of course, with Sting not around at this point to make the save. Ric Flair is brought down the ring. Uh -oh. uh, but after his meeting with the Bucks last week, which clearly didn't go well, he turns on Nicholas and Matthew before being stopped in his tracks with a shoot shot to the bollocks. Good. <laughs> Very well said. Thank you. Sting drops Tally down from the rafters one last time. Boop. And sees off the books with a helping hand from Darby. Hell yeah, Sting. Sting up in the rafters watching Darby get an EVP trigger going, not yet. <laughs> nah, it's wait fine. For it, Flair wait. comes out. Nah, not yet. Not yet. And now. <laughs> like, I reckon Mr. Sinclair from Ready to Rumble was up there saying, uh, you don't go down there and go <laughs> against the script. You do what I say, buddy lad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that moment was unbelievable. You, you're not expecting it, are you? In this yeah. day and age for that sort of thing to happen again. I know it happened again, you know, one whatever it was, but you know, we're in 2024 now. You're not expecting it, 65 year old or 66 yeah. year old thing to do it to repel from the rafters. Yeah, and he did it, and it was amazing. It's great. Yeah, and he came on the news this week when he did the uh, Scorpion Death Drop to Powerhouse Hobbs when that Daly's place, and people were like, oh god, that looked really risky. Why? And people were like, Sting insists on doing that. Mm. Sting seems intent. Like, no, no, I've got a lot of life in me. Yeah, but now this year has been like. Nah. <laughs> one, one last match. He's guided yeah, every part of this. Like, he didn't want to win the tag titles. 
He was like, I don't want to win the tag titles. Like, give them to, you know, the younger guys. But they're like, well, no, you and Derby are undefeated. So in theory, you should be at least be in time for a shot with one. Yeah. All right, as long as we lose them. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming mint. Like, right, yeah. As long as we lose them, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, great end of the show, I thought. Yeah. Absolutely, because that's what you're remembering. Yeah. I'm thinking about Atlantis Junior after this. You're like, hell's yeah, Sting. Big fan of Derby using the old mask to disguise yeah, his yeah, own yeah. face. Uh, but yeah, you say that. I'm just, I'm, I'm wanting a Mark Henry turn on Sunday from Sting. I've got plenty left in the tank. <laughs> Would you be disappointed if they've done this it's big retirement, retirement thing for months and months and months and they go, ah, lol. It's <laughs> wrestling. It is wrestling, isn't it? And, it, they, and it's Sting as well, so no one's going to be upset if Sting sticks around a bit longer. For one more match at Wembley, come on. Yeah, the Wembley mm. the, the, the Wembley thing is what I'm thinking. Let's Darby get him for a match at Wembley. Derby versus Sting at Wembley. Mm. It's what we want to happen, or I want right. to happen. I don't know about you two. Yeah, <laughs> I think our tickets are going. Mm. All right. Depends. But that was the week in wrestling. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, let's look in the mail bag. How are you doing, pals? How are you doing? And it's even spelled like how I pretend to spell. Ah. This is my second time writing in the podcast after submitting a favorite moment of the podcast, Wrist Piss, that was featured way back in episode 160. Despite being in the Zoom generation era of the podcast, when spirits were a bit low, Jack said that I had a, quote, tremendous grasp of the love and the fabric of this podcast. And Mafu mispronounced my name. Great success. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the hallmarks of a great episode. Who's ready for pointless story time with the mailbag baby? Have we not started yet? Towards the end of last year, I visited Newcastle to get a couple of tattoos. After my appointment, I realized that the second skin on my leg had come loose and fell off. While I was on a big walk. Skin fell off. Having been inspired... They peel when you get them done. Then oh. You know. oh imagine his whole nice, skin yeah. falling off. <laughs> Having been inspired by Jack and Lance Storm. Checking Google Maps, I found the nearby Sainsbury's to buy cling film and Marks and Sparks to bind myself up privately in a fitting room or toilet cubicle. Making my way over, it was at this moment that I saw a street sign and realized I was walking into the notorious, infamous, frat boy epicenter that is Northumberland Street. Heeding Ross's advice, I put on some heavy, stompy music so I could get in and out there sharpish. Thankfully, I managed to get the job done, avoiding these pesky frat boys. And although there were a few dodgy characters kicking about, this is nothing out of the ordinary when you live in Scotland. My question is this. Excuse me. What is your favorite moment in wrestling where the crowd changed the atmosphere for better or worse? You didn't ask, but mine would be Psycho Sid winning the title at Survivor Series 96. Absolutely. The crowd are split, with the lovely ladies cheering for Sean and Sid receiving what Joe Coffey would describe as a man's pop. <laughs> Even watching as a kid, Sid looked like the coolest guy on the planet, although in hindsight, he clocked someone's granddad with a camera, causing him to have a shoot heart attack. <laughs> it wasn't a shoot. It wasn't a shoot. It's clarified. Also, a big shout out to the girl standing at the left corner railing who folds in half like a deck chair at the end of Earl Hebner's penalty 10 second three count. It makes you laugh every time. Much love to all you scrummy, scrummy lads. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Especially top shagger Joel yes. mentioning big thief and cheek face yes. on the pod. Up the cheek face. Is that right? It's a band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Former heart of Midlothian and Stoke City striker Ricardo Fuller, a.k.a. Callum, pronounced the same as Callum, from Edinburgh, proud home of the Mangy Swan Graffiti. Stupid swans. Can I, <laughs> can I even read? Thank you very much, Callum. I'm hey, happy Callum. to pronounce your name correctly, only because you've been nice and sending a lovely, lovely email. Ah, oh, okay. So, well, he's taking the best one, as they always do. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you know, no, Rock, Rock Hogan. Yeah, Rock Hogan's the, the answer. Oh. <laughs> Rock Hogan okay, is the yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, the there. crowd absolutely uh, go in favour of Hogan and to the point where the whole match sort of changes shape and it leads to a Hogan title run. Yeah. What Tom said. Because the whole run, because yeah. we've been doing it on the, on the classic SmackDown review on the podcast feed, new episode tomorrow morning. And um, whereby, whereby Hogan had, no, there were no plans to make Hogan like top babyface in 02, but the crowd just absolutely wanted him. So they just leaned in and they made it happen. And so that is a great example of the crowd changing the mood. They didn't want like the, the bright young talent. They wanted Hogan back on top. And that's what mm. they got for a couple of months. Yeah. Well, I'll say Rumble 2014 then. Nice. Where the bloody hell's Daniel Bryan? Most popular dude in the Oh, of course. Boo, Ray anyway, no, no, no. You got Batista. Look how cool he is. <laughs> Shut up. Into the galaxy. No? Oh, all right. <laughs> and then they have to change things around. Then obviously, uh, that major moment at WrestleMania XXX. 
Mm-hmm. Check, 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 check. Well, that lad, Cody Rhodes' is story to WrestleMania this year into the fold is my own answer. Oh, That's a great oh, one. Definitely wasn't happening before. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And they pivoted rather magnificently. Yeah. I reckon there was five days when it definitely wasn't happening. Then it was happening. Yeah. <laughs> what a weekend that was. <sighs> Hello, to be honest. I'll say it again with a bit more pace. Hello. To be honest, that's better, isn't it? Go. Hello, to be honest. Hello, to be Good honest. Good evening, pedophiles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about Cody Rhodes finishing the story at all. Oof. It has been hammered home for so long that it seems inevitable, and there's just no excitement left for me in this part of the storyline. However, I was very inter- invested in Cody actually having his match against Roman at WrestleMania. <laughs> I almost became a Cody crybaby. So my question is, have you ever been more invested in the journey than in the destination in the middle of a wrestling storyline? Cheers, guys. Up the Cultaholic, former player of the sports team, Marton from Hungary. That's a great question. That's what it says, by the way, former player of the sports team. (laughs) (laughs) When have you been more invested in the journey as opposed to the destination? I'd say Hangman Page, really. I was thinking Page. Uh, Like the whole thing about him getting the belt and then obviously then he won the belt. It's like, "Mm, now what? Now what? Now, now he was a dick to the Dark Order. Mm. He had two matches with Adam Cole, and I was kind of like, all right, cool, cheers. That's it, isn't it? It's a bit of a retrospective one for me, but every Undertaker and Kane feud. Good one. Always yeah. been all meat in terms of the build, but then the match itself, the destination, nothing. No meat. All fart and near poo. Well, that's what I meant to say. All fart, no poo. But yeah, the, one of the best storylines in wrestling history, but the matches yeah. never slapped, did they? The, the first one they had at WrestleMania, and I actually like the Inferno match with the visuals. But after that, it's like, ooh. Yeah. Like a famous cowboy actor at Slim Pickens. <laughs> Matt Hardy and Jeff Sorry. Hardy is ooh, one. Ooh, that's a good one. Great. Like, it, like WWE had a bizarre story about houses burning down and yeah. dogs dying, and then they just have knee chemistry. The story of like the Hardys splitting up and egos getting in the way is always an interesting one, but yet they have... Sort of, they're like two batteries when you put them together, both at the positive end. Like, there's just nothing yeah. there. So they bounce the other way. And then when they went to TNA and they did all that, ah, Brother Nero, I knew you'd come Tuesday. They did all that, and, and, and that was probably the better of the Hardys matches, but still missing, when one-on-one missing that thing. So the, the story they tell is always fascinating. When they get to the match, it's like, oh, okay. That 09 feud must have been weird for them, though. Because, like, Jeff's house actually burning down. Yeah. And his little dog, Jack, died. And your little dog, too. And then and Matt like, walks Whoa. out with a charred dog lead and goes, Ha ha! I did it! <laughs> but your dog is dead. <laughs> <laughs> dead. 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 <laughs> ah. Hey. 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 Nothing you, you can say. You guys have had a pretty good track record for identifying wrestlers that go on to greatness. Matthew was extolling the virtues of Volta for years before Gunther had his mammoth icy title reign. Jack was a fan of Becky and her arms long before the man, that's what it says, the man came around in more recent times. And Ross identified the potential of tippy time very early on and a reception at EC proved him right. So is there anyone out there in the wrestling sphere that you think is perhaps a bit overlooked right now but will become a huge deal in the next couple of years? Lots of love, former Manchester United and Netherlands centre back Japstam, aka John from Hampshire. Ooh, thank you, mate. Y- Yapstam. <laughs> J A P P. Is it? Oh, come on. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Yapstam. Then sorry. I'm gonna hoy in there, Jada Parker. Is this where I say can we probably cut that out and it doesn't get cut out anyway? Come, Jada Parker. Jada Parker. Try. Saw her on level up. <laughs> Joe's like, no. <laughs> saw her on level up. Saw her on NXT this week. I think she's great. Big shout. I think there's definitely, we said, didn't we, the Kavorka there? Yeah, she's got the presence yeah. of their promos with the OTM. She's not in the mud. That's a second yeah. time I said this. On the Certainly podcast. not in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> Very dry. Okay. But I feel with your horny tendencies on this podcast, Tom. Oh, no, horny, <laughs> horniness aside, <laughs> horniness aside, there is just an energy that I think. Yeah, you did is. that when you said energy. <laughs> there is, there, to horniness aside, there I'm is not an energy. Being horny. <laughs> horniness aside, there's an energy. There's an energy. My hands have to be doing something. <laughs> Shaking the table and stuff. There's an energy. Right. There's an energy. There's energy. I, I, there's, yeah, I, I do like it. Also, I'm going to chuck in there Riley Osborne. <laughs> because you know. Oh, okay. I like him. I learned to do well. Good lad. Yeah. He's a good wrestler. His character's awful. I find very jolly there. His he character did. is particularly ah. awful. Ooh, rotten. 
Uh, I'm going to go, there's a, there's a guy on the main roster who's relatively new, but Logan Paul has great potential. <laughs> <laughs> Superstar potential. Nah, That's J- not saying crazy things. Like NXT's that. JB is the standout one. But I guess, yeah, the, the, yeah, I think he's acting in those segments with BJ and Keanu James especially. Showed that side of him. His performance in the Iron Survivor showed right. the wrestling side of him. They just need to find a character. I think he could be like a Baron Corbin, if that makes any sense. But I'm a fan of Baron Corbin. I know yeah. the people out there don't like Baron Corbin. But I think uh, Edris Anofi is another one as well. It's a nice pick, yeah. Uh, out of him and Malik, he's definitely got a Kavorka that I'm on board with. He's a little bit weird. Mm. I'm going to be <laughs> cheeky and say Leon Slater, who we've been calling, saying great things for uh, the while anyway. But now the Americans are discovering him. And that when, as soon as the Americans discover him, that's it. That's it. He's all he's over up, him. So. He's great. So Leon Slater, uh, Mike Locku. But again, at that point, it's if you're a fan of the UK scene, you're like, oh, wow, what a crazy take, Matthew. Wow. Yeah. Get this. Tyler Bate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah well. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, Pete he's... Dunne, I think he's all right. <laughs> Tell you what I do like on the indie scene. I'll give him a shout. I like no, Kemper. Have you seen Kemper yet? Where's Kemper book? So Kemper did North, the last North show. Oh, he's there. done... Where else has he done? I can't think of any other ones he's done now. But I've seen him pop up in a few places. Ah, that's sure. mean he is obscure. He's so he look really smart. Big lads. Really, like, like a real tall guy. Like got a real nice pace to him as well. I like Kemper. Okay, cool. I also like Rio. Uh, Rio's kind of yes. recognized already. She's North Tag Champ, ICW Women's Champ, among other things. And... Uh, but but she's brilliant. I would love for her to have a breakout year and maybe go and do more things internationally. Well deserved. Mm. She's great. Oh, and for VXV purposes, I'll say uh, I can't say the guy's name right, but the uh, Aigle Blanc, the French luchador, ah. the French adore, if you will. French adore. I'm sure I hate that. So yeah, what's I think his it's name? Good. It's a, it's like A I G L E. I don't know how to pronounce it. Blanc, but he, that's why because he's yeah. white. So you know, nice him. There you go. Wee oui, wee. Some... Oui. So, yes, uh, fantastic. Lovely questions from some lovely people. Good questions. Thank you, week. Yap Stam. Uh, if you have any thoughts or queries, please send them to mailbag at colaholic.com. <laughs> Wrist piss on the table under your dark trousers. <laughs> Respect the business. How are Joe Gacy fan club members two, three, and four? Is Joel cool enough to be a Joe Gacy fan yet? Question mark. Do you like Joe Gacy, Joel? Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are well and have come down from the Vengeance Day high. The ending... Oh, yeah, this is from the vault, I should say. This was oh, just... made a couple of weeks ago. No, no, we're still... Uh, <laughs> we're still... Because of Vengeance Day. <laughs> the ending was truly, as the kids say, these days, cinema. It was. However, we all know the greatest cinema of all time is ready to rumble. Let's imagine we are all Tony Khan for five minutes. Tom spends most of his days thinking Tony Khan. <laughs> and have infinite wealth to remake the classic movie using any of today's wrestlers from any promotion to recast the film. Diamond Dallas Page. Diamond <laughs> Dallas Page. <laughs> <laughs> the exact same people. I'm listening below the character name, actor, and a brief description of their traits. Who would you recast to play them? We all seen Ready to Rumble? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's one of my uh, favorite films. Of course it is. Uh, Gordy Boggs. David Arquette, wrestling fan, all-round loser, and hero of our story, and future WWE champ. Is it? Is it do they have to be wrestlers? Because I could say Chris Pratt. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right. I mean, oh, future WWE. No, WWE Let's champ, just do wrestlers. Right? Yeah, just wrestlers. Yeah, okay. Rest, who's a fan of wrestling? <laughs> Riley Osborne. <laughs> I was about to say Riley. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and um, uh, Tyson, uh, D- uh, D- delightful Hudson. <laughs> He's not a loser. How dare you? But he'd play a loser. He's the MVP of Chase U. But he'd play a loser. I'm a seven-foot loser. <laughs> uh, I can't think of any of these wrestling wrestlers that I relate to now. They're all weirdos. Oh, Andre Chase, of course. Yeah, there we go. Because he's got the trait of beating a loser and bad with money. Oh, yeah. uh, Jimmy King, played by Oliver Platt. Greatest wrestler of all time. Now hit upon hard times, baby. Because someone tried to steal his Perth. <laughs> In Australia. <laughs> In Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I'd love to see Roman Reigns in that role. I know he doesn't really fit the hard times bit, but oh. it, be, it might be a bit harsh for us to su- suggest an actual wrestler who's hit the hard times. Yeah. I can't see Roman Reigns hitting the hard times. Me neither. Being, yeah. But it would be fascinating to see mm. what would happen if he did. Mm. If he grew a belly and then had a child with a horrible mouth of teeth. <laughs> and a woman who has crabs. <laughs> and a woman who has crabs. <laughs> and a wife who has crabs. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 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 Eddie Kingston, because he's nearly there. 
Omos. Oh. Just oh. for the idea of him hitting hard times, but him like sitting in a skip, but he's too big for yeah, his skip. legs are sticking so out. So his legs are sticking out. <laughs> him living in a motorhome would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Banging his head on the ceiling would be great. That'd be great. Eddie, Eddie Kingston, he's like, oh, like, you're right. You've hit hard times. Look at state the place you're living at. He's like, that was like that before. <laughs> <laughs> Titus Sinclair, played by Joe Pantiano, evil wrestling promoter. Careful with this one, boys. Mm. Oh, very good. Mm. Billy Corgan. Good one, yeah. Um, that lad from Texas who's just cancelled all the visas. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who replaced Scott DeMore in TNA. I'm a full-blown wrestling promoter. <laughs> DDP. Heel wrestler who cheats Jimmy King out of his crown. So funny that had DDP cast the <laughs> The people's champion. <laughs> so who is... I'll, t- I'll cast LA Knight as the modern-day version. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. I'll say Seth Rollins. Oh, damn it, I was going to say that. Oh, Drew McIntyre. There you go. Fantastic. Uh, Sean Dawkins, a.k.a. Scott Kahn, James Kahn's son. Bloody hell. Nepotism. Wrestling fan, all-around loser, obviously, and hero's best friend. But also jacked and good-looking. QT Marshall. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to swap around my uh, Gordy and my and him, Andre Chase, and Delightful Hudson to play this role ah, instead. Ah, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. The good-looking loser. Mm. Chad Gable. A good one. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sasha, played by Rose McGowan. Way too hot girlfriend of our hero who turns out to be working with Sinclair. Foreign objects! As he says in the boudoir. He does. Man. Um Jada Parker. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say who you fancy the most, isn't that's it? Just, really, I mean, I, that's like, <laughs> let's pretend to think before you jump yeah, out. Yeah, oh, there you go, me. Yeah, that's long enough. Uh, Jade Cargill. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I'll go Jake Cargill. Yeah. Cause you, you can go heel face pretty easily, I think. Yeah. Why did you why did you join Joe Pantiano? Because I'm big business. There you go. <laughs> Easy. Goldberg, former tag team partner of Jimmy King. <sighs> Brombreaker. Bret Hart. The poos and giggles. Gunther. <laughs> Eugenia King. Jimmy King's a strange wife with a penchant for crotch shots. Crabs. Uh, so who's... <laughs> what was crotch shot? Oh, China. Right, oh, well, so the trademark move, <laughs> wasn't it? Because of crotch shots. Yeah. Natalia. Uh, Nidia. <laughs> nice. She sort of fits that gimmick of trailer park trash. I miss her. Sal Bandini. Want to wrestle? Yay. Martin Landau. This film has a crazy good cast. It really does. Uh, retired wrestler who trains Jimmy King. Who's what, got the it best? Even says pause for Ross's impression. Well done, you. Sal Baldini, what a wrestle! Uh, who's got the best school in the world at the moment? Doctor Tom Pritchett. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. Stu Hart, Shawn Sh- Michaels, <laughs> <laughs> Chase U, <laughs> Sid Vicious, and Perry Sutton. Two heavies who beat up Sal and sent him to a local medical facility. Good yeah. brothers all day. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh no, they put him in a vicious chin lock. <laughs> Authors of pain. <laughs> that's the scene of the film, isn't it? When yeah. Sal Baldini, the thing, they've got him in the chair, but it's not, yeah. it's, it's, it's a mannequin. So he's home alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Boggs, our hero's overly strict father who hates wrestling. My dad. <laughs> Sorry, you're still watching that. Ole Anderson, God rest his soul. <laughs> Name redacted of the current day. Vince. <laughs> oh, thank you, yes. That doesn't narrow it down in the wrestling way. <laughs> Booker T, Kidman, Sting, and Disco Inferno, the next star group of baby faces who come to the support of Jimmy King. Booker T, Sting, Kidman, anyone else? <laughs> well done. Uh, I'll just have the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. Bang Bang Scissor Gang. Yeah, why not? That's yeah. a good shout. Uh, and hope you enjoy and look forward to what will undoubtedly be the greatest box office hit of all time. Keep up the great work. Number one member of the Joe Gacy fan club, Graham from Billingham. No count for taste, but thank you very much. Ah. Love is blind, as Joe Gacy says. Is he proven there? Grass is always green on the other side. Ah, uh, here, here. I don't know why it says in that last bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find <laughs> to you too, Graham. Grass always green on the other side. Right, I'll right. pull you under. <laughs> yeah, may your tree be big and full of love. I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. I'm a big tree. I'll never leave you. Grass is always green on the other side. That's a generous twenty bag. Thank you. Grass. <laughs> So. Marijuana Hall of Fame. Thank you very much, Graham, for your lovely thoughts. <laughs> Any of the Reese's Pieces, you can send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah. 
Ah. What a lovely long poo-filled episode of the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. This was a girthy one, wasn't it? Oh, it hurt this one. Oh, We've filmed it for weeks. Yeah. And just a little shout out to our lovely producers, Reno2200. He's from the bloody future! <laughs> I can see you warming it up. <laughs> Noah Anderson. And, I saw what you did last uh, week, Joel. Anderson. Anderson. Wow, that's amazing. He actually bloody did it. Any Tubman would never. <laughs> <laughs> nod, smile, nod, smile. And tear of grace. Oh, the Brett, mm. who oh, I spoke to Brett. this week. He's got a cat room in his house. Nice. He has, he has ten cats. Oh, he needs a room oh, then. Oh, God. Ten. Imagine that. I thought it would be lovely at the end of a long day to come home to cats that you know, yeah. and cats that know you, and have a little, uh, little stroke. And will definitely eat you <laughs> if you fall asleep longer than two hours. Yeah. That's good to hear from Brett. Thank you, Brett. Cheers, Brett. Thank you all. And the big, 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 big question this week is, What's the best retirement match? Ooh. So this is because Sting on the weekend, Sting is calling it a day. It certainly is. Or I'm is going he? to say Sting versus Darby Allen at All In. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. And why is that, Ross? I'm just not ready. <laughs> I don't, it's just a bit of a, I don't know, it's just the hatred of the books being put ahead of everything else and if that hatred is even real or not. But, you know, books walking out as tag team champions, Sting being all sad and whatnot. That's not the way to go. How would you do it? Big, stupid, bollocks match at Wembley. Well, he would lose, but he wouldn't be so sad and dejected as he would be as losing the tag team titles. Okay. Yeah. Big, stupid, bollocks. Darby rolls him in a coffin, wheels him away. <laughs> I think Sig would be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Let's, can we, can we forget the Ric Flair's last match pay-per-view and focus on the leave the memories alone? Yeah. Wish they had Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. The story that they wove there, yeah. and 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 you realize when you watch the build, they plant the seeds like months before, where you know when Flair was backstage celebrating about the fact that he'll never retire, and Shawn's kind of looking at him like, oh, all right, easy it, mate. And then and then Flair has this thing where he can't lose a match, and if he does, he retires. And then him and Shawn get booked for Mania, and Shawn's like, look. I'm gonna. I have to beat you because I'm Mr. WrestleMania, and that's it. And the promos are great, and the match is great. The finish is perfect, and that's the that's surely the greatest retirement match. Yeah, it is. Every every inch of that is spot on. I'm sorry, I love you. That moment where he pulls the trigger and old yellers him out of existence, at least kind of so we thought, so we hoped, because that would have been the perfect way for Flair just to fly off into the sunset. He's done a few other bits since, and obviously he'll be part of what Sting's doing, but my God, imagine if that had been Flair's last match and we'd never seen him again. Yeah. What a legacy. What a legacy. What yeah. a legacy. What a legacy. What a legacy. What a legacy. chocolate. It's either that or Hulk Hogan's <laughs> six-man tag in Manchester <laughs> <laughs> for TNA. Not know? recorded. <laughs> uh, I will say then Undertaker's little affair with AJ Styles, because at that point, Undertaker was pagged, did not want to see him have any proper matches. But luckily, one of those happy little accidents you get in life, hey, COVID's happening. So we're not allowed to have a proper match or a proper mania, but we can pre-record a bunch of stuff and just go all out with the silly Irish bollocks. So mm. sounds like chocolate in my head, sorry. And uh, yeah, they absolutely... Just, it was just a silly, cheesy, cool, daft thing that showed that best bit of what we imagine the Undertaker to be in our little heads. Not when we open our eyes and see what is actually there. Yeah. yeah. And they give us that meme that still lasts to this day <laughs> of Undertaker being behind a little happy AJ. AJ's there thinking about flat earth theory and there's reality, ready to wreck him. And Undertaker killed the Good Brothers for a few years. Oh, what a match. Murdered them off the top of that shed thing. The barn. Yep. I said that like that. <laughs> but hey, we lived through the times of that Undertaker match in Saudi Arabia. Other matches Taker had live, like the Roman Reigns one at 33 was quite sad Ooh, as well to watch. Yeah. So the same, like, you know, I know they were there for 23 hours of a day to get it all shot and whatnot, but the same return to form yeah. and pre recorded form was lovely to see. I'm saying that because you nicked mine from the discussion we had before rolling the cameras. So I'm a bit stuck now. <laughs> well, <there's> a <laughs> you said Sting. <laughs> Oh, well, that was a joke. Uh, oh, how dare you joke about the big question, Ross? This is serious. This is well, big You know question. what? I'm going to say one that's not an actual... Well, no one else will say it because I'm a weird contrarian. Triple H, right? He didn't know it was his last match at the time, but it turned out being against Randy Orton, which meant ah, yeah. his last two matches were against Batista, then Orton. And that's a nice tie in evolution. That feels like a nice, that feels like a nice way to go. They didn't mean it, but it ended, being, ended up being a very nice way to end. Rami, when did he fight Randy again? Or was that a Saudi uh, thing? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I can't quite remember. 
I don't remember anything about the match. I wrestled Cena one time. I remember tweeting out that because I started, I saw the cage match thing. I was like, wow, that is nice. Yeah. I didn't mean it, but it's nice. That's a nice way to go. There's been a few that we didn't know were retirement matches until after Steve Austin versus The Rock at WrestleMania 19, where Austin had quietly told people beforehand that, like, look, I'm going to go after this, but don't make a fuss. I mm. want to lose to The Rock and I mm. want to disappear into the sunset. And so, but the, the giveaway, once you know that, the giveaway is at one point, JR, very, uh, very, uh, he says something in the past tense and then very quickly corrects himself into the present because JR mean a knows. I mean, of course. <laughs> oh, no, he wouldn't have said that because he respects the business. But we said, like, one of the best, uh, you know, and what a career he had, he's having, or something like that. Ah. It was, a, it's as Austin's walk into the ring, he says something in the past tense and then quickly corrects the present because not many people know that this is his last match and they want to keep it that way. Oh, it's the whole so, Red Bull thing, wasn't it? Yeah. He got that, the only good Energy redeeming thing about that coffee. crap book he released where he spends like five pages talking about WCW is the fact he starts off that chapter going, ah, you know, it's, it's, it's disgusting. Like six Red Bulls and some coffee, went and have exercise and then, you know, I woke up in an ambulance. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get medical clearance until that match. So it was my last one. I was like, Austin, Jesus Christ. The heart pounding out of his chest, wasn't it? Pretty much. Four Red Bulls? Yeah. Four non- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus what to end up being Ricky Ricky Steamboat's last match for a long time would have been against yep. Jericho but obviously yeah. he came back oh, and did the six match against Austin 94 but yeah the, the, mm. uh, no one, yeah, but no but Jericho and Steamboat was a revelation that'd end up kind of being that was nice with the exception of the six man he had last year that was kind of Steamboat's mm. retirement match Terry so, Funk <laughs> <laughs> pick one forever forever <laughs> <laughs> Mick Foley apparently training for one more. He is. He's yeah. losing eighty-five pounds. I saw this the other day yeah. before his sixtieth birthday to celebrate his sixtieth with a match. And he wants to have one last death match. Yeah. Conrad's already kind of getting ready with the booking. Yeah. 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 Mick yeah, Foley's had, last death match. They had the great podcast, show. didn't they? Recently. Yeah. I think they're going to do it against uh, Cardona, aren't they? Matt I think. Cardona's the one that Foley wants. He wants to do Matt Cardona. Oh, that'd be great fun. Mm. Trying There's, to think of more memorable he up, time. He showed to a H2O show dressed as Santa in December. Yeah. Like, one of these, like, like, Mick Foley's here. Like, really? <laughs> just rocked up. Shawn Michaels against Undertaker. <laughs> it was. It's Whoops. Good, right? <laughs> oh, right. The WrestleMania oh, no, no, they were a good one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The tag team oh, one. Was oh, oh, hell no. no. <laughs> tag match. What are you talking about? Forget about that. Nah. No, like the, the career versus streak one. That, yeah. was, that was his retirement match. Running up that hill. That was great. <laughs> yeah, the bill was great. Real <laughs> sitch pail of water. <laughs> Come back down with the Chamber Boys. <laughs> it's a we call are the Chamber Boys. <laughs> call back what to our wall of the puck. My God, it was last week we did that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it, yeah. Uh, let us know the the referee's calling it off. Let uh, us know in the comments what your favourite oh. retirements are. Tom, what have you got for us, pal? Uh, so, let me think. Oh, this weekend, of course. Let's, let's just focus on that. AEW Revolution. Uh, you can watch nine pitches, predictions, and live reactions on Sunday night with myself and Fraser Porter. We're staying up through the night because it is an AEW pay-per-view, and it will be through the night. Uh, what happened at with Jack the Jobber as well. So that's come watch Revolution with us on Sunday. Watch Sting's retirement match. Leave the memories alone. You'll remember me as the cool wind blows among the fields of barley. What's Jack doing for what happened when? Is it just his week off? <laughs> Why not walk? What happened at my week off? Well, I got stuck in the toilet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm still there. So that, yeah. Um, subscribe. We've got a, in case you've missed it, Brand Spanking New podcast feed. If you search Cultaholic Wrestling News, that's where those 10 minute wrestling news podcasts have gone. So they're on a separate podcast feed to this one. Uh, so every weekday morning, you get all the wrestling news in audio form within 10 minutes. Ooh. Every single morning when you wake up. How convenient. Help. How candy and convenient is that? Bite size, thing. like a Bite celebrations size. tin, dairy milk, Go on. square of chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Do yeah. the, the line. No, no, no. He's that, that only for Ross. <laughs> <laughs> that's all my stuff. Well done, Tom. Powerhouse. Lots of other stuff as well, <laughs> but that's the main one. Powerhouse Campbell. Uh, what we're doing uh, Pictures is on the channel now please go and check it out for Revolution Predictions as well Tom said I think as well I'm going to be on a, a Radio Newcastle podcast on Monday about Newcastle Yay! United oh brilliant with local comedian Rahul Kohli and Ooh. Matty Reza Reasbeck so ah, watch that hitting the BBC sounds thingy me jigs so, so are, you, are you going into the I'm Pink going, Palace I'm going to the, the Pink Palace yeah yeah get an Uber there what do I do when I walk in just go hello uh, 
ask. Well, well you'll have your, your name. Your name will be on a list with reception oh. as per. Uh, but then, as you go in, uh, you go through the doors, and if you if yeah, if you want a bit of a detour, go straight to the main office, and you'll see my good lady Alex Booth sat at her desk. <laughs> go say hello. <laughs> She'll be like, get out, <laughs> good home. <laughs> I put them on that. There's a couple of lines in the fire for next week, but you see them as and when they go live. And just to reiterate, WWE WTF moments are still alive. It's just the AW ones that are dead. Don't. Dead, dead, dead. So I hope you've understood that there's no more WTF. <laughs> you can't make it any more clear. Um, speaking of no more of that, uh, I have nothing because I'll be getting ready for a fantastic trip to Deutschland next week. Oh, uh, yeah, you're away, aren't you? I am. So uh, next week, Jack will be hosting the podcast. And Sam will be over there. Oh. No. Nice. So normally it's like you're fighting with him and I'm in the middle. Next week, Jack's fighting with him and I'm in the middle. <laughs> yeah, the guest ref. <laughs> what a lovely oh, combo. Lovely. Joel, are you working on anything? Um, no, just AW Revolution stuff. I'll be on what happened at. So Ooh. watch all that good content, please. Oh, good lad. <laughs> so we've kept Joel exactly one hour longer than he's meant to be here. So make sure you That's claim that right. time back, Joel. Yeah, what, we've just do. broken a record with this podcast? Nah, Have we? Nah, nah, Maybe. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah, no. Nah, nah, I thought nah. we were start about half one. It's now well, six. Let's keep yeah, going. we took a break, though. Oh. I think I think the longest is like four hours 40 or something. Oh, why do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> Every week, we're like, we cut it down and it always gets longer. I think after Mania, maybe. With the equivalent of those guys going, it's just one drink. We are, aren't we? Well, I want to break five hours this year for WrestleMania. Shut up. I do. Uh, this has been Tom this has been Ross this has been Joel this has been myself this has been Puppet Jack who said one thing so he gets a credit and gets paid uh, mailbag at collect.com pigeon.com forward slash call the holic now we're going to point at this and because it's his last well he says thing we're going to yell it's Sting in the style of Tony Schiavone one two three it's Sting <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit bad that like <laughs>